everybody and happy Easter to you. Welcome to Brands Hatch. Yes, we're into day three of four of our festive feast of motorsport across Bark TV. Now we have an exhilarating day for you, full of excellent racing, all exclusively live with the BARC. Now I'm afraid to say the Easter Bunny has had to make a quick exit. That's because the trucks are in town. Yes, the British Truck Racing Championship season gets underway today here at Brands Hatch and we're back tomorrow as well. It's not just that though, we've got pickup trucks today, we've got MGs, we've got minis, we've also got caterings as well. It's uh, safe to say we're going to have a really exhilarating and excellent and exquisite array of cars out on track. Fantastic stuff. Well with that there's only really one thing left to do isn't there and say a huge happy Easter to your commentator and I'm delighted to say my good friend Mr Dave Goddard. Thanks very much Ian. Yes good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Brands Hatch, the uh, third of four days of racing on BARC TV this weekend. I hope you enjoyed the action, those of you who tuned in from Donington over the last two days. Thank you to Adam Weller for taking us through the action from that one. My name's Dave Goddard, back uh, in the hot seat for two days of racing here at uh, Brands Hatch in Kent, racing on the Indy Circuit this uh, weekend. We'll apologise for uh, Ian Waterhouse, our very own Easter Bunny's uh, terrible puns there in his intro. We've stopped him rabbiting on now, thankfully, because it is almost time for the big rigs to get their season underway. Yes, the British Truck Racing Championship is back for another season. Their traditional Easter season opener here at uh, Brands Hatch, the first of five races coming up in uh, just a few minutes from now. There'll be a short break after that. We'll have our lunch break and also the qualifying session for the Junior Saloon cars. They have their races tomorrow, the under-17s in their Citroën Saxos. And this afternoon, we have racing from the MG Owners Club Championship. NG's old and new competing in that one, supported as always by Lancaster Insurance and Adrian Flux. That's followed by uh, the Pickup Truck Racing Championship. They've just had their qualifying session. Of course, the partially reverse grids used in the uh, pickups, always making things a little bit interesting. Our first Caterham race of the weekend follows that. We've got the Sim Motorsport Caterham Graduates Championship. We have um, the Sigma 135s out today. There's another three races coming up for them tomorrow. We've got the more powerful Sigma 150s in action as well. Another truck race, then another MG race, and then we close out uh, day one with the uh, Mini Challenge Club Sport, supported by Airtech Motorsports, a variety of BMW Minis in action. That one, they had their qualifying session earlier this morning qualifying just uh, coming to a conclusion in uh, a few minutes time we had a red flag in qualifying for the sigma 150s in the uh, caterums so that's uh, overrunning just a little bit but uh, they will uh, have their two races tomorrow but we are shortly going to be ready for our first truck race of the day and of course with the trucks in town that means handing over to uh, our man down in the paddock bringing his own brand of uh, humor and entertainment to our airwaves yes here's pointy It's been a long break. We've all been waiting. We've all been deserving of a 2024 British Truck Racing Championship. That's right. We're here with the grand opening of the season here at Brands Hatch. Let's go racing. So here we are down in the truck paddock, the outer, the outer ring, as they call it down here at Brands Hatch, with uh, a new face to me, but some of you avid followers might recognize this man from a bit, a little while ago. David Smith, right. how are we? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, glad to be back. Really. Yeah, so you say back. So let's just let's just you know get to that bit first of all. When did you last uh, find yourself on a circuit for the British Truck Racing? Uh, the last circuit I think was Silverstone back in 2016. In wow, a, wow. In, in a CSU. So yeah, this is a bit of a step up. Um, eight year gap coming back. Um, what what was the deciding factor? Where were you just sat up in bed one morning and went, I'm going back to truck racing? I think truck racing, once it's in your blood, you, you never leave it. Um, it's family, really. My eldest boy does the uh, digital challenge, ETRC. Oh, OK, cool, cool. So the truck we're running now is... A it's exactly the same as what he's running in the ETRC. So it, <laughs> it was driven by. It was so driven it's, by it's literal reality from a computer game. Exactly that. Yeah, it's it's, it's a family thing. Um, so we just thought we'd we'd mirror the truck. We'd come back, have another go. And uh, setup wise, I mean, ha ha have you owned the truck for a while? Have you bought it just for this, or what's the what's the backstory there? We bought the truck off of Ryan Smith back in November. So we haven't had it that long. A lot of hard work to get it to as it is now. Um, so yeah, totally new, totally new. I think I've had probably half hour in the seat, 
So, yeah. So, nothing like uh, flying by the seat of your pants. And, and where did we qualify this morning? Uh, I did, I think I done a 102, but that got disqualified track Ooh. limits. So I oh, actually, the, they are hot on the track limits this weekend. That's going to catch a lot of people out. They are. So I actually qualified last, but oh. we're hoping to make up a bit of ground in the first race. Um, but it's early days. See how we go. Views on the Division 2, Division 1 single pack idea for this weekend. Do you think it's going to be a, a, an interesting um, advantage for some drivers, or do you think it's going to hold some people up? Um, to be fair, looking at the... You know, the lap times this morning, I know I qualified last, so, yeah. and I'm Div 1. So. Before you were disqualified, after you were yeah. disqualified, um, rather, yeah. No, to be <laughs> fair, I think the quality of the driving now, you know, people, the drivers have been doing it a long time, so actually the, the gap between one and two is not so big now. Um, years ago, yeah, it would have been a problem, but no, I think now it's probably a good thing, definitely. And well, hope. look, Mr. Smith, welcome back to the British Truck Racing Championship. It's fantastic to have you here. Uh, we hope you have a fantastic first race and, and a brilliant season ahead. I'm sure we'll get a chance to speak to you again. Cheers, Pointy. Thank you. Cheers, Dave. Thank you very much. Right, let's go and have a look who else we can find down here in the British Truck Racing paddock. So here we are then, uh, interviewing uh, Mr. Paul Rivet, the uh, current champion, last year's Division 2 champion. How's that, Phil? Oh, it's an amazing feeling, yeah. First, obviously, truck championship uh, win, and uh, it was just mega. And, uh, we, you know, we played catch-up the whole year last year, and to uh, get this Napa Racing UK truck to the front just when it counted, right at the end, even on points, uh, but that gave us the win with our, our 18 race wins. So. Now, now, rewind 12 months, and you'd already got through two, three gearboxes at this point in the weekend, prior to race one, uh, in a slightly better situation this year? Yeah, definitely so, yeah. We'd... we'd uh, had hardly any free practice last year. We missed qualifying. We missed the first race. This year we're, uh, you know, we're we're kicking off on the right foot. That's for sure. So we've had the post winter shakedown. Uh, are you much testing done on it since last year? Or yeah, yesterday. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, this is fresh in your mind. Yeah, that's it. That's it. The thing is, oh, I don't remember this corner. <laughs> yeah. Home circuit for me here at Brand, so I absolutely love the place. And you know, I used to work at the race school here, and I've done thousands and thousands of laps around this place. So it's, uh, I know it like the back of my hand. And I tell you what, you know, I, I don't know whether anybody else out there notices this, but since you guys have been, because I know obviously they've got Clios, they've got touring cars, but since you've been involved in this sport, I've been seeing Napa delivery vans all over the place, and I'm like, I never noticed them before but they've obviously been there do you know everybody says that as well and uh, you literally nap up I've you know they're, they're, <laughs> they're taking over the parts world and, yeah. uh, and it's great to see as well and what a nice company what a nice bunch of people as well so it's such a pleasure to be be part of it all it really is and what a lovely color scheme it is as well with the white on as well this year stands Ooh, out just even a splash more. just a splash yeah unfortunately I mean uh, haven't got my new race suit yet at the right. moment that was stuck in customs at the moment so. it's too small they got him a smaller one because he was going on a diet over winter but it didn't work out <laughs> <laughs> I did go on a diet. You did, yeah, yeah it was seafood. just a seafood niche. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, look, thanks for joining us. It's fantastic to have you back and great luck in the uh, the coming season. Thank you very much. Cheers for joining us. Right, Paul Rebecca, ladies and gentlemen, let's go and see who else we can find. Right then, continuing the theme with reigning champions, I'm here, of course, with the Division 1 reigning champion of eight consecutive years. Am I right with that one? Yes, eight. Eight, just double checking, wanting to make sure. Eight years, and are we here to make it nine? Too early perhaps to say, but let's be honest, you're here for a reason. Very early to say, but look, we all have ambition, we all want to win, you know, but there's all the other competitors here that have the same ambition, so, you know, we, we will keep doing what we're doing and we'll see where we are mid-season, and uh, I believe the fight's going to be difficult, it always is, and, you know, Everyone I've spoke to in the championship are, are, are relit, and I think they've had a good refresh over the winter, you know, and there'll be some serious competitors. And if I look through qualifying, if you look at like John Bowler and stuff, people are going well. Yeah, there's a, there's a very interesting mix that you wouldn't naturally come to expect in that, that top five, top six, would you? No, and it's good to see, and it's healthy. And look, I think it's clear that the championship's on a bit of a transition period, but Truck Sport for me have done a fantastic job. Um, the aim will be working with all the other teams that are, are doing other things at the moment but throughout the season I think it's clear that we're we're all competitors but as a championship we're all one family yeah. and I think it's important that we stick together and support each other on and off track. No it's true I mean we were at the drivers briefing together last night obviously and, and there was quite a good vibe in the room you know quite a good energy and I think to have that you know especially at a drivers briefing I think it shows the kind of mentality that people are in this year. And with the regulations changes this is going to sound so serious, but 
it's making the sport more professional. Yes, yeah, there are necessary changes that have been made, aren't they? You feel like a racing driver when you come to these events. All the fans that you can see, they get to meet us. And I think everyone's done a good job. And, you know, we've just got to have some good racing on track. And hopefully the uh, baby stays healthy. And, uh, yeah, we... we we, we would love to get a ninth, that's the ambition. My fire's still burning from the first one that, that I won and truck racing's very addictive and if you're in, you're <laughs> in. But now I love it. Well, it's fantastic to have you back, Ryan. The truck looks absolutely phenomenal. I mean, the new colour scheme, that's one thing that you've been quite renowned for over the last few years, isn't it? You've, you've always come out of that winter break with a, a new paint job, like, whoa, what have we got this year? I always say it's like buying a good mood. You have you, you have the same livery every year and it's a bit flat. It's like being married, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you Change have... your hair every now and again. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we dress it up different, you know. It'll be, it'll be different again and that's who we are and we just like to change the style up and I mean I look at Oliver's trucks and I think they look fantastic. The, the, the Primer Grey looks wicked doesn't they it? Look, Very in right now, yeah. Narda Grey is it? But it looks, I think both of the Michaels and Stuart's truck looks amazing but everybody's up the game again, everybody's up the equipment and uh, we're in for a good fight and obviously for the first time in a few years we get to go to Le Mans because obviously oh. Nürburgring so it's exciting times for the British truck racing. Very excited to get on that ferry again, I never thought I'd say that but it is, it is quite uh, something to look forward to isn't it? We're going to drive over with paddles with this. <laughs> <laughs> no, looking forward to it. It'll be a, it'll be a, it'll be a cracking event, and we look forward to a, a good, solid year. Excellent. Well, Ryan, thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming back. Watch this space, ladies and gentlemen. Will he make it nine years? He's off to finish his lunch now. That's what's important, because a driver races on his stomach. Uh, thanks for joining us down here in Park Fermi. Sorry. The paddock, it's not Park Ferme yet, they've not done anything yet, they don't deserve a Park Ferme, but we will come and find you in Park Ferme later on. Oh, I don't know, I've been back like one day and I'm already getting things wrong. Anyway, enjoy some racing uh, and we'll see you very soon. I'll hand over to Dave Goddard now, in the tower, with the eye in the sky. Dave? Well, a point is certainly back to his uh, best form, isn't he? As the uh, Caterhams complete their qualifying session, the Sigma 150 just heading back uh, to the paddock. Uh, Harry Cook, the quickest man in that session. It was a tale of two Harrys in uh, the uh, Sigma 150 Championship last year. That was um, Harry Kramer in uh, the uh, red number one to one car. And uh, his great rival last season, of course, was Harry Senior, who ended up taking the title. But it's Harry Cook, another Harry, who's taking pole position for their first race. That's taking place tomorrow. And then we will bring on the big rigs very shortly. The uh, British Truck Racing Championship, as we've already heard from uh, Flying Ryan Smith, going for an incredible ninth consecutive Division One title this year. Opening here at Brands Hatch, as they always do. Every year on Easter weekend, they go to Pembrey in May in South Wales. Then it's a Thruxton at the beginning of July in Hampshire. The big weekend at Donington Park, the convoy weekend in August, then uh, September it's Snetterton over in Norfolk. A couple of weeks after that, as uh, you heard from Ryan Smith there, it's the trip to Le Mans in France, arguably the most famous motorsport venue in, certainly in Europe, along with the Nürburgring. I'm sure a few British drivers will be racing at the Nürburgring, quite a few Brits taking part in the European Championship this year. And then uh, it's Bonfire Weekend to close the season back here at Brands Hatch for Trucks and Fireworks on November the 2nd and 3rd. So the format, if you've not seen uh, truck racing before, 15 points for a win, 14 for second, 13 for third and so on downwards in each uh, division. We've got nine competitors in uh, Division 1 this weekend and three in Division 2. Hopefully grid uh, sizes are going to go up as the season goes on with new trucks being prepared. The first race, the grid decided by the times in qualifying. Race two, the grid decided by the second fastest time for each truck in the qualifying session this morning. And uh, the subsequent races depend on the results of uh, races one and two, with the top eight in uh, each division being uh, flipped around. So we'll see uh, the grid formats uh, used similarly to last year. The difference this year is the divisions don't line up uh, on separate grids. We don't split division one and two on the grid. I think it's just going to be the overall top eight that get flipped around. So the, we could see uh, division two trucks lining up ahead of division ones in the uh, grids for this year. So we're almost ready to get going then, just awaiting the trucks to be brought out on the track. There's one of Trackside Recovery's uh, vehicles just getting into position at the end of the pit lane. 
they have getting they're getting help from uh, Ito and um, Mick Gould recovery. They've got one of their big American trucks here this weekend, as we often see at Brands Hatch when the trucks are in town. Now, thanks to uh, all the partners of the British Truck Racing Championship for 2024, TRP Parts, all makes of truck and trailer parts, GT Tyres, Dines Motor Group, MV Commercial. That's led by Tom O'Rourke. He's debuting a new truck this weekend. We'll see shortly. Uh, Total Care Vehicle Lifts and Testing Equipment, Sylvie Fleet Management, BWOC Fuels, offering renewable diesel and uh, carbon neutral fuel to their customers. Stuart Oliver might be uh, calling them up, the 10-time champion. He had a fuel leak in qualifying this morning. Uh, Transport Monitoring S Solutions, Truck and Driver Magazine and Freyhof Trailers, uh, the uh, championship partners. And also the championship has teamed up with uh, mental health charity Man Up this year to raise uh, awareness of uh, mental health among men. Remember, mental health problems, it's okay to talk. It's okay not to be okay. There are people to listen out there. Very worthy uh, partnership indeed. So we'll wait for the trucks to appear. I can hear engines over in the uh, paddock on the outside of Paddock Hill Bend that we're looking at now, the famous roller coaster of a first corner here at Brands Hatch. It's not until you walk round the Indy circuit here at Brands Hatch you realise just how steep the inclines are. At the uh, Formula Ford Festival a couple of years ago, I was able to walk a lap of the track when uh, racing had finished for the day. And it is a real plunge down Paddock Hill Bend, then up Halewood Rise and into the Druids hairpin. Tricky to get round in a car, that's hairpin, never mind in a truck. Then to drop down the hill and into the left-hander, you can see uh, centre left of your picture there. That's Graham Hill Bend, or Bottom Bend as the drivers call it, at the bottom of the hill. Then along the Cooper Straits and uh, round through Surtees and McLaren, past the uh, turn off of the Grand Prix circuit, and then through the long right-hander at Clearways into Clark Curve and the end of the lap on this uh, fairly short layout, the Indy Circuit at Brands Hatch in Kent to the uh, east of London. Well, we wait for the trucks to come out, so here, a word from uh, one of our sponsors here on this Brands Hatch weekend. So a quick word from uh, one of the championship partners there. As we get ready to get underway, we'll give you the grid once the trucks are out on track. Thanks to those of you who have uh, commented so far. A few of our comments on the stream. Hello to James, says, come on, Oliver Racing, father and son, Steve uh, Stewart and uh, Michael Oliver. One or two viewers from the USA as well. That's good to see. Quick hello to Carl and Holly Brownsell. You may have seen uh, them with their fundraising efforts last year. Cycling laps of the UK circuits. They're taking on a new challenge this year, uh, Carl and Holly. Of course, raising money last year for the My Name's Doddy Foundation for motor neurone disease. This year, Carl tells us that they'll be cycling the Isle of Man TT circuit for the uh, Rob Vine motorsport charity based over in the Isle of Man. Tough enough getting around the Isle of Man circuit on a motorcycle, never mind on bicycles. That's a brave effort indeed. Best of luck to uh, Carl and Holly. Hopefully we'll see them around the truck paddock this year as well. Here come the big rigs then, and it's uh, no surprise to see that flying Ryan Smith has taken pole position for this first race of the season. He was the only man to lap under one minute in the qualifying session. Qualifying was delayed a little, as we say, because uh, Stuart Oliver had uh, a fuel leak in his truck, which had to be cleared up. And he only lines up down in sixth. It's Flying Ryan in the Daimler Freightliner on pole, alongside his great rival David Jenkins in the number 69 MAN. Second row, number 14, John Bowler. Good effort by him. His second season in Division 1 with his MAN, alongside Michael Oliver. He's out qualified his father, Stuart, who lines up alongside number three, Stephen Powell, the local man. New livery for him this year on his MAN. Fourth row, the new truck, the international Navistar of uh, Tom O'Rourke, Scotsman, the MV commercial truck. He lines up alongside the first of the Division 2s. That's reigning champion Paul Rivette in his MAN. 
Row 5, number 6, John Powell in his DAF. That's the oldest truck on the grid. Alongside number 33, Neil Yates, the recovery company boss. Teammate of Stephen Powell this year. And completing the grid, number 41, Simon Cole in the Pink Panther, as his Iveco is known. And welcome back, David Smith. First truck meeting for almost eight years in the ex-Ryan Smith uh, MAN. No relation, incidentally, those two. David Smith was Division 2 champion some 12 years ago. As we heard, last race in a Sisu finish built truck some eight years ago. There's the Pink Panther, Simon Cole making his way to the grid. There's David Smith at the back on his return to the sports. So the pace truck leading them up to line up on the grid then before we have a rolling start. It'll be a 15 minute race, the first of five races this weekend for the British Truck Racing Championship. A few more of our commenters. Uh, Peter H says, shout out to all the marshals. Yes, the orange family as we call them. We couldn't go racing without them. Out there in all weathers, making sure everything is safe and uh, able to race. Hi to Matt Davies, Mike Burgess, Aaron Lupton, Ethan Dance, Alex Raby, and uh, all our other commenters. Here this weekend. Thank you very much indeed. Do give the stream a like and help to spread our coverage this year. So it's the TRP Truck and Trailer Parts DAF that's in position as our pace truck for this first race of the season one or two new trucks new liveries you can see a new livery as we heard mentioned the team Oliver racing trucks Michael and Stewart in grey and yellow this year not the black and yellow that we saw last season Stephen Powell in the colours of Neil Yates recovery this season he's ditched the yellow livery from last year the man who lives literally just down the road from uh, Brands Hatch Slight changes in livery for David Jenkins and Paul Rivette in their MANs. New colours for John Powell as well, number six. The uh, blue and red has gone. A uh, very menacing looking black and green livery for him. Quick hello to Caitlin Penny as well, top sim racing commentator. Robbie Gascoigne says, are these standing or rolling start? It will be a rolling start for the trucks and the pickups. Everything else will be a standing start. If you've not seen truck racing before, you have a real treat coming up. These trucks powered by 12 and 13 litre turbocharged engines running on sustainable fuel as you've already seen it was Adam Bint who pioneered the use of that HVO fuel in the championship he's competing uh, on the continent this year as are quite a few British drivers the Reed brothers will be competing in uh, the Netherlands and Belgium this year as will Ricky Collitz the uh, Yorkshire based veteran the heavy haulage company owner John Newell I believe is contesting the European championship once again and Adam Bint has gone to race on the continent as well hopefully we'll see them make uh, a comeback in um, the British Championship later this year. I'm sure some of them will come back for the Convoy weekend, the big weekend at Donington Park in August. Uh, Ricardo asking, uh, where is Division 2? Well, the two divisions are uh, combined on the grid this year. They lined up um, over the last few years from uh, split uh, grids with Division 2 starting behind Division 1, but uh, they're running on a combined grid this year should make things a little bit more interesting especially with Paul Rivette the reigning Division 2 champion uh, in there took the title on a tie break with Adam Bintz if I remember rightly last year they will be competing for separate points just not uh, starting from separate grids 30 second board has been held aloft then and the pace truck moves away here we go then, the first of five truck races this weekend, the first of what's going to be a very busy season for the big rigs around the UK and beyond as they race at Le Mans this year as well on the Bugatti circuit. There's that new truck of 86 Tom O'Rourke, the bonneted International Navistar. Very similar in appearance to Ryan Smith's truck on pole. Will it be as effective? I cannot wait for this season to get underway. Can
and Ryan Smith make its nine Division One titles in a row. He's made no secret of the fact he wants to beat Stuart Oliver's record of ten titles in the UK. Stuart, a former European champion as well, he's repaired that fuel leak there. He is the number seven on the outside of row three. You have a popular Simon Cole in the Pink Panther, the Iveco, in Division Two. Paystruck leads them down the hill into Graham Hill Bend. Very tricky left-hander. It's along the Cooper Straits behind the race control tower. As the sun starts to come out here at Brands Hatch. Tension beginning to mount. It's a 15-minute race. Big rigs ready to rumble here on the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit, the first race of the 2024 British Truck Racing Championship. Ryan Smith and David Jenkins, great rivals for so many years, lead them round. Paul Rivette, the pace setter in Division 2 in qualifying, ahead of John Powell and Simon Cole. Pace truck about to pull into pit lane. Over 12,000 horsepower about to be unleashed from these turbo diesel engines. Waiting for the red lights to go out. Here they come up towards the line. The pack about to be unleashed. It's time to go racing here at Brands Hatch on this Easter Sunday afternoon. Waiting, waiting, and here we go. The pack is unleashed down towards Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. Decent start by Ryan Smith. David Jenkins trying to go around the outside of him. John Bowler tucks in behind in the blue and red number 14. Are they all going to make it round Paddock Hill Bend? Looks like they are. Up the hill they come for the first time. Still nothing between Jenkins and Ryan Smith for the lead. Smith will have the inside line for Druids. He'll take up the lead running. Third place in number 14 is John Bowler trying to force his way through on the inside. The local man Stephen Powell alongside Michael Oliver. They've all made it round so far. Michael Oliver will have the inside line for Graham Hill Bend. Stephen Powell has to go wide. Oliver up into fourth place. And the two bonneted trucks side by side. A decent start by Tom O'Rourke, the Scotsman, up alongside Stuart Oliver. But it's Ryan Smith who sets the pace from Jenkins. John Bowler in third. He had one win last season. Matt Thruxton, his first Division One victory. Stuart Oliver back ahead of uh, Tom O'Rourke as they move their way through Clearways and Clark Kerr. This long double right-hander up towards the start. Finish straight to complete the first lap of the season. Ryan Smith already in the clear ahead of David Jenkins over a second ahead. They've all made it round the first lap OK. There's a change for the lead in Division Two because John Powell has got round the outside of uh, the newer MAN of Paul Rivette, John Powell in the DAF, the Dutch built machine, takes up the lead of Division 2. Neil Yates has dropped to the back, David Smith the number 11 on his return in there ahead of Simon Cole. The two Division 2 pace setters ahead of a couple of the Division 1, so the group's already mixing nicely. There's Tom O'Rourke down the hill, it is John Powell, a new livery for him this year, the black and green RSM and uh, Midland Caliper Centre sponsored DAF. Heads the Division 2 pack. Out in front is Ryan Smith from Jenkins, Bowler, Michael Oliver. Then in fifth position is Stephen Powell, then Stuart Oliver, Tom O'Rourke in seventh. Division 2 lead battle eighth and ninth overall at the end of the second lap. Ahead of David Smith in his first truck race since 2016. Over the line they go, the lead gap has doubled. Ryan Smith just in a 58.524. That's uh, considerably quicker than his pole position time. His pole position was a 59.5, so he's gone a full second quicker than his pole lap on that second lap of the race. Stephen Powell, number three, runs a pub just down the road from Brands Hatch, coming under fire from the number seven of Stuart Oliver, the ten-time British, one-time European champion. New sponsors and a new livery for the number seven and the number 12 this year. Sponsored by Tahuna Honey and GT Tyres. David Jenkins clear in second ahead of John Bowler. It's coming under a bit of pressure from Oliver Jr. Michael Oliver had one win last year. That was at Pembrey, if I remember rightly, in South Wales. Stephen Powell failed to win last year. He's had just one win in his Division 1 career. That was two years ago at Thruxton. He celebrated like he'd just won the championship when he took that victory. He's a former Division 2 champion. He's holding off Stuart Oliver, who might be lining him up for a move on this next lap. Lead gap is 2.4 seconds between Ryan Smith and David Jenkins. I can't remember the last time Ryan Smith wasn't leading the Division 1 Championship. 
Stuart Oliver's all over Stephen Powell, but overtaking tricky here at Brands Hatch, and this is allowing Tom O'Rourke's new machine to close in as well. Down the hill towards the left-hander at Graham Hill Bend. This is the battle for fifth position. Still Division 2 is led by John Powell further back in the number six. There he is, the black truck, just ahead of Paul Rivet's MAN. Simon Cole a bit further back, and uh, Tom O'Rourke's lost it. It's coming through uh, Surtees there, he got sideways. And Tom O'Rourke, I think, has spun the 86. Did he gather that back up again? No, he's on the grass there. You can just see him on the uh, top left of the picture. He's trying to get going again, but is he beached on the grass? There is O'Rourke. It's a new truck, he's churning up the grass. Motorsport Vision, the owners of this circuit won't like that. Tom O'Rourke is our first uh, spinner of the season, but he's got it going again. The uh, new regulations for this year allow for uh, a virtual safety car, effectively, or virtual safety truck, you might say, to be used when um, there is an incident instead of the red flags automatically coming out. That means uh, less um, loss of track time. Look at this challenge for the lead in Division 2 there. Paul Rivet was uh, left on the outside coming through Druids. And John Powell still holds the lead. Division 2 for the slightly less modified, less powerful trucks. They can certainly match their Division 1 counterparts. They're ahead of David Smith. Simon Cole is Division 2. He's next. Then Neil Yates, who made his debut midway through last season. Had a huge accident at Thruxton. You know, it's only, only his second meeting, but bounced back to race again at the end of the season. This is the fight for third place. John Bowler going well. He won that race at Thruxton where Neil Yates crashed out. Chased by Michael Oliver, the man from Hexham in Northumberland. Certainly proven a match for his father on occasions. Ryan Smith continues to set the pace. He's three and a quarter seconds clear now of David Jenkins. A further four seconds back in third is John Bowler, or is he? Because Michael Oliver had a good look there down the inside into Graham Hill Bend. Not easy to get through there. Bowler goes wide over the curves. This is Michael Oliver's opportunity. He's up alongside the 14. Absolutely together as they go towards Surtees. Can he get the move done before the track swings back to the right? Yes, he can. Good driving by Michael Oliver up into P3 ahead of John Bowler. Fifth is still Stephen Powell ahead of Stuart Oliver. Stuart not able to make his way through. And then we've got the Division 2 battle further back. What can Stuart Oliver do? He'll have seen his son make that move for third place on John Bowler. He's thinking, well, if he can overtake, then so can I. But can he get past Stephen Powell? Plunge through Paddock Hill up Palewood Rise into Druid's Bend. Oliver positioning himself. You can see he's positioning himself on the outside there because that means he'll try and get the inside for... The left-hander coming up, and Stephen Powell says, no, you're not. Moves across and takes the line, coming out of Druids down to Graham Hill. Stuart Oliver getting frustrated, no doubt, in there. Lead gap is now nearly four seconds. Ryan Smith ahead of David Jenkins, so it's as you were in 2023 at the front of the field. David Smith running a little bit wide there, coming off Graham Hill bend over the kerbs. Tom O'Rourke, I can tell you, is still going at the back of the field after his spin. And now Stuart Oliver's got a run on Stephen Powell, coming through clearways up alongside the number three. They're absolutely together, but Stuart Oliver's got the inside line. He's going through, finally gets the move done, and up into fifth position. A little bit of bodywork flapping on the uh, left-hand side of Stephen Powell's MAN. The Neil Yates recovery, Alco and uh, Dine sponsor machine. He dodges across to the outside. Now he's going to try and get the line going down into Graham Hill Bend. Doesn't get alongside Stuart Oliver. They've effectively split into pairs in this race. Smith and Jenkins at the front, then Oliver and uh, Michael Oliver and uh, John Bowler, and Stuart Oliver and Stephen Powell. Then we've got the battle in Division 2. There's uh, 1.2 seconds in it between John Powell and uh, Paul Rivette. Just behind them is David Smith. So that's three together. Here they come. Stephen Powell trying to move back up onto the uh, rear axle of Stuart Oliver, but the Volvo is getting away, the Volvo VNL. Eight laps in the book for Ryan Smith. He's over five seconds clear now. There he is. We've hardly seen him all race long. Fastest lap of the race, 58.524. As we said, that's a full second quicker than his pole time, almost 75 miles per hour average around Brands Hatch Indy Circuit. 
And when you consider that these trucks are electronically limited to 100 miles an hour, of course on the road they were restricted to 56. That is pretty impressive from Ryan Smith. David Jenkins a bit sideways there, coming off Graham Hill Bend. And Smith in the worldwide truck racing run, Northside Truck and Van sponsored Daimler Freightliner, the man from Mansfield in Nottinghamshire. David Jenkins behind him comes from Stafford. John Powell from Tombridge in Kent, under intense pressure now from the Division 2 lead from Paul Rivette, the former saloon car star and multi champion in the Renault Clio Cup UK. And a couple of uh, goes in the British Touring Car Championship as well. He's really trying there as they come into clear ways, but he's uh, outbraked himself there. He's run wide. Thought he was going to go wide over the curves and onto the gravel there, Paul Rivette. He had to get the brakes on that Napa sponsored MAN. It's allowing David Smith to close in. Ninth overall, seventh in Division 1 on his return to racing. It's back in 2012 that uh, David Smith won the Division 2 title. John Bowler coming under fire now for fourth place from Stuart Oliver. Recovering from getting a bit boxed in behind Stephen Powell at the start. Recovering from those problems in qualifying where he dumped uh, quite a lot of fuel on the circuit, unfortunately. Thankfully that was repaired by the Oliver team. He's closing here on John Powell, the uh, John Bowler rather, the uh, number 14. Comes from Stockport in Cheshire. Former Division 2 race winner, made the move into Division 1 last season. Oliver a little bit sideways there, he's got a wheel onto the kerb. All 12 trucks still going strong. Tom O'Rourke quite a way behind, he's over 11 seconds off Simon Cole at the back of the field after his spin earlier on. Ryan Smith, you just glimpse him there in the background going uh, through Graham Hill Bend. Nearly six and a half seconds clear of David Jenkins now. Jenkins having a fairly lonely race because he's eight and a half seconds clear of Michael Oliver. One driver who isn't having a lonely time of things though is John Bowler in fourth. He's under real pressure now from Stuart Oliver. There's Jenkins, the Digraph Transport, Morris Lubricants, MAN. He only had a couple of wins last year. It was a fairly quiet season for Jenkins. His father, Tony Jenkins, was a truck racer before him and also raced in the Isle of Man TT on a motorcycle a few times. Tony Jenkins, the man who used to race the American Mack tractor unit in the British Championship. Not seen an American truck for many years now, apart from the Volvo Whites. Last man to race a Volvo White tractor unit was um, Brian Burns, the man from the West Country. I think that was the one he rolled over at Thruxton. Most famous American truck to race, of course, was back in the late 80s. Uh, Rick, the great Richard Walker raced his Kenworth in the uh, European Championship, which was written off at Zolder when he piled into the back of Gert Korber's MAN. Just over three minutes to go now in this 15-minute race. Brian Smith looking as safe as usual out in front. Stuart Oliver's still all over the back of John Bowler. Tries to get a run on him coming into clearways. Can he get the cut back here into Clark Curve? He's going to try it down the uh, Sir Jack Brabham straight. Here he comes. Stuart Oliver's good. got it exactly right there coming out of clearways. And he's going to get that fourth place away. Up towards Paddock Hill Bend. Stuart Oliver takes fourth position. This race result will decide the grid for race three. Let's see how that turns out. The top eight will be reversed. Now, if it's the top eight in each division like it used to be, it would have been Neil Yates on pole. But uh, if it's top eight overall, you can see from our timing tower, it will be Paul Rivette and John Powell who will take the front row. And uh, Paul Rivette only a couple of tenths now behind John Powell. He is all over the back of the DAF. Just can't quite find a way through. John Powell took the lead at the end of the first lap from Paul Rivette. He won the title on that tie-break in uh, terms of most race wins from Adam Bint last season. MN sponsored by Napa Auto Parts and Tacosis. The uh, Tachograph company. Course, all these uh, trucks like road-going lorries have to be fitted with a Tachograph to record their performance, a bit like a black box. Never mind that though because Paul Rivette gets a run on the inside. There's contact. Round goes John Powell. And we have our first tangle of the season. They both go off. Now, where's Simon Cole? 
Cole could get through here. John Powell's the first to recover. Can Simon Cole get through, though? Because if he's close enough, he could take the lead of Division 2. No, he's not. They've got going again ahead of him. Well, good recovery by those two. And now Paul Rivette is almost pushing John Powell as they recover. Bit of steam and smoke coming off John Powell. So whether he's got some damage there, that's possible. You can see the right rear corner got a hit there from Paul Rivette. Bit of bodywork possibly rubbing on the tyre. But John Powell is still leading Division 2. Now, how far behind is Cole? No, he's dropped behind Neil Yates. Yeah, I think there's a tyre going down on uh, John Powell's truck, but he'll try and get it to the finish. Paul Rivette is in with a chance here, though. Less than a minute on the clock, so Ryan Smith is all set to win this. He's seven and a half seconds clear of Jenkins, but it's all about this fight in Division 2. I thought they were both going to go into the, uh, the gravel. There's contact again, and off goes Powell. Now, was that because he was slow off the corner, or did Paul Rivette try and force the issue? But whatever, John Powell has gone. He saw his tyre was going down there, so that's why he'd slowed up. Well, we've got the first bit of controversy of the season. Now, Ryan Smith coming up on Simon Cole. Cole has hit something. You can see he's got a bit of bodywork missing. But he's up to second in Division 2. He's moving over to let... Um, Brian Smith through, who's going to be going through onto his last lap this time. He's just lapped Tom O'Rourke as well. But it didn't take long for everything to kick off again, did it? Over the line goes Ryan Smith to start his final lap. Just a few seconds left there. We were waiting to see if the chequered flag was going to go out that time, but he was just a few seconds too early. Ryan Smith <laughs> is heading for victory, as he always seems to in the first race of the season. As he heads into his quest for that ninth consecutive Division 1 title. The gap has closed a little because of Ryan dealing with those back markers. David Jenkins got the gap down to 5.3 seconds, but he's not going to get close enough on this final lap. Now, Paul Rivette leading Division 2. There's Simon Cole still going. John Powell, I think, is out of it. And it's going to be a win for Flying Ryan. Here comes the Northside Truck and Van Daimler freight liner. Takes it easy through the final corner. And starting once again, as he means to go on as he looks for that ninth title, Ryan Smith comes in to take the victory. Well, the clock's counted down to zero. I don't see a chequered flag there, but the chequered flag has come up on the timing screen. So Ryan Smith takes it. Second place is going to go to David Jenkins, six seconds further back. And in third position... It should be Michael Oliver ahead of Stuart Oliver. Oh, the chequered flag should be at that um, gantry on the pit straight. I'm not sure why there's no chequered flag there. So the Oliver's third and fourth. Michael ahead of Stuart. John Bowler is fifth. Stephen Powell sixth. It will be David Smith in seventh. John, Bo John Powell is going to make it over the line. He crawls across the line with a flat rear tyre. It'll be a couple of laps down, though. David Smith is 7th, and in Division 2 it's going to be Paul Rivette. Crosses the line to take the victory. In 8th place overall. Ninth is Neil Yates. A lap down in 10th after a spin is Tom O'Rourke. Simon Cole a lap down in 11th. He'll be 2nd in Division 2. And John Powell two laps down the final finisher. So provisional result then, Ryan Smith the winner by just over six seconds ahead of David Jenkins and they were way ahead of third place uh, Michael Oliver, 13 seconds exactly in fact. Stuart Oliver was fourth, good run through past Stephen Powell and John Bowler, John taking fifth. David Smith on his return takes seventh, Paul Rivette in eighth, the uh, rather controversial victory in uh, Division 2. Then Neil Yates and Tom O'Rourke finishing uh, completing the uh, finishers in Division 1. Simon Cole, second in Division 2, and John Powell, two laps down with damage after that contact with Paul Rivet. First day back at school then, certainly, for the British Truck Racing Championship. Well done to their drivers. Ryan Smith got the fastest lap, 58.524 seconds, average of 75 miles per hour around the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit. Is it going to be another season of dominance for Flying Ryan? Will his rivals bounce back?
Well, shortly we'll be able to hand down to uh, Park Ferme for a chat to the drivers with uh, our very own pointy down on the ground. But certainly plenty of entertainment there. We're going to go into our lunch break uh, next and then we'll have qualifying for the Junior Saloon Car Championship. So we're going to resume a little later this afternoon. The next race due off at uh, around 3 p.m., which is the uh, MG Owners Club Championship supported by Lancaster Insurance. MG's classic and modern in uh, that race. Always an entertaining and very friendly championship. Let's see what point he's up to down in Park Ferme. Keep it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Congratulations. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic result. Michael Oliver, a, gr a brilliant qualifying, uh, brilliant pace. I mean, we saw you on the on the heels of John Bowler that whole first half of the race, and then we you sailed past him. Phenomenal driving. Phenomenal driving. Phenomenal driving. Phenomenal driving. No walls, no gravel pits. I mean, you know, at least you got one out of the season, right? I've never, ever, ever done this on a Saturday. <laughs> What's this? What do I do? And how much rebuilding have you got to do to the truck when we go back in? There's all of nothing to do, baby! Oh, <laughs> Oh, I mean, what a way to start the season. Beautiful new livery. We've got gold on the grill now as well. 50 years of Martin Oliver Transport. And, and of course, to start the season with a trophy. I mean, Dad almost got you, but he was still a couple of seconds behind. Oh, but who got the fastest lap out of me and Daddy? I believe it was Michael. <laughs> hey! Absolutely phenomenal, mate. Well done to you. Congratulations. Let's quickly squeeze down. Dave, have you got, have you got to be in the truck? No, Congratulations, no. great race. Yeah, it perhaps wasn't the most exciting race, but um, we we were late getting the deal together this winter. I've had immense support from my team, from my family and from my sponsors. So hello to everybody at home that can't be with us this weekend, especially Flossie and George, Mummy and Layla and Grandpa Tone that's at home watching. So um, yeah, I'm really, really pleased. If you'd said to me five weeks ago that we'd be finishing P2 here at Brands, I didn't think we were even going to be here. So uh, we are going to take the fight to Ryan this year. Um, we just need a bit more time. Flame lit under the belly of Dave Jenkins. Thank you very much. Right, that's all we've got time for down here in the pit lane. But tune back in shortly where we'll be down in Park Ferme talking to the drivers in a slightly quieter atmosphere. And we'll have some trophies for you as well over the lunch break. See you very soon. Okay, good to hear from a couple of the drivers down there in the uh, pit lane waiting for the uh, teams to go back across because they have to be led back across into the paddock uh, by the pace truck for safety reasons. We are now uh, going into our lunch break. It's a bit of an extended lunch break because we have a qualifying session after it before our next race. So uh, time for a snack and a cup of tea. And uh, we've got... Uh, bit of extra footage for you over the uh, lunch break. Um, I think uh, Pointy caught up with uh, a few people earlier on in the paddock. Ah, oh, it's good to be back. We've got the sunshine in the sky for how long, nobody knows. This is, of course, Brands Hatch, and we're down in the outer paddock, or as I like to call it, the lower paddock, the British Truck Racing Paddock. Now, as you might have noticed, slightly uh, smaller pack we've got this year. We will uh, have an interview for you shortly uh, from Truck Sport talking about that subject in some detail. But, of course, we've got some fresh names uh, joining us this year as well. Um, returning in Division 2, of course, last year, champion Paul Rivet and in Division 1 Ryan Smith. Will they make it uh, for another year? I think it would be the ninth consecutive year for Ryan Smith now, which is just insane. Um, but of course we've got uh, also, where was he now? David Smith. Now, David Smith was racing before I was even coming racing, uh, and that is an interesting one. Uh, we've got him um, over in Division 1, and we'll, uh, we'll see how he qualifies as well. Could be some interesting results, because all the trucks are starting together this year. We're not separating the divisions on the start, which means it could be some very exciting racing with all to play for. And it'll be interesting to see where some of those division ones line up. Uh, now then, uh, I do believe we have got uh, a Mr. Stuart Oliver uh, from Truck Sport. 
Stuart, um, bit of a two hat weekend for you, isn't it? And it always has been. <laughs> yeah, it always has been, yeah. But yeah, I can. I like to pride myself on the fact I can wear two hats and it, uh, it you know, it works. Um, so yeah, certainly, but uh, we're up and running. We are, and uh, good turnout with regards to the teams. Loads of fans on site, which is an interesting one because, of course, we're doing Sunday Monday race in this bank holiday weekend as opposed to Saturday Sunday. Do you feel like we're going to be extra busy tomorrow? I think tomorrow's looking good, and obviously, you know, we've got good weather today, and you know, good weather was yesterday locally. So, hopefully, people are looking at the, you know, sort of what they're going to do for the day, and this is a good option, you know, coming up a, a day's racing. Now, on to the elephant in the room, and I'm not talking about me and my mankini. Um, there's obviously a uh, slightly lacking grid this year. Now, there's, there's obviously been quite a bit of uh, commenting on social media, a lot of speculation, but the, the real facts behind it, there's, there's, there's more than meets the eye to that, isn't there, really? There is, yeah. You know, there's, you can go through the ones that's missing one by one and say, well, he's not here for this reason, he's not here for that reason. Everybody's got their own reasons. Um, but... Uh, Ultimately, some of them are, some of the guys aren't ready in time. Some of them have chosen to just do a little bit less in the year. Your costs go up for everybody. Costs goes up to be here, but yeah. costs go up. You know, in general, you know, truck preparation, team availability, team costs. So we could talk all day about like I said. Indeed, but to point out, I mean, you know, yes, there's only 12 trucks this weekend. However, the entry list for the season is considerably larger. 18 drivers registered uh, at some point. So it's it's whether or not they can pull their fingers out and get a truck to circuit, really. Well, that's right. You know, it's like everything. You know, you, we'll, we'll finish here in the beginning of November every year. And then you think, ah, oh, well, you know, you can take your foot off the gas and, you know, get up to Christmas, enjoy Christmas into the new year. And then whoosh, all of a sudden we're back here at Easter. And uh, some some guys, you know, other, other priorities, whether it's family, whether it's work, whether it's spare part availability, whatever, has, you know, has sort of caught up with them and they're not ready. So, you know, I think as the season progresses, the numbers will come up definitely. I mean, you know, I'm confident of that. Uh, the championship, with 12 trucks, 12, you know, well presented 12 trucks. They do look pretty awesome. I mean, if we can keep them looking like this for a few more race meetings, I think the sponsors will be very happy, won't they? Well, they will, you know, that's right. And, you know, and the sponsors we've got that's come on board this year, you know, we've got Silverly BWOC HVO fuel, which is available to all the teams and supplied, you know, to the teams. Uh, you know, and that's a big step forward in the, you know, in the, in the environmental side. And, you know, sort of, we're working, as a trucks board, you know, sort of director, to you know improve uh, the vision of the, and the uh, sort of appearance of the championship, but also make it better and more cost-effective for the competitors by supplying them with transponders, cameras, fuel, you know, very very um, subsidised tyres, and so it all helps. But. You know, you've still got to have your truck ready and you've still got to have a team oh, to yes. bring it here. Still going to build it. You build it and they will come. Well, Stuart, look, thank you very much. I'm sure we'll get opportunity to speak to you as a driver at some <laughs> point in the weekend. So. But thank you for clearing that up for us and uh, and have a fantastic weekend ahead. Thanks, Pointy. All the best. Cheers, Stuart. Right, let's go and have a walk around the paddock now and see if we can't find some more drivers uh, just before we see some racing action off the circuit. Right everybody, welcome to the outer paddock with the Junior Saloon Car Championship. As you can see, I've got four drivers here now. We've seen in Formula One, motorsport is all about your reactions. How quick are these guys? And we're gonna find out in this little test that we've got. It's a competition between these guys. They can win uh, a top trumps and an Easter egg as well. So we've got two challenges. It's a little bit like gladiators. The first one is the old Formula One reaction test. I'm gonna hold two balls up like this. They're gonna try and catch them before they hit the ground. They get two points for each ball that they catch. Three goes in total. So a maximum of 12 points in round one. In round two, Sorry, chats, if you just don't mind moving out of the way, you can see we've got the reaction timers here. They're going to have a go on that. Then we're going to total up the scores and find out who is the overall gladiator champion in the Junior Saloon Car Championship. So let's meet our contenders. Who have we got here? Uh, Harvey Geardropper Kersley. Harry the Hero Smith. Bertie the Beast Bream. Just Disco. Just Disco. That's what I like to see. Uh, get a good beat out of him a little bit later. Right, are we ready, guys? So uh, we're going to start with you, Harvey. Okay, yeah. first challenge up. Uh, could I, sorry, Laura, can you come in as well, please? Please, uh, glamorous assistant, Laura Payne. I need you to come a little bit closer because I need you to hold this for me, if okay. that's okay, and just wave it around. Okay, so yeah. we've all seen this before. We've seen it in Formula One. We've seen it before. 
I'm going to hold, because you guys are a lot taller than me, I'm only short. So I'm going to hold this up here, hands on top, two points for every single ball that you catch. Okay, here we go. Whoa. Four points. <laughs> Four points. Well done. Got ten. Crispy corner. <laughs> Maximum score. Wow. I don't believe it. <laughs> Maximum <Stop>. score there. <laughs> right. No pressure. <laughs> Contender. Contender number two. Ready. <laughs> two points. Done it. It's done it. Eight points. Oh, okay. Not bad. Not bad. Eight points there. Eight points for contender number two. Right. Contender number three. The beast. Here we go. No pressure. Four points. Four. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Still get eight. Still get eight. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, we've got six there. Come on, Disco. Is that six? Is that six? Yeah. Nine. Lovely Laura. <laughs> That's okay, here we go. Disco now. Oh, that's what? Two points. Right, thank you very much. Round one complete. So, Laura, don't disappear. What are the scores <laughs> on the doors? Okay, so we've got Bertie with six, Harry the Hero with eight, Disco ten, and in the lead at the moment is Harvey on 12. Harvey is the leader. Right, so Harvey, you're now going to set the overall total score to beat on here right now. Do we have somebody to set this up for us? It's 30 seconds. We've all seen these before. You've got to hit as many as you possibly can. Harvey is going to go up first. How quick is his reactions here? This is, this is just like being at the Monaco Grand Prix right now, oh, yeah. isn't it, Laura? Oh, yes, it is, of course. She's not, she's not convinced. Right, Harvey up first. Here we go. 30 seconds on the clock. How many can he do? OK, here we go. We're going to start in three, two, one, go. Yeah, and already that bottom right hand one had an off up at Druids. Look at this, he's getting it, he's motoring along now. Wow. Max for stepping, eat your heart out. Look at this. Don't worry, keep going. There we go. 53, my word, Ooh, not too bad at all. Right, second contender coming up. It's Harry the hero, what can he do? Okay, I will count down, are we ready? Yeah. In three, two, one, go. So 65 is the score to beat, total score to beat. Harry the hero comes into this one with eight points. So he's got a bit of work to do. Harvey gear dropper Kersley, your overall leader. I tell you, this is good. This is really good. 49. 49. Oh, it's not going to be enough, unfortunately. Harry the hero is not going to be our reaction gladiator. I'm afraid now we've got Bertie the Beast Bream scored six in the opening round so a little bit of work to do here Bertie we're gonna to have to go into absolute overdrive for this one we're gonna get going in three two one go look at the concentration on his face Laura you hate it when I put the microphone in front of your face don't you are you trying to count <laughs> The ultimate reaction test here is junior saloon car drivers. Because over the course of the weekend, on the Saturday, two races on the Sunday. He's the defending champion. 
which was with him yesterday. It was at 50 score, 56 in total. So uh, well, I won't give too much away, but uh, Bertie, good effort. But unfortunately, you will not be today's champion. So the last effort. This is the big one as well. This This is going to be exciting. Are we ready? Off the six balls, that dropped. Coming to this one, just a two point deficit to gear dropper Kersley. Fifty three. We do have sitting out on the podium by a single point. We have Bertie. The new Bertie. It's Harry the hero. And in first place, let's jump straight to it, shall we? Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Disco or is it going to be Gear Dropper? Just two points in it. And your champion, your junior saloon car reaction gladiator champion is, with 65 points, Harvey Gear Dropper Kersley. <laughs> Woo -woo. Stay there, boys. Stay there. Uh, Harvey, how does it feel to be the gladiator champion? You've, you've taken down your opponents today. Feels like a normal race day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. We've got a bit of reaction to that, boys. You, you know, what, what are we saying to that? I think uh, we'll let qualifying do the talking, won't we? <laughs> it goes qualifying. Uh, actually, we've got to give you your prize as well. Uh, oh, it yeah. is classic cars for top trumps. Well oh, done. Uh, you, you also win. Uh, it's not mine to give away this, but it's on the side. So well done. Congratulations. Uh, if I could just give you, uh, you win a tennis ball. Thank you. And also a tennis ball for being on the podium. No uh, thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, guys. Anyway, Junior Saloon Car Championship. Two races coming up on Sunday. We do have qualifying session on Saturday. That is it from here. Enjoy the rest of the action. Let's hand back to your commentator, Dave Goddard. Well, first bragging rights of the season uh, go to Harvey Kersley, then, uh, I guess, from uh, something a little bit different there from the Junior Saloon Car paddock. Harvey, the son of uh, Alex Kersley, who we've uh, seen on our coverage racing in the uh, Hyundai Coupe Cup in the past, making the move up from karting over the last couple of years in the, the Citroen Saxo VTR in the Junior Saloon Car Championship. They will have their qualifying session coming up uh, at the end of the lunch break, and uh, after that session we'll be back on air with... Um, the uh, first race of the afternoon session. We've got six races coming up this afternoon. The MG Owners Club Championship, supported by Adrian Flux Insurance. That's followed by the Pickup Truck Racing Championship. If you've not seen those before, you've got a treat coming up. Then it's Caterham's, the uh, Caterham Graduate Sigma 135 category. Second truck race of the day, second MG race of the day, and finally the Mini Challenge Club Sport with Airtech Motorsport for BMW Minis. Just to break in for a second, just going past on the Brabham Strait now, a very impressive American truck. This is um, from Mick Gould Commercials, and that is a 2015 Peterbilt recovering John Powell's truck there. Look at the size of that. Huge four-axle Peterbilt, weighs 21 tonnes, 600 horsepower Cummins 15-litre diesel engine, and an 18-speed gearbox. I'm just, gonna, I'm just been sent some uh, backup uh, background info on that machine. Imagine that going out with the race trucks. Be a bit long to get round Druid's hairpin, wouldn't it? <laughs> Saying that, someone did race a Peterbilt in the early days of truck racing. The Dutchman, uh, Ad van Coverden, raced uh, a Peterbilt. Goodness knows how he got it round Brands Hatch. I've seen pictures of his in action, though. So Mick Gould Commercials helping out trackside recovery with that massive Peterbilt this weekend. Very impressive in its own right. I'd love to see that as the pace truck, actually, later on. But uh, a short break, then, uh, for some lunch and uh, maybe an easter egg or two and we'll be back on air once junior saloons have completed their qualifying with the first of two races for the mg owners club championship
Go on then. Hip hip! Hey. Oh, you had to spoil it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it at the end. Oh, I thought you were doing it at the beginning. Well, we're miscommunication. I'm terribly sorry. Do you want to just do that again? No, tough. It's TV, it's how it goes. But one thing we don't need to do again uh, is that race because first place, first race, uh, it's, it's just coming up trumps for Ryan Smith again, isn't it? Yeah, look, the guys have worked well over the winter. They've done a few changes, but mainly finished it off because it wasn't done from the beginning of last season. Really good, pace was good. Um, the whole thing worked and uh, what a fantastic amount of fans come out to see you as well they've, they've they've come over in their swarms ready to see you take your first trophy in a few minutes hip hip Yay! it was better second time <laughs> round I think it was better when he did it I'm sorry I'm, I'm terribly sorry I feel I feel bad good turnout again <laughs> you know thank you to all our sponsors amazing um, crowds are brilliant you know it's not the best day you don't know what it's doing but listen race two it's all about race two now race one's in the bag indeed now race two obviously we're going off the second fastest qualifying lap now I believe you probably had that as well didn't you this morning yeah 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 but look everyone's up the game everyone's got a chance everyone's got the pace I say it every year but it, it don't get any easier put it that way but look I've got a fantastic team they should take all the credit. I'm just steering the ship. They should, but they never do. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it is me, really, and I'm we'll just making it. Well, you are. You're just being very modest, Ryan. This is very, it's a very good attribute of yours. No, absolutely. No, <laughs> delighted to to start off where we finished off, and uh, long may it continue. And reverse grid later on. That means you're actually going to be possibly behind some Division Two drivers. And do you know what? That's what the sport's about, isn't it? Uh, show what you can showcase and your talent. And the Division Two guys aren't far off. I think some of them finished a, a, <laughs> in front a mix. of the, there was a mix. A Division <laughs> One. So, look, everyone at this, everyone within this championship can win races. Paul Rivette's done extremely well. John Powell and Simon Cole, good to be back. Wish Simon had move over a bit earlier. Like, <laughs> but, no, it's um, everyone. It's a credit to everyone, mate, and organ. Us. Fantastic. Well, well done, Ryan. Uh, like I say, a few minutes time, we'll get you some some gold trophies out uh, this this season. And uh, well, congratulations and good luck for the rest of the season. Shake your hand. You, and bro. one more. Hip hip. Oh, he's, oh, he's, oh he's come, I thought he was coming to get told off Thanks, by guys. Championship Manager. Well done. Right then, let's go and have a word with Paul Rivette then over in Division 2 to see how he feels about taking the only trophy available in Division Thanks 2 for the okay. season. Oh, here we go. Right then, well there we go, an interesting start to the year, fantastic results, and we've got some beautiful trophies! Yay! Oh my gosh, right, we're, we're fighting for time, let's do that again, trophies! Yay! Nothing like live television is it, ladies and gentlemen. Right then, first of all, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody that's come down today. It feels like a Saturday, but it's actually a Sunday, and we've all got another day off work tomorrow. Isn't that weird? Which is great if you're getting paid for it, right? Yeah? Anybody, so anybody self-employed here? Yeah, yeah, sorry guys. Yeah, you're not even employed. Come on, self-employed. Pocket money doesn't count, sorry. Uh, right, so we've had a, a very interesting first race. Great results all round, but the most important result is no major incidents. Round of applause for the drivers, ladies and gentlemen. Excellent. And we've even got some sunshine to hand out the first set of trophies. So, as I've explained to you guys, I will just explain to them at home as well. Because we've only got three drivers in Division 2, we're only going to be handing out one trophy, and that's first place for Division 2. However, both of the possible contestants for that trophy are getting their wrists slapped in the headmaster's office, so we're going to do them later. But, that of course brings me over. Where have you put my clipboard? Cameraman, clipboard. He's put it over here. What a legend. Two divisions one so in third place taking his first but definitely not last trophy of the year put your hands together ladies and gentlemen for michael oliver <laughs> well done buddy excellent job thanks babe thanks babe three number three and in second place chasing and hunting the entire race make some noise for david jenkins not, not that kind of hunting, the engine was pouring. It was that <laughs> Which, of course, means in first place, as if you had to ask, reigning champion, make some noise for Ryan Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Fantastic, thank you, sir. <laughs> we'll get some pictures, we'll get some video. 
And like some noise for your Division 1 top three for the first race of the 2024 season. But of course, Ryan has the power. It's time for the champagne. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Right, come to the front if you want some cheap perry in your face. <laughs> And away we go, round of applause for Ryan Smith in his first place. Just to let you know, we've got another race at quarter to five, uh, the second and other race for today. So if you want some more racing action, make sure you get to the circuit for then. We've also got three, three races tomorrow on Bank Holiday Monday, and we'll be here. So if you're in uh, Brands Hatch, make sure, thank you Ryan, you come down, get some trophies, get some chocolate. It's going to be a great Easter weekend. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you all very soon. Round of applause, more noise. Good to see the uh, trophy presentation for the British Truck Racing Championship. As Pointy said, we'll have another race for them a little later on. But uh, qualifying taking place at the moment for the uh, first round of the 2024 Junior Saloon Car Championship at the moment. Identical Citroen Saxo VTR, 1600cc. All these drivers aged 14 to 17 years of age. And looks like we've got a red flag coming out, unfortunately. Just as we come back with six minutes of the session to go, we had a red flag right at the start when Ben Smiles, number 95, ended up in the gravel. That's Paddock Hill Ben, but he's okay and got going again. So this will give us a chance to uh, run through the times, but um, the um, red flag coming out. Reminder of our schedule for this afternoon. We've got the MG Owners Club Championship, first of two races for them over 20 minutes coming up after this session. Then we've got the Pickup Truck Racing Championship. The Sim Motorsport Caterham Graduates, new sponsor for them this year. The uh, Sim Racing Company based in Gillingham. Sigma 135 is their race of the day. We'll see the more powerful Sigma 150 cars tomorrow. Another truck race at 4.45, then the MG Owners Club Championship. And uh, finally, the Mini Challenge with uh, Airtech Motorsport, their club sport category. A variety of BMW Minis competing there. So we're not too sure of the reason for the red flag at the moment. The car's coming back into the pit lane. Six minutes, as we say, of the session to go, so we may see a restart, but currently quickest of the uh, young racers in their Saxos is number 10, Harry Smith. We saw him as part of our challenge earlier on, the 16-year-old. Came in as a novice in 2021 into junior saloon cars, racing for Chandler Motorsports, who have several cars out there this year. Uh, Chandler Motorsport drivers Harry Smith, James Sherrington, Wilf Butler, uh, ben Smiles and Josh Salvadore. Five cars for Chandler Motorsport out there this year. It's uh, Harry Smith who's been quickest in this session so far with a 59.175 second lap. And second quickest is one of the favourites this year, the man who finished third in the points last year, Jonathan Moore, car number 12. I know a lot of uh, Jonathan's friends were watching on our streams last year and were busy in our comments section. The man from Leeds, he could be one of the favourites of this year's championship. He's just a few hundredths of a second off Harry Smith's time so far. And third fastest, number 448 in the Vinner Sport car, Kyle Wells. I remember Kyle racing ninja carts on the short ovals when he was about six or seven years old. I first saw him race at um, a venue that's been in the news recently. Uh, Wheels Park in Birmingham. It was Birmingham City Football Club trying to build over that at the moment. Fourth quickest is number 110. We've mentioned Josh uh, Salvadore for Chandler Motorsports. And uh, rounding out the top five in our junior saloon car times is number 40, James Sherrington. So Chandler Motorsport with, five of the, with three of the uh, top five at the moment. Sixth quickest, number 78, which is Kieran Roberts. Seventh fastest, uh, one of our newcomers, number 46, Luca Maserati. That's a racing driver's name, if ever there was one. And uh, 
He does come from a family of racing drivers, the Maserati family, based uh, just outside London. Well known for racing sports cars, although not Maseratis. They're famous for racing Porsches. And um, Luca's father, Piers Maserati, a former British GT champion. I've seen Jamie and Miles Maserati have success in Porsches to the family as well. Luca continuing their tradition of motorsport. He's seventh quickest. Eighth is number 50, Francisco Howitt for Vinna Sports. Ninth fastest is uh, one of the names we saw in our Gladiators Challenge earlier, Bertie Bream. He's, sick. He's ninth quickest in the Kersley Motorsport car. And number 77, Oliver Law, rounding out the top 10. 22 cars have... Uh, set times in this session so far unfortunately I, unfortunately I think the car that was being towed in I saw there was Luca Maserati so he's had uh, a mishap somewhere as the session getting back underway it's the training ground for the saloon car stars of tomorrow young racers between 14 and 17 it was a very competitive season last year and it was Dara Flock the young Irishman who took the title last year and only yesterday he made his uh, debut in the Brick Car Trophy in a Renault Clio, a class winning debut up at Donington Park as well. His first race uh, in senior competition yesterday so that's an inspiration to all these young drivers looking to make the move up. Session gets back underway, just a couple of minutes uh, left on the clock. Let's see if there's going to be any changes. Uh, Harvey Kersley, who won our competition down in the paddock with Ian earlier on. Ian doing his best Bradley Walsh impersonation as host of Gladiators. Uh, he's 11th quickest ahead of Cole Lynch, the uh, leading lady in number 353 for Oryx competition. Uh, her teammates uh, Sherry Ann Powell and uh, Will Crudson, the uh, winner of the scholarship this year, the man from Newcastle, winner of the JSCC scholarship over the winter that's uh, a great um, addition to the CV Let's see how he gets on in uh, the scholarship car for Oryx competition where is Will Crudson in the times at the moment he's 18th quickest out of the 22 that have set laps uh, one car's only done uh, an outlap so far number 29 Alex Bergbaum, he's uh, had some problems by the look of things. I think that's cut his car centre screen in pit lane. Are we going to see any changes at the top of the times? We'll wait to see in the last few moments of this qualifying session for the Junior Saloon Car Championship. Harry Smith still the quickest for Chandler Motorsport in the Saxo. Ahead of Jonathan Moore by 0.078 of a second so very close at the moment and uh, what has to be said there are slightly threatening skies here at Brands Hatch at the moment another car in pit lane is the treble two you can see uh, the top right of the image there that's uh, Oliver Kerr from St Marlow in Buckinghamshire Cole Lynch goes 11th outpaces uh, Harvey Kersley and up to fourth goes number 40 James Sherrington ahead of Josh Salvadori no relation, incidentally, to Roy Salvadori, the famous 50s racing driver. Checkered flag about to go out then. And there it is. So will we see any late changes here? Just that one car with a few problems there. Alex Bergbaum in pit lane. He'll start from the back of the grid for race number one which is coming up tomorrow the uh, two races for the junior saloon cars taking place tomorrow just qualifying for them today they'll be off at uh, just after 10 a.m on easter monday for their first race of the season waiting for our leading runners to come through and take the checkered flag jonathan moore goes over the line doesn't improve a quicker lap though for harry smith to secure himself pole position 59.0 Seven one. Moore does a 59.253, so they improve their times, but uh, not enough to swap positions. Let's see what Kyle Wells does as he comes over in the Vinna Sport car. He remains third, so no changes at the uh, top of the times there. Harry Smith ahead of Jonathan Moore, Kyle Wells, then Sherrington, Salvadori. Sixth is number 78, Kieran Roberts, then Luca Maserati for his debut, Oliver Law, Francisco Howitt, and Bertie Bream. That's your top ten in our junior saloon car qualifying session. They're all across the line now one or two cars having a lap taken off them for exceeding track limits the officials 
Very hot on that this weekend. There's Alex Bergbaum just making his way back into the paddock on the outside of the circuit through the tunnel. And that rounds up our qualifying session for the juniors. And we now move on to our first race of the season for the MG Owners Club Championship, supported by Lancaster and by Adrian Flux. That'll be getting underway over 20 minutes very shortly. Very friendly uh, championship, very popular indeed. Caters for just about all models of MG. There are different classes within the uh, championship. Class A is known as the classic class. That's where you get the MGBs, your MG Midgets and Austin Healy Sprites. And it was one of our classic uh, drivers that won the overall championship last season. He is back to defend the title this year. Number one, Will Sharp from uh, Nottinghamshire in the Wayside Adhesives sponsored MG Midget. Class A also refers to A for Abingdon, where those cars were built in Oxfordshire. Uh, class B, we haven't got any entries this weekend, unfortunately, for that class. That's the Maestros and Montegos. Yes, there's still some out there. And the less powerful MGZRs as well, and ZSs. Uh, class F is for, obviously, MGFs and MGTFs. And Class Z, which is for the ZRs and ZSs, the hatchbacks and saloons of the more modern era of MGs. Last year it was Will Sharp who took the title ahead of uh, Steve McDermott who uh, once again wrapped up the uh, Z class title. Good battle with Scott Bugner last season in his yellow ZR. Scott is here this weekend but he's not contesting the full season this year. He's sharing the car with his brother Sean so we won't see a title challenge from Scott Bugner this year. Plenty of displays at trackside as we can see this weekend from the uh, world of trucking. Plenty of show trucks on display and plenty of other attractions here at Brands Hatch on this Easter weekend. Big crowd in attendance despite the uh, rather cold weather. We'll give you the grid shortly. The uh, MGs had their qualifying session this morning. We'll wait to see for them to appear out on track. They'll be in the assembly area at the moment. Quickest in uh, the classic class in a very famous MGB was Lewis Saunders, a former junior saloon car champion, number 121, and he, I believe, is racing the uh, MG owned by the great Jim Bainham. But we'll take you through the full grid, and it is uh, Steve McDermott on the front row, but only second because the first ever pole position went to number 87 Andy Priest in his uh, ZR. Maybe he could be a title challenger this year. Steve McDermott alongside on the second row, number 17 Riley Price and 60 Andy Heitman. And completing five ZRs in the top five places, number 46 Mark Grant alongside Mark Baker in the number 53, the first of the MGFs. Fourth row, 83 of Phil Walker and uh, 67, Jake McDermott, son of Steve, in uh, their ZRs. And then we've got a pair of MGFs, Simon Kendrick, number 42, regular in this championship for many, many years. And Martin Wills, likewise, alongside his MGF. That's a uh, car rebuilt over the winter following a smash at Pembrey last season. Scott Buckner, regular race winner last year, is only 12th on the grid alongside Joshua Addison, one of the newcomers to the championship this year. His father, Rob Addison, was champion in this uh, series way back in 1996. Row 7 is Jimmy Work, number 82, his second year of racing, alongside number 13 of Luke Boniface, making the switch from bike racing. And on the eighth row, we've got Stuart Plotnick in his MGF, and the first of the classics, Lewis Saunders in Jim Bainham's MGB Roadster. And we may well be seeing Jim Bainham back out racing. He's not been out for a couple of years, the MG legend. May see him make a return this year. Row 9, a pair of ZRs. Adrian, well, not a pair of ZRs, a pair of Z-class cars. One of them's a ZR, number 3, Adrian Olsen. Darren Leonard is in a ZS saloon. Row 10 is the reigning champion, number 1, Will Sharp, in his midget. And number 11, Chris Millard, with his MGB. It's on to row 11. Number 14, of David Amflit, in his B Roadster, alongside the midget of Gary Puxty, number 50. Penultimate row, number six, which is driven in this race by John Diffie. Nigel Walcott will take over that car for race two later on. And uh, number 26, new to the championship, but certainly not new to racing, is Malcolm Best in his MGB GT. Number 26, he's been racing Ford Capris for many decades, making a switch this year. And Nick Webster, number four, in his B, will uh, complete the grid alongside number 172 of Robert Fisher. Perfectly timed because the cars have just moved off on their green flag warming up lap. This will be a 20-minute race. New paint job there for Martin Wills, the uh, bright green there, number 44. Stuart Plotnick in the familiar white tiger livery. The orange tiger livery is on uh, 
running mate Simon Kendrick's car. There's the reigning champion, the silver MG Midget, the Wayside Adhesives car of Will Sharp. But it's the ZRs that will be fighting for overall victory here. There's number 121, the uh, green and orange car of uh, Lewis Saunders. Started his career on the short oval at Standlake in Oxfordshire in their junior class before moving to junior saloon cars and subsequently on to historic racing. A couple of MGBs at the back. That's the number four of Nick Webster from Ainsham in Oxfordshire. 172. That is Rob Fisher from London on his local circuit. Weaving to warm up their Toyo tyres, one of the uh, partners of this championship. Great racing prospect. The first car race of the season here at uh, Brands Hatch on BARC TV. Saw some great car racing over the last two days at Donington. Thank you to Adam Weller for taking us uh, through that one. I was unavailable on Friday, unfortunately. I was at Donington on uh, Saturday, though, and a great day was had. When the cars come to the grid. It'll be a standing start this time. And Andy Priest in his first ever pole position, the black and yellow MGZR, alongside the familiar red and black of um, multiple class champion and former overall champion Steve McDermott. Riley Price in the pink and blue car, very distinctive. And Andy Heitman in silver, black and yellow. Row 3, Mark Grant in the orange ZR. Then the first of the MGFs is the uh, blue car with the white stripes. That's Mark Baker. Then Phil Walker in the uh, grey and green, the old MG touring car colours, number 83. Starts alongside uh, Jake McDermott. McDermott Jr. in the black and red ZR. There's a gap by the look of it behind Martin Wills. Uh, Scott Bugner, that is, who's not there. So Scott Bugner must have had a problem in qualifying. So he's a non-starter, unfortunately. Josh Addison is there, though, for his debut. As is Luke Boniface, the uh, silver and white number 13 ZR. 20 minutes then for the MG owners club championship sponsored by adrian flux insurance gets underway and a hesitant start there for steve mcdermott that's a poor getaway from the former champion there's a couple of other cars with a slow start simon kendrick and mark grant pretty slow away as well are they all going to make it round paddock hill bend the uh, classic machines at the back of the field will sharp on the outside and this tire tangle riley price goes off mcdermott uh, sue the gravel as well steve mcdermott riley price into the tire wall uh, Stuart Plotnick's gone off as well, he's tagged Chris Millard and about three others involved as well. Oh, that's going to be a stoppage, I think. Cars everywhere. Uh, that's um, Chris Millard with heavy damage to his MGB. Stuart Plotnick was involved, and I think that's uh, one of the MG midgets off to the left. That might be John Diffie. Riley Price getting going again or trying to, but surely they're going to have to stop the race with that uh, amount of carnage on the run up towards Druids. I think cold tyres may have been a problem there. Riley Price has stopped on the track. They can't continue with cars in that position. He gets it going again. Now, will it be a safety car or will it be a red flag because Stuart Plotnick's car is on the track there? Well, the cars are completing the first lap. But um, we don't have any uh, indication of whether there will be a safety car. Price. We'll see it again from another angle. Steve McDermott went off through the gravel. Heitman spun. Riley Price went off to the left. And everybody else just got caught up uh, behind them. There goes Stuart Plotnick smashing into uh, the number 50 car it was who went off. That's Gary Puxty, not uh, John Diffie, as I said there. Apologies there. Well, the yellows are out, so we have uh, a full course yellow. So I imagine this means virtual safety car at the moment, or whether the safety car is out. Full course yellow is what's come up on the timing screen so whether we've got the safety car out there or if it's a virtual safety car i'm not sure what was lewis saunders doing there throwing the mgb around that was more than just warming your tires up lewis dear oh dear chaotic start then for the mg owners club championship yeah safety car boards are out So I imagine there's a safety car out there. The timing screen's gone American and says full course yellow. <laughs> then
there's Adrian Olsen and in fact the car's coming to a halt virtually on um, Aylwood Rise your leader is Andy Priest from pole position and uh, yes there's the safety car we got forward focus there is Priest ahead of Mark Baker up into second place. Martin Wills third. So we've got two MGFs in the top three. Then Phil Walker. Uh, the McDermott's fifth and sixth. Steve recovering. He's in sixth behind Jake. Looking at the uh, sky at the moment, I wonder if a few drops of rain had fallen there. And it's that, that's what caught everybody out. Riley Price is still going, the number 17. That's a shame for him after a great qualifying effort to line up third. Gary Puxley trying to get the MG Midget left what's left of it running again but uh, um, it's fair to say number 11 Chris Millard won't be racing again today a lot of damage for him and we continue under safety car how many cars have we lost there uh, Riley Price we saw but he is moving again uh, Gary Puxty Chris Millard and Stuart Plotnick, the three involved in that uh, pile-up. And uh, Andy Heitman got going in. He's 17th. And there was another car that went off in there as well. It looks like uh, that's got going again. Lewis Saunders has uh, blitzed through the field. Uh, the result's that. He's up to 7th overall. He's got uh, Luke Boniface, the former motorcycle racer, in behind him on his debut. Jimmy Work is behind him, and rounding up the top 10 is uh, Simon Kendrick in the Tiger livery, number 42. Behind him is the number 99 car of Josh Addison on his debut. So he had the uh, black cross on the yellow background on the back of his car, the, that meaning uh, he's a novice. Gary puxty has got the MG Midget back to the pits. So he's pulled into pit lane. Heard the horn go off in the background. And trackside recovery in attendance. Recovering Stuart Plotnick's MGF. And a very badly damaged uh, number 11 of Chris Millard. But it looks as though the Berkshire driver is OK. That's the main thing. He took a big impact in there. Riley Price has caught up to the tail of the field, so escaping without major damage after spinning into the tyre wall. Safety car continues to lead round the number 87 of Andy Priest. He was a midfield runner in the uh, ZR class last season. But the man from Gloucestershire finds himself out in front looking for his maiden win. 53 Mark Baker leads Class F. Saunders leads Class A in Jim Bainham's car and Jim Bainham estimates that that MGB has uh, covered more miles in races than any other MGB in history he's uh, been racing it for so long hopefully we see Jim back out later this year hasn't raced for a couple of years the MG legend even competed in uh, the Will Hire 24 hour race a couple of times at Snetterton in that car it's young Lewis Saunders driving it today second in class a is Will Sharp, the reigning champion, and third, David Amflit, number 14. There he is, the uh, car with the bonnet stripes just going over the line. He's got Andy Heitman behind him. In fact, Will Sharp hasn't come up on the uh, timing screen. He is there, though. Oh, his transponder must not be working. A flatbed being used to recover what's left of Chris Millard's car. That is a great shame. For very first lap of the season, and that car is wrecked. There's Josh Addison just ahead of Mark Grant. The ZS Saloon, of course, seen in the early 2000s in British touring cars, with the likes of Warren Hughes and Anthony Reid driving them, those cars. Darren Leonard out there, a new livery on that car show, it was yellow, yellow and blue last season Stuart Plotnick requiring recovery as well to his white tiger as that car is known the uh, 
Whether that's white tiger or zebra stripes it's got on there. Plot neck, one of the top runners in the MGF category. Adrian Olsen used to campaign an MG Maestro in the number three. There's a number six, that's the car shared by two drivers. John Diffie driving it in this race and uh, MG veteran Nigel Walcott will take over for the second race. It's Andy Priest who leads. Can he hang on for a maiden victory? Well, coming up towards half distance, the uh, marshals and recovery crews working as fast as they can to get the track clear. Thanks to them again for all their efforts. I think cold tyres just caught out uh, a few of the drivers there. There were several spinners. So Andy Heitman goes spinning around. Riley Price went off. And then a Stuart Plotnick spun across. He collected uh, a couple of the Class A cars, unfortunately. So we're under safety car in our opening race of the season for the Adrian Flux MG Owners Club Championship. know if we're going to get going again because the lights will go out atop the safety car if we do get back into uh, racing conditions see if Andy Priest can hold on in front won't be this lap the lights are still on Sun burning through the clouds again here at Brantach. Perhaps the best chance we've seen for a while to see how the MGFs fare against the newer ZRs in the battle for overall uh, supremacy. Last year, uh, Scott Bugner and Steve McDermott pretty much divided up the wins between them overall. Steve delayed in that uh, early melee and he's down to sixth. And Scott Bugner a non-starter. Looks as though the run up Halewood Hill is now clear, so we should hopefully go back to racing this time. We've only lost three cars as a result of that. Light's still on on top of the safety car at the moment. Will they go out as it comes round towards the... Uh, Cooper straight. Riley Price should try and carve his way through here as well from the back. He'll be gutted after such a good qualifying effort. Stuart Plot next car is stretched back into pit lane. He'll try and get that ready for race two, but I'd say doubtful. then looks like we are ready to get this race back underway for the Adrian Flux MG Owners Club Championship the pace car the safety car I should say is in pit lane and off they go with Andy Priest leading ahead of Mark Baker and Martin Wills the 83 of Phil Walker well up there in fourth place in the old MG touring car colours and Le Mans colours from the early 2000s when they raced in the LMP 675 class Mark Baker is having a go for the overall lead here. Has a look on the outside into Druids. I don't think he'll get through there. Martin Wills has run wide. Now Steve McDermott could be the one to watch here. They're in sixth place. The orange and black number 77. His son Jake up ahead of him. It's Andy Priest hanging on at the front at the moment. Looking for his maiden victory. Still got seven and a half minutes of this race to go. So a few laps to go yet. Very well done to the marshals there for getting the circuit clear. Allowing us to get some green flag racing in. Change there for seventh. Lewis Saunders loses out to Luke Boniface, the newcomer in number 13. Josh Addison battling with Simon Kendrick as well. Addison goes through. I think it was in a maestro back in 1996. His dad won this championship, Rob Addison. 
Simon Kendrick, the uh, very experienced MGF racer, tries to fight back on the inside. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, there was uh, an MGF Cup, a one-make series, used to support the British GT Championship at one time. Side by side there into Paddock, and Addison round the outside. That's a brave move for a newcomer, but he's pulled it off. Goes over the curves a bit on the outside. Is he going to cover the gap here into Druids, though? Simon Kendrick could get him back under braking, and he does so. Andy Priest still with the lead, but only by less than a second ahead of Mark Baker. You can see the uh, more powerful ZRs quicker in a straight line. This is where Josh Addison is able to get up alongside Simon Kendrick. Here he goes again. Good fight between these two all the way around the lap. Behind them is Mark Grant in the number 46 as Simon Kendrick closes the door on Josh Addison. Experience over youth there. Addison will try again on the Brabham straight. The leaders coming up over the line once again. New fastest lap for Andy Priest. He leads Mark Baker, then Wills, Walker. Steve McDermott's got past Jacob into fifth position. He wants the first win of the season. He's closing up on Phil Walker now in the 83 as they go up towards... Druids once again, Martin Wills running a little bit wide there in third place. Walker covers the inside. Behind them is now the 67 car, which is Jake McDermott. He's closing back up again. He wants to ditch family ties and have a battle with Steve. Just behind them is the number 13 of Boniface. Jimmy Works got through as well, so they've got past the um, Class A and F cars. There's Lewis Saunders behind them. Now there's Mark Grant. What's up? What's up to Kendrick and... Um, and uh, Addison, they were battling just behind Lewis Saunders. Where have they gone? Don't tell me they've taken each other out. We'll pick that up in a moment because here comes Jake McDermott on the outside of the uh, number 13. Which is the uh, car of Luke Boniface. Good fight going on here in the lower reaches of the top 10. Boniface on the inside of Jimmy Work. And there's one of them. That's Kendrick in the gravel at uh, Paddock Hill Bend. So that's what's happened. I feared there'd been contact between the two and then the red flag's coming out. There's going to be a red flag with just under five minutes of the race to go. And with uh, the incident we've already seen, there's the reason. I'm wondering if this race might not be restarted. Yes, we're more than three quarters of the way through just, so I imagine that will be result declared. Simon Kendrick in the gravel on the edge of the track at Paddock Hill Bend. I don't know where the car he was battling with, Josh Addison, has gone. I think he's still going a bit further down the order. So presumably there's been contact between the two of them. We didn't see it, so we'll try and pick up a replay on that. Let's have a look. Look on the uh, right of your picture. Yes, there they are, tangling, coming into Paddock. Off goes Kendrick into the gravel. Onto the grass goes Addison. Rejoins behind Mark Grant. That was just a bit over-optimistic, I think, there by Josh Addison from what we saw of it. And the red flag comes out. So we'll wait to see if that's going to be race declared. I imagine it will be because there were less than five minutes to go. And if so, then Andy Priest will take his uh, first ever win. Mark Baker will win Class F in second place. And Martin Wills in number 44 third for two MGFs on the overall podium. That is provisional at the moment. But a rather extraordinary result, has to be said. Full credit to Andy Priest. All position and a first victory provisionally. Class A will go to Lewis Saunders in Jim Bainham's car. What a crazy race. I love this comment on our stream. The Tigers in the kitty litter. I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Mackers, for that one. Well, next up, we will have the Pickup Truck Racing Championship. And they're always hugely entertaining around the Brands Hatch Indie circuits. Certainly not um, the type of pickups you might see your uh, local tradespeople using. Very specialised, uh, almost hot rod style racing machines with uh, two litre race tuned engines. That's not the end of the action for the MGs. They have another race later on. I 
That's the results. Um, not confirmed as yet. We're still uh, not confirmed if the race is over, but I imagine it will be. But so we can hand down to Ian Waterhouse down in pit lane. See what news he's got for us. Yeah, welcome down everybody to Park Foamy. We got caught uh, out a little bit there, shall we? Let's just have a quick chat with Jake, because we've got him right here. Jake, chaotic race that, wasn't it? Oh, that was just, from the start, I didn't even know what happened. <laughs> I thought I had a good start, and then suddenly I see we've been dad spinning and Riley spinning. I thought, oh, lucky I didn't get caught up in it all. Well, the first half of the race was sort of behind the safety car, and then and when we got going yeah. again, yeah, I mean, red flag caught us out a little oh, bit on the yeah. hot too, but uh, yeah. look, thank you so much. I'm gonna go Cheers, chat, man. I'm gonna chat to the old man, actually, quickly grab Steve, uh, see if we can make head and a tail of it as well. Steve, obviously the first half of the race under the safety car, you actually got quite a poor start though, didn't you, off the line? Oh, that was terrible. Um, yeah, I sort of got pushed out wide, and then uh, it just wouldn't come back in, so and as soon as I got two wheels in the gravel, it was just like oh no but um luckily i got it back on the track um and uh yeah then it was just like hard work from there but then obviously people were just going off so i didn't have a chance but it's always race two steve isn't it? Always yeah there's always there. let's hope we get more laps out there as well let's stay with us if we can let's just move around a little bit uh, i believe actually up here we do have mark baker who finished in second place on track great start actually from uh, mark wasn't it let's have a quick chat with him as well we'll let him get out of the car of course second on track and uh, there actually just behind us is your race winner andy priest as well we'll catch up with him very shortly but let's have a quick chat with mark uh, shooting up the grid off the line as well uh, crackers i let you get your helmet off I feel the little glasses coming off as well there. Uh, Mark, I'll let you uh, do that there. Uh, I'm not used to wearing glasses. <laughs> oh, you made a cracking start, Mark, and then of course safety car just uh, backs everybody up. Well, yeah, I couldn't believe it, honestly. It was a brilliant start, and when I realised I had a gap to my right so I could actually go up the inside, it was fantastic. And then all I saw in my mirrors was what could anybody describe as a bit of carnage. Yes, it's a polite way of it. Thank you for that. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we are live, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, and, and then I suppose half the race under a safety car. And then, of course, we red flagged early. So um, let's hope for more laps in race two, eh? Yeah, not, not a great start to our season as a championship, but, you know, I'll take a pole uh, class win. It's motorsport. Congratulations, thank Mark. You. Well done. Let's uh, have a, a quick chat over here. Let's uh, jump in with Andy Priest, who, uh, Andy, you were in a great, perfect position, really, weren't you? Uh, we saw yeah. Steve got bogged down from the start as well you comfortably led and then safety car yeah i didn't really see what happened to steve at the start i was just kind of focusing it was my first pole position so um oh, well, I, was just, just, I was just focusing on the start and thinking like well, as long as steve doesn't pull across in front of me then keep the inside and just keep my foot in so um yeah and all hell broke loose behind me apparently so um yeah how does it feel to be uh, top step of the podium man yeah well first time so um yeah, made up. I mean, it's obviously not you the way look, I wanted to do it. You look stunned. Honestly, I, mean, I, don't know. I mean, that was that was just <laughs> chaos, really. Because um, again, first time behind the safety car as well, like leading it as well, and nearly messed that up. And I've Mark right behind me from the start. Were you a bit uh, nervous? You know, you see the lights yeah, go look, off, and you're like, "Oh my god, when do I go? When do I?" You know? Yeah, well, that's it. I, was, I, was, I don't know how many laps we did behind the safety car, but I was just eyes were pinned on the lights on top of the safety car. Like, what are they going? What are they going? What are they going? And it still caught me out. Well, <laughs> so, look, congratulations! Okay. You're going to be picking up that first place trophy. Best of luck for race cool. two as well. We'll catch up Thank a little bit much. later too. Uh, pickup trucks coming up next. I'm going to hand back to Dave, but then we're going to make our way actually over to the assembly area, see if we can chat to some of the drivers. Dave, over to you. Well, let's take a look back at uh, some of the highlights of that chaotic race. It was cars everywhere through Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. Stuart Plotnick got onto the grass and Wallop taking out two of the MG uh, Classic class runners and uh, Chris Millard taking heavy damage, but thankfully the driver only frustrated rather than injured. This was okay. His car, unfortunately, was not. There was uh, cars everywhere at the front of the pack. Three ZRs going off into a spin. But then uh, watch for Stuart Plotnick coming in from stage left. Straight through the middle, takes out Gary, Pl Gary Puxty and uh, Chris Millar. They were just the innocent bystanders there. Such a shame for all three of them out of the race. The, all the ZRs that were involved managed to recover. Andy Heitman was the uh, first of them to spin. Andy Priest then uh, took off into the lead, but the red flag came out following a tangle between Josh Addison and Simon Kendrick. They've been having a battle further down the top ten, and into the gravel went Simon Kendrick. So Andy Priest takes uh, provisionally the first win of the season then. And we will move on to the first of the season for the Pickup Truck Racing Championship. And these are going to be very spectacular indeed. 
Let's uh, see who Ian's got hold of down in the assembly area as they uh, start to grid up. just gone out on track as well I had a red flag for the MG owners club racer uh, catching everybody a little bit off guard there a couple of stories though in the pickup trucks just so you know uh, Reese Jones last year's champion in fact he's a two-time champion for the pickup truck he's not racing this season no Neil Tressler either uh, that might give the opportunity to Dale Jen he's going to line up in fourth place of course Crick Chris Brockhurst on pole position then we've got the two Tompkins Paul and Dean it is going to be an absolute cracker on the US styled series the pickup truck racing about to get underway here race one for them I'm going to hand over to Dave who's going to take you through the action well in position on the grid then and in fact with the uh, system of partially reversing the grid in pickups uh, Chris Brockhurst who was fastest in qualifying starts from fourth on the grid and it is Dale Gent last year's championship runner-up who is on pole a lot of trucks with new liveries for uh, this year we'll take you through the grid in full as they uh, go round for the rolling start. Number 83, Dale Gent is on pole alongside the number 21 with Dean Tompkins. Dean's father, number 12, Paul Tompkins on row two alongside number 89, the fastest man in qualifying, that's Chris Brockhurst. Row three, number five, Dan Fisher and 44 of Ryan Hadfield, the former Ginetta sports car racer. The fourth row, the uh, longest serving driver on the grid, number 93, Michael Smith will be alongside 68, Eric Bolton. Row five, number 84, Matthew Moore, Alongside him at number 65, Mark Willis. Again, uh, a real veteran of this championship. Row 6, number 72, Alan Cooper, the ex-Formula 2 stock car racer. Starts alongside Irishman, number 8, David O'Regan. And at the back of the grid, uh, a man who had problems in qualifying, ex-British touring car race winner, number 30, Matt Simpson. Alongside him, number 42, Jonathan Hadfield, brother of Ryan. Many of these drivers are ex-short oval racers from stock cars and hot rods. These pickups all identical, 14 cars, out, 14 trucks out there. This will be a 16 lap race, first of three races this weekend for the pickups. Uh, as Ian's already told you, the uh, reigning two-time champion Rhys Jones not racing this year. So a chance for uh, a new name to shine in the 2024 pickup truck racing championship season. There's Matt Simpson, his familiar colours at the uh, back of the field. Watch for him coming through. Was third in the championship behind uh, Reese Jones and Dale Gent last season. The pace car has released them. Time to go pick up racing here on the Brands Hatch Indy circuit. Dale Gent and Dean Tompkins with a new livery on his truck on the, well both the front row men have new liveries to lead the field away. The season gets underway down into Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. They're all bunched up two by two. Dale Gent, number 83, who's ditched the Dale Earnhardt look-alike paint job for this season, takes up the lead running ahead of Dean Tompkins. Chris Brockhurst, who is fastest in qualifying, trying to go around the outside in the turquoise and grey number 89 machine. Looks like he's going to get ahead of Paul Tompkins. Up in the third, there's a tangle at the back. Who's that that's gone around the number 84 of Matthew Moore? I think that's the ex-George um, Turicki championship winning truck that he's at the wheel of. Matthew Moore used to race a space frame Ford Escort, among other things, has rejoined at the tail of the field. Slip and slide on cold tyres, and over the grass goes Matt Simpson there at uh, Surtees. He's trying to get these tyres fully warmed up. There's Alan Cooper towards the back in the number 72. Paul Tompkins has dropped a couple of spots. He's under fire from the 44 of Ryan Hadfield. The Hadfield family began racing up at Buxton Raceway, the short oval in the Peak District, as Chris Brockhurst pulls past Dean Tompkins, and Paul Tompkins follows him through, family ties being ditched there certainly, so Brockhurst up to second, but Dale Gents already getting away in the lead. Dean Tompkins returns the favour on his dad Paul, used to race in the uh, black and green liveried uh, A4 metal recycling colours, now with new liveries, these very brightly coloured, almost NASCAR style machines, and there's the veteran from the North East, number 93, Michael Smith, former three-time champion, he and Mark Willis, the most experienced men on this grid, battling with the number 68 of uh, Eric Bolton. Dan Fisher, number five, he's a racer at Brands Hatch in the local Tin Top Series in a Honda Civic a few years ago, fighting it out with Matt Simpson, recovering from that mishap on the opening lap. So a pause for breath as they start to settle into single file. Simpson on the outside, though, of Dan Fisher still chasing Mark Willis in the number 65, was plagued by mechanical problems last season. Gent in the clear at the front. He leads by one and a quarter seconds, near enough. Mark Willis getting the tail a bit uh, sideways there. He chases Eric Bolton in the number 68, the purple truck. 
number eight in there. That's David O'Regan. Lives near Cork in Ireland. And a bit of argy-bargy there between Simpson and Fisher. Simpson's going to go down the inside into Graham Hill Bend. He goes through. His father, Jeff Simpson, a former National Hot Rod champion. Matt Simpson won the European title in National Hot Rods. Had a British touring car race win in his Honda Civic at Alton Park in 2018. And now Matt's uh, own son, Ben Simpson, is racing in karts. Maybe we'll see him in the pickup someday. Dale Gents with the lead, though, ahead of Brockhurst. Then the Tompkins son and father pairing. So over the line they go. Fastest lap of the race by Chris Brockhurst. He's got the lead gap down to just over a second. Simpson has a look again. Attacking Mark Willis. There's O'Regan up on the kerb through Paddock Hill Bend. Behind him is Alan Cooper. And Mark Willis sliding about there. He's missed his braking points. Fires uh, Eric Bolson and Matt Simpson out wide. Fisher and O'Regan go through. Look at them throwing these things around sideways. So spectacular. Matt Simpson nearly into the back of David O'Regan. They're old rivals from their hot rod days, those two. I remember seeing them battling each other at the uh, National Championship weekend at Hensford Hills Raceway every August in the years gone by. Probably no love, love lost between the two of them. Behind them is Eric Bolton. He's raced a variety of uh, saloon cars on the circuits. I saw him in a Ford Fiesta a few years ago in the CSCC Tin Top Series. Back of the field, that's number 42. That's Jonathan Hadfield, his brother Ryan further forward in fifth their dad Rob used to race uh, bangers and hot rods at Buxton had fields of race Formula 2 stock cars and uh, went to Ginetta sports cars on the circuits as well there is the number 44 of Ryan challenging Paul Tompkins for what is now fourth place behind them 93 Michael Smith in P6 Willis has got away in seventh eighth place is Fisher Simpson ninth it's been a fraught day for him so far problems on his first lap of qualifying and Hadfield under fire from Michael Smith. You can see them sliding about on the edge of adhesion. We're on lap five out of the 16. Over the line they go once again. Still your leader is Dale Gent. He's led all the way from pole position. Leads by 0.8 of a second over... Chris Brockhurst in second place, another ex-hot rod racer. And Fisher has a look at Simpson there. Chris Brockhurst started his career, if I remember correctly, down at Ringwood Raceway in Hampshire. While Dale Gent is the son of Mark Gent, who raced on the short ovals in uh, both the UK and the Netherlands in years gone by. Mark was also on the driving forces behind the British Oval Truck Championship. Yes, they raced trucks on short ovals for a time. Dale's raced in lightning rods. He's done classic thunder saloons in a... Very modified Subaru as well. Side by side over the line. That was Michael Smith having a go at Ryan Hadfield. Switches from outside to inside. The A1 performance truck. Oh, and off goes Ryan Hadfield into the gravel. I don't think there was any contact there. He was staying ahead of Michael Smith. That's a great shame for Hadfield. He was running well. He'll drop to the rear of the field if he can keep going. David O'Regan still very sideways further back in the order. That truck uh, used to be sponsored by Parcel Force. I think your parcels would arrive in one piece if that truck was delivering them. Ryan Hadfield is unfortunately stuck in the gravel on the exit of uh, Paddock Hill Bend. So yellow flags, no passing at Paddock. Speaking of passing, Mark Willis has just taken Michael Smith into sixth position. Now Matt Simpson having a go as well. But they're coming up towards the yellow flag zone, so he needs to get this done really before the start-finish line if he's going to make a move. He is up the inside. He's going through on Michael Smith. Simpson goes through up into sixth. Not bad from the back row of the grid for Matt Simpson. There's the reason for the yellow. Ryan Hadfield in the gravel in the yellow truck. Lead gap is coming down, though. Chris Brockhurst got it down to 0.3 of a second. Now and he's going for Dale Gent as they come into Graham Hill. Ben Brockhurst got the inside line. Gent hangs on around the outside using his short oval experience well they're both experienced oval men these two but i think the safety car's coming out yes they're slowing up the safety car is coming out because of ryan hadfield's car hadfield's truck stuck in the gravel we were on lap eight out of 16. pickup truck races run on number of laps rather than time dale gent is picked up by the safety car and uh, chris brockhurst to be frustrated there because he was just making a move for the lead at uh, graham hill bend 
There's 84, Matt Moore has been able to close back up as a result of uh, the safety car coming out. He spun on the first lap. And stuck there is Ryan Hadfield. That's the end of his race, unfortunately. Let's see if we can have a look again and see what happened. Yeah, I think just, it just went light as he came down uh, the bottom of Paddock Hill Bend. There was no contact there from Michael Smith. And unluckily, it just bogged down as he was about to get out of the gravel. It's such a shame there for Ryan Hatfield. You see there, the tail just broke away from him. Just went light at the worst possible moment into the gravel. And just when he thought he was going to be able to dig himself out, the uh, truck bogged down into the gravel and he stuck there. See it again from the other angle. There it goes. So easy to do through there. He goes so light through that section of the circuit. And he nearly got it back on again. So we have the safety car out on track. Eight laps completed. Trackside Recovery having a busy day today. Steve Buers and his crew. Thank you very much indeed to them and their helpers. So it's Dale Gent, number 83, your leader, from 89, Chris Brocker. This is going to be an uh, interesting battle between those two when we resume. Then it's the Tompkins, son ahead of father, Dean ahead of Paul. Paul, the former world banger racing champion. Well, that's at uh, Foxhall Stadium, Ipswich, several years ago. Mark Willis is fifth, the head of Matt Simpson. Then seventh is Michael Smith. Dan Fisher, David O'Regan, Alan Cooper, Eric Bolton. The lone surviving Hadfield, that's Jonathan in the pink truck. And Matthew Moore at the back. Incidentally, that pink truck is not the same one that was raced by uh, Reese Jones last season. Maybe uh, Jonathan Hadfield hoping that uh, the colour scheme will give him some form because Reese has won the title the last two years but not racing this year. One of our comments asking what size engine do these trucks use? They are uh, all two litre race tuned engines based on Ford or Vauxhall engine designs as uh, Ryan Hadfield is to towed in. Feel the power it says on his rear spoiler. And uh, many reminiscing uh, about uh, when these machines used to race on the oval at uh, Rockingham, the one and a half mile oval in Northamptonshire. There's a truck uh, you won't see racing today but I wouldn't mind a ride in the back of that. The monster truck. But that's better than any roller coaster. I did get to uh, ride in the back of a monster truck at Northampton Stock Car Stadium a few years ago, actually. The Red Dragon we've seen at Brands Hatch in the past. Certainly an experience. Now, the uh, truck of Ryan Hadfield has been towed off, so are we going to get back underway this time? The lights were still on on the safety car as it went out of shot there. 13 trucks still racing. Is the uh, pace car going to come down pit lane this time? No, it's not. So we're going to do another lap. Have to wait for the all clear from the clerk of the course. Revs beginning to rise. We're anticipating a restart this time around. So the hazard has been cleared from uh, Paddock Hill Bend. Or the exit up towards Hale would rise. Can Dale Gent hang on? He was runner up last season to Reese Jones. With Matt Simpson third in the points. Great names have won the uh, pickup truck championship over the years. Freddie Lee, the uh, son of uh, the legendary Barry Lee, he won it a few years ago. Scott Bourne, who's now back on the short ovals, the national hot rod man. Also, the late great Pete Stevens passed away sadly in 2020. So, are we going to get a restart this time? I didn't quite see if the uh, 
lights have gone out atop the safety car, but Dale Gents, uh, yes, is uh, trying to hold the field back there. The safety car is now coming down pit lane. It will be a restart over five laps. Here we go. They are line astern. It's a single file restart here at Brands Hatch, and we're underway. Nicely anticipated there by Dale Gents. He pulls out a gap. And uh, Chris Brockhurst, with his mirrors full of Dean Tompkins there, had to defend as they went towards Paddock. Up the hill they come, then can Brockhurst get back onto the tail of our race leader? He's trying to do so. He has done so. So good recovery there after the restarts. Mark Willis goes wide through Druids. Matt Simpson trying to get through there. Side by side for fifth as they come down towards Graham Hill Bend. Willis will have the inside in the 65. They almost bounce off each other, chasing Paul Tompkins. Behind them is Michael Smith, and Simpson gets round the outside and up into fifth position. Matt Simpson drawing on his uh, racecraft from his touring car days to get ahead of the vastly experienced uh, Mark Willis, who's sliding again there as they come into clearways. Michael Smith and Dan Fisher up behind him in the... Uh, 93 and the number five but it's the 83 of Dale Gent and the 89 of Brockhurst who have started to pull away already now Dan Fisher going for the inside on the 93 of Michael Smith the man from the northeast of England Fisher up the inside at Paddock Bend just about gets the place away Michael Smith goes wide over the curb this can allow David O'Regan up the inside in the number eight truck oh he's missed his breaking point there slides again he spent most of this race sideways to be fair that's how he drives Michael Smith holds him off this time. Alan Cooper, number 72, closing up as well. He's won titles in, would you believe, Reliant Robin Racing. Yes, that's a thing. Comes at Milton Hall and uh, Kings Lynn, the shale owns. Over the kerb goes Paul Tompkins, number 12. Still holding that fourth place. A man from uh, down in Hampshire. Over the line, the uh, leader not getting away this time. Chris Brockhurst nearly onto the grass on the inside of the pit straight there up against the wall as he tries to find a gap on the inside of the 83 of Dale Gents side by side the fourth up on the curb goes Paul Tompkins defending from Matt Simpson and Simpson's gone down the outside of it brilliant at uh, Paddock Bend but has Paul Tompkins got a problem because Mark Willis is going through yeah Tompkins is in trouble the number 12 truck slows he's got a problem that's a great shame so down to Graham Hill Bend, it's three cars, like three trucks line astern for the lead now and Paul and Chris Brockhurst is having a go Dean Tompkins up behind them. Brockhurst was the quickest man in qualifying with the partner reverse grid had to start from fourth. He's all over Dale Gent now. But look at the way Matt Simpson is going. Dean Tompkins has got the fastest lap of the race at the moment. 51.982 seconds. That's the fastest race lap we've seen so far this weekend. And he's ready to have a go at Brockhurst. So Brockhurst has got to attack and defend at the same time here. Two laps to go. Brockhurst going for broke up the inside. Look at this. That's brave. That's not going to work for Chris Brockhurst. He's got to be mindful that Tompkins is there as well. He's gone wide on the exit. Here comes Dean Tompkins. Side by side for second place. Brockhurst just about holds him off. There's a bit of rubbing there. Rubbing's racing, as they say in NASCAR. And now here comes Matt Simpson from the back. Could he take the win from the back of the grid? Can he get past these three? He's running a bit low on time. They're coming around to start their last lap of this first pickup truck racing championship. Race of the season here at Brands Hatch. Still your leader is Dale Gent in the number 83 Ford Ranger base truck. Mark Willis towing up now in fifth. Dan Fisher's up to sixth. He's running well. Coming round to start their final lap this time then. One to win for Dale Gent. Can Chris Brockhurst overhaul him? Is he going to go for the inside into Paddock? No, this time he goes wide on the, in the entry. Tries to cut back underneath Gent, but Gent's wise to him. A bit out of shape there for Dean Tompkins. Now, what's Brockhurst going to do? He's going to try and position himself to make the move at Graham Hill Bend. He'll try and keep himself on the left of the 83. He could get the overlap here. Gent pushing. He squeezes him towards the grass. He's still pushing as they go in there. Gent's going to lose it. Oh, goodness me. They somehow hold it together. Simpson's got it the inside of all three of them. How did he get through there? That was unbelievable. That Simpson, what an opportunist move as Gent and... Uh, his pursuers all went wide trying to get the inside line away. Simpson says, OK, then I'll go through up the inside of all of you. And from 13th on the grid, Matt Simpson is going to win it. What an incredible last lap here at Brands Hatch. Matt Simpson comes in over the line and wins the pickup season opener. Mark Willis comes over in second. Where's he come from? And Dean Tompkins is third. And Dale Gent and Chris Brockhurst come over in P5 and P8. Well, <laughs> what a last lap that was.
They were already rubbing as they came through Druids. Then uh, Brockhurst tried to force his way down the inside. Gent didn't give way. I thought Dale Gent was going to spin out. Dean Tompkins was caught up behind them as well. And Matt Simpson says, well, if you're going to squabble with each other, excuse me, I'm going through to take the win. <laughs> Not bad considering he didn't do a lap in qualifying. <laughs> An extraordinary finish. I'm going to have no voice left already. What a fantastic race from the pickups at their very best as always here at Brands Hatch. Matt Simpson, fourth to first in one move with half a lap to go to take the win. Mark Willis from fifth to second. Half a second in it at the flag. Dean Tompkins recovered to take third. Dan Fisher, an excellent fourth. I think that might be his best ever finish in the pickups. And Dale Gent, who'd led all the way, ends up fifth. Michael Smith, sixth. Then David O'Regan. Chris Brockhurst, after his efforts chasing Gent, ends up eighth. Then Cooper, Bolton, Moore, and uh, Jonathan Hadfield complete the finishes. Paul Tompkins pulled into the pits for the problem. And Ryan Hadfield ended up in the gravel. Right. I think I need a pause to catch my breath after that one what an incredible finish we were only saying with two laps left that Matt Simpson didn't have enough time left to uh, take the lead that certainly proved me wrong let's have a look at it again some uh, highlights of that race Dale Gents who uh, led initially from the start like he was going to lead all the way early incident saw Matthew Moore spin out after contact with Alan Cooper he uh, rejoined at the back Mark Willis and uh, Eric Bolton got a bit too close for comfort at one point, and that came so close, you saw there, to claiming Matt Simpson. Safety car came out after Ryan Hadfield went into the gravel, exiting Paddock Hill Bend. He nearly got the truck rejoined, but bogged down. The safety car came out for a few laps, and then we would see that incredible finish. And apparently the words to sum it up. We thought Matt Simpson wasn't even going to finish on the podium. As Dale Gent led from Chris Brockhurst and Dean Tompkins on the final lap. Brockhurst went to the outside on Gent, of course. Everybody else was scrapping behind, but then as Brockhurst tried to get down the inside, there wasn't room, there was contact between the two of them. Brockhurst kept pushing, and Simpson saw the gap on the inside of Tompkins, and that carried him past the other two as well. Let's hand down to Ian in pit lane for the celebration, and what a celebration it'll be after this one. Oh, well, we're a little bit speechless down here. Uh, Mark, you might be a little bit speechless, but we need you to talk. That was quite remarkable. Into second place, uh, talk us through that. Do you know what? We had a great day yesterday, testing. <laughs> Went out qualifying today, done a lap, fuel pressure problems, right? So you go back to the pits, and you? you try and sort it all out, and you hope that you've done them right. And, uh, you know, and then you think, mm, I'm at the back. It's sort of sport me weekend a little bit now for both heats. But, um, no, I, you couldn't want from a other people's misfortune was maybe my game, but you've still got to be, be there. there to take it, haven't you? I think so, yeah, look. I'm over the moon. I can see. I think you've got to go chat to Mr. Hyder as surely as well, so thank you very much. Uh, right, that, I mean, nuts, insane. Uh, you just showed your true racing craft there. Right place, right time, making the move stick and staying in it. Yeah, I, you know, we, after the issues yesterday and obviously not doing a lap in qualifying today, we're sort of on the back foot with this new tyre. Not half, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but now, obviously, I, I said to, to my, the team, I said, if it's working, we're going to put a, we're going to put a show on. We're going to we're going to give a race. So you've done that, and then some. How does it feel coming all the way from the back through to win? Yeah, I just it's shame there's not more trucks. If I'm honest, it's sort of to slow everyone up a bit more. But but now it's mega. You know, I can't fault I can't fault the truck. And just a big thanks to all the team for putting all the effort and time in. You're going to enjoy this one for a long time, aren't you? Yeah, we've got tomorrow to do it again now, haven't we? So <laughs> same again. Well done. Congratulations yeah, indeed. Uh, we've got uh, Dean as well. Dean Tompkins so finishing in third just fine. what a last lap that was have you ever seen anything like that absolutely incredible Look, 
ever the pro Alan Hyde doing a wonderful job a lot of racing don't forget we've got the catering Sigma's 135 coming up as well we've still got the second MG race we've got the mini challenge by Airtech to come later as well and that second British Truck Racing Championship all coming up this afternoon so it's still quite late in the day it's four o'clock in the afternoon but still an awful lot of action to come here uh, we're going to grab Dean very Dean sorry mate uh, this is what happens when you end up on the podium you've got to do all the media duties uh, what a what a fascinating last lap how was it from your perspective ah uh, it was good like I said you can see it was going to happen but it was just choosing where to go at the right time but we was in the wrong place it was all right there congratulations of course you've got to do all again tomorrow as well uh, go rest up chill out relax uh, right uh, time for the next race coming up very shortly so I'm going to hand back to Dave to tell you what's coming up well, coming up next, we switch from uh, pickups to Caterham Racing. The first of uh, a busy programme this weekend for the Sim Motorsport Caterham Graduates Championship. The Caterham 7's always fantastic around the Brands Hatch Indy circuit. First up, it will be the Sigma 135 Championship, the 135 brake horsepower Ford Sigma engine cars. We caught up with a few of the drivers earlier on today. Right, I'm down here with Chris Griffith from the Caterham Graduates uh, Sigma 135 Plus. Uh, Chris, a little bit of work going on in the car. Do we need to be worried? Uh, hopefully not, no. It's, uh, the throttle went just um, just about two-thirds of the way through Quali, um, but I managed to pull it out of the way. It's all fine. It looks like a fairly quick repair, so hopefully back out this afternoon. So how was qualifying? And are you happy uh, with where you are? Happy-ish, yeah. I just I just turned up this morning, so I didn't do the test day yesterday. Right. Uh, practice sessions, get my head in. It's still quite slow, but I did better on that. So about 19th, so better than I thought, but still lots to do. Why the catering graduates? Tell, tell me why you're racing here. Um, so I did the academy in 2020, had a really good time with that, did the main series for a few years and then didn't want to take it quite as seriously, so joined the grads and it really good feeling the paddock, you know, loads of mates, it's, it's as much social and racing and yeah, it's really stuck for the last few years. Do you do much prep work over the winter or do you just basically rock up at Brands and go? <laughs> um, tinkering with the car, although probably not as, quite as much as I could have done <laughs> by the looks of it. Um, no, a few track days, so we do, we typically do a bunch of um, lads just uh, the weekend before Christmas, uh, when I'm Donington and then I was here a few weeks ago so not not a crazy amount but just enough to keep your head in okay so you, so you have been here recently I'm gonna keep my yeah, eye yeah, on just, you just the ones yeah. just the ones <laughs> Chris best of luck to race no. I, I'm really sorry I took you away from your lunch no, as well didn't no I so, cheers thank lot. you See you later. Right, here we are with Alaric Barney, one of my drivers to watch, actually. A uh, bit of tinkering with the car. Everything's all right, though, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it is. It went, went well this morning and uh, we, uh, there's not much in it between the top 10, so I'm happy to be within the top 10. I suppose with these, it's uh, the racing's always so tight in the caterings and getting in the slipstream and the flow is just so important. It is. Um, and here is such a short lap that um, <laughs> Well, the results show that uh, there's, I think there's eight tenths out of yeah. the top 15 or something, so uh, something like that. So it tells you how close it is. Yeah. Is that why you just love racing catering? Because you just don't have time to, to relax or process, even even at Silverstone, even at the bigger circuits. The bigger circuits, are, you get a bit more of a rest, but uh, yeah, here, no rest at all. No rest. So yeah, you're sweaty all the way around. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I hope it ends quickly in a good result. <laughs> <laughs> so what is what is a good result? Podium or even even? For me, first? yeah, I'm I'm really got my eye on the championship this year, so yeah. um, I really want to uh, get some decent points under my belt for the first race and uh, see how we go. For we're off to Holland next month, so yeah. that'll be a fun one, and uh, we'll see how we go. Tom and Eric, best of luck for the race. Thanks for talking to us. Thank Let you crack on. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Nice to hear from uh, a couple of the drivers there ahead of our first uh, Caterham race of the weekend, the Sigma 135 category of the uh, Caterham Graduates Championship. We saw four, cl uh, three classes from them last year, but the Sigmax category has been uh, merged with the Sigma 150s to keep the uh, numbers in uh, a good light on the grid this year. Let's have a look at the grid then for the Sigma 135s. Tom McEwing, number 49, has set uh, pole position with a lap of 54 points at 2-1 at seconds, was very close indeed in qualifying. Alongside him, number 120, James Emson, one of the newcomers to the championship this year, and another of them on the second row is number 65, Craig Storey. He starts alongside 62, which is Kevin Turner. Third row, Tom Power, number 70. He had uh, three wins last year, but didn't contest the full season, so it wasn't a factor in the fight for the championship. He ended up fifth in the points. Alongside him, number 28, Daniel Neal, who's last year's Caterham Academy champion. 
Fourth row, 56, Paul Armitage, who had one win at the end of last year at Alton Park, alongside 135 of Paul Goldstein. Row five, the man we just heard from, Alaric Barney, number 88, and last year's championship runner-up, number 23, Richard Groom, down at 10th. It was Ben Wheatley who took the title last year, but he's not out for this season by the look of things. Cars already heading round on their green flag lap, so we'll take you through the rest of the grid fairly quickly. Row six is number 96, Thomas Gunter, and 77, Giles Derry, third in the championship for him last year. Peter Mott and James Hapgood on row seven. Row eight, Andrew Bergbaum and Liam Baslington. Row nine, Andrew Sagar, long-time caterham racer, alongside number seven, Mark Barrett. And on the tenth row, the man we just heard from, Chris Griffith, alongside Simon Arnold. The eleventh row is Simon Nicholas, alongside Paul Vokes. Row 12 is the Australian, Michael Munns, starts alongside Mark Soden. Row 13 is Alan Bateman and Andy Cooper. Row 14, David Poulter and Paul Steed. 15th row, Simon White and Simon Ockenden. And the final man on the grid is another somewhat veteran of this championship, number 89, Michael Seagal. Caterham Graduates Racing Club was set up uh, back in 1998 by a group of racers who had competed in the Caterham Scholarship in the 1990s, now known as the Caterham Academy. Cars permitted are Caterham Road Sport 270R and 310R chassis, powered by uh, Ford Sigma engines, the uh, Sigma 135s that we see here, as the name suggests, with uh, 135 brake horsepower 1600cc engines, 270R Road Sport and Caterham Academy chassis. This is their first race weekend of the year. Sponsored this year by Sim Motorsports, Riders of uh, motorsport simulators based in Gillingham in Kent. There's one here at Brands Hatch as well for people to try out this weekend. So it's Tom McEwing who's come through the Caterham ladder over the years from the uh, Caterham Academy who starts on pole position. He's a good sim racer himself as well in the green car there on pole position starting alongside the number 120 of James Emson. This will be a 20 minute race. The Caterham's always very very close wherever they race. Craig Storey we're told is a novice so Best of luck to him from the second row of the grid. Great effort by him in qualifying. Was quickest for uh, some time in the session this morning. And Kevin Turner, 62, starts alongside him. Just waiting for the last couple of cars to get into line. This scheduled to be a 31-car grid. Looks like they are all present and correct. I can't see any gaps. James Emson in the purple car to the outside of the front row. Revs are up and away they go. Tom McEwing gets away well. Not the best of getaways for Craig Storey from the uh, second row of the grid. I think that was his first ever standing start. So he's dropped back a little down the order. We'll wait to see who is leading as they go around the first corner. There's Chris Griffith, the uh, number 20 we saw earlier. One car running wide into the gravel, unfortunately. I think he's going to keep it going. And they get up towards Druids for the first time. We'll pick up the leaders in just a moment. It is Tom McEwing who has held his lead ahead of the 120 of James Emson. Running wide there is Kevin Turner, loses out for third place. Pick up the order as they come through to complete the opening lap. It's a solid mass of Caterhams all the way down the order. This is going to be very, very close indeed. McEwing leads the way at the moment. Looks like Daniel Neal has come through into third place, the light blue car. 56 there is uh, Paul Armitage. Had a win at the end of last season because the two title protagonists... Uh, elected to sit out the final round. Ben Wheatley and uh, Richard Groom. Watch for Richard coming through from 10th on the grid. Alaric Barney has made a good start up alongside Kevin Turner there, side by side for fourth position. But it is McEwing who leads it from Emson. Neil in third, then Turner, Barney, and uh, Tom Powers one to watch as well. The number 70 car, the black and green car in there, had three wins last year. Was the only man until the end of the season to break the dominance of Ben Wheatley and uh, Richard Groom. Alaric Barney on the inside of Kevin Turner will make the move down into Graham Hill Bend. There's Richard Groom, that's the red car with the white stripe, I think. There's uh, Craig Storey, bit of a slow start from him, chased by Giles Derry, the green car. He was third in the championship for Sigma 135 last season. So they sort themselves out around the opening couple of laps then. A 20 minute race is uh, quite a long way in a Caterham 7. Over the line they come. The bright green car of Tom McEwing holding his advantage as they cross the line. But it's a fastest lap of the race recorded that time through by Daniel Neal in third place. 55.584 seconds. Surge their way across the line. Trying to make a move on the inside there. Car number 69 of Paul Vokes. Sort themselves out up the hill. 
Armitage on the outside of Tom Power. The 95 trying to come through as well is Tom Gunter. Car running a bit wide there through Druids. We've got a spinner. That's why the 196 car, Peter Mott from Bath in Somerset, has had a spin. He rejoins towards the tail of the field. It's still McEwing from Emson. Dan Neal, the light blue car, is in third position. Tom Gunter under a bit of pressure through there. So under pressure, the number seven, that's uh, Mark Barrett. Move being made by the Team Gold Racing Cars, number 135, Paul Goldstein, living up to his name. With uh, the gold liveried car there, with the graduates of the Caterham Academy in uh, years gone by. So it's McEwing from Emson, then it's Neil. Top three covered by less than a second. Alaric Barney is in fourth position. We've lost somebody because um, yeah, there's been a tangle somewhere between Kevin Turner and Richard Groom out of our view there because uh, they've dropped right down the timing screen. So we've got a couple of cars potentially off somewhere. There go the leaders. Or is it perhaps uh, transponders not working? We'll check that as they come through. I think that's Richard Groom there in the red car. In behind... Um, Yes, Richard Groom, Tom Power, they are. Tom Power is behind him, which is Richard Groom still there. So it's uh, a few issues with transponders causing the confusion. Apologies there. McEwing will lead them over the line. Here comes Alaric Barney out of the slipstream of Kevin Turner, trying to go around the outside on the run into Paddock Bend. Is that going to work? Just about is. Good move by Alaric Barney up into fourth position. Yes, Groom is there in sixth place. Power is seventh. Got a few cars with uh, transponder issues. That's what uh, the confusion is with the time. We cleared that up. Richard Groom is still running. Last year's championship runner-up. Tom Powers lost a place to uh, the 95 of Tom Gunter, the black car. Then it's Paul Armitage in the silk-cut Jaguar look-alike. Seen cars uh, running in the Jaguar championship in those colours, but that's the first time I've seen a Caterham in silk-cut livery. Armitage has got Craig Storey behind him there, the 65, recovering after a bit of a slow start. So he's got the novice cross on the back of his car, so he's learning as he goes, probably uh, moving in from uh, the world of track days. Meanwhile, James Emson making a move on the outside at Paddock Bend. Well, Alaric Barney can do it, so can James Emson. The Williams Motorsport car doesn't quite manage it. Tom McEwing, very quick Caterham racer, holds his lead. It's his debut in the Sigma 135s. Third place still Dan Neal, then it's Barney. Up to fifth now is Richard Groom. He's got ahead of Kevin Turner. Tom Gunter is seventh, then Armitage, Tom Power and Craig Storey. That's your top ten as they run. Giles Derry just behind Craig Storey. He wants to be higher up the order, I'm sure, after uh, finishing third in the title race last season. First three breaking away very slightly. With Alaric Barney trying to hunt them down. But Giles Derry has got the fastest lap of the race down in 11th place. 54.3 seconds ahead of Paul Goldstein and uh, Alex Bergbaum, Andrew Bergbaum in the 26. Emson to the outside again. He's going to try this move again into Paddock Ben. Can he take the lead away this time? He's later on the brakes. He's going to do it. Excellent from James Emson. The number 120 takes the lead around the outside at Paddock Ben. That's a brave move in any car. McEwing tries to fight back, but it's the 120 who has uh, got the lead on his local circuit, the man from Folkestone. Now Dan Neal, the reigning Caterham Academy champion, is going to try and uh, make a move for second place. They slide their way through Graham Hill Bend. The top five have broken away. There's the number 70 of Tom Power, a winner last season. He wants to be up there with this group at the front as well. They've got to get past Tom Gunter and Kevin Turner first. Dan Neal has a quick look on the inside at Clearways. Room to get past Tom McEwing there. McEwing all the way from York. Five cars line astern over the line. 13 and a half minutes still to go. Emson from McEwing. And McEwing having a go back up the inside into Paddock Ben. Who's going to break the latest? McEwing's going to retake the lead, I think. Yes, he's done it. Tom McEwing back in front then. But all the time, Dan Neal is shadowing them. He's up on the outside there. Alaric Barney's there on the inside. Richard Groom as well. This is Caterham racing at its best here at Brands Hatch. Neil's gone a bit wide there coming out of Druids, but he'll be on the right line for Graham Hill Bend. He'll hold that third place. Sixth behind them is uh, Tom Gunter. Then it's Kevin Turner. Then we've got uh, Paul Armitage. Tom Power, Craig Storey. And behind them, Giles Derry. Who's 11. Fairly well ahead of the rest of the field now. 
Now, what's James Emson going to do this time? Can he make a move to retake the lead down into Paddock Bend? That's where all the action has been so far in this first race of the season for the Caterham Graduates Championship Sigma 135s, sponsored by Sim Motorsports. Dan Deal could get past both of them. Look at this. Up the inside. Yeah, thinks better of it, I think. I thought we were going to have three wide through Paddock. That rarely works. Emson could have a go here into Druids. He's having a look on the inside of Tom McEwing, who moves to cover. Just about got the lead held there. Yes, Tom McEwing hangs on to it. Barney's closing up as well. And then Richard Groom, regular winner last season, that red car with the white stripe, closing up on the leaders as well. Through certain. The gap coming down behind them with uh, Gunter towing the uh, pack up behind them. Two groups of five, pretty much, at the front of the field. The second group headed up by Thomas Gunter, the number 95, the all-black car. Seventh behind him is Kevin Turner, but never mind that, because James Emson's going to have another go here into Paddock. He's going to try his outside move again, and Alaric Barney's going to try and do the same thing to Dan Neal. Doesn't work, though. Still Tom McEwing leads. Squeal of tyres in the background. Maybe somebody's had a spin there. Here comes Emson again on the inside into Druids. He's going to get the move done this time. James Emson retakes the lead into Druids. Now McEwing up alongside. Neil's under pressure from Barney and Groom as well. This is fantastic stuff from the Caterhams. We're not even halfway through this race yet. Gunter and Turner. There's a gap behind them now. Has something happened to uh, Paul Armitage? No, I can't see the white and purple car in that next group. So maybe it was him who spun because next in the order there is Giles Derry, the uh, green and gold car. It's Tom Power, Craig Storey and uh, Paul Goldstein in the 135. So I think we may have lost Paul Armitage, unfortunately. Second uh, group, Giles Derry. Didn't take a win last year, but was uh, third in the points. Yeah, Armitage dropping down the timing screen. Is he in this trio coming across the line now? Yes, there he is. So he's had a moment somewhere. He's in among... Uh, group containing Bergbaum and uh, James Hapgood. Still the lead battle goes on and while we're looking at that Tom McEwing has retaken the lead. Dan Neal having a go up the inside now into Graham Hill. Then Dan Neal up into second place. He may be fairly new to Caterhams of course to compete in the Caterham Academy you have to be a novice with no previous racing experience so it's only his second year of motorsport this year. But he's up into second he's going after Tom McEwing a fellow Academy graduate. Alaric Barney in fourth and uh, look the uh, second group, well there's two of them now after that moment for Paul Armitage, is now making it seven at the front of the field because Tom Gunter and Kevin Turner have towed up onto the back of this lead quintet Dan Neal's going to go for the lead Alaric Barney's attacking for third place it's all happening between the lead group Barney nearly clipped the back of James Emson going into paddock there and he's uh, dropped back as a result there so now it's three together for the lead. He's dropped back a couple of lengths, Alaric Barney. He's having to defend from Richard Groom. That's why he's dropped away a length or two. Gunter and Turner next. Down the hill. Into Graham Hill Bend. Tom McEwing still leads. Fantastic stuff. There is uh, Tom Gunter. We had hoped to see Russell Gunter racing this weekend as well, but he's absent. They used to share a car, those two. Into the curb there briefly, Tom McEwing. Kevin Turner trying to make a move for six as Gunter goes a little bit wide into uh, the right at clearways. Gunter gets away again on the straight. Over the line they go. It looks like there's back markers ahead. Hopefully they won't uh, impede our leaders as uh, Richard Groom goes for the outside for fourth place. Yes, he's through. Ahead of Alaric Barney. Richard Groom's disappointed with his qualifying effort earlier on. Took a few wins last season. Man from Woking in Surrey, trying to fight his way up onto the tail of the leaders. Here's a scrap further back, the 57 of Simon White and the 23 of Richard, of um, 123, sorry, of Alan Bateman. They're about to be lapped. Blue flags will be shown by the marshals around the outside. Here comes uh, Dan Neal. Very wide there. That's uh, no, that's not Tom McEwing's car. The back parker's in that identical colours. Confuse me there for a moment. It's the 73 car of uh, Simon Ockenden, in fact, being lapped. Same colours as Tom McEwing. And McEwing's been able to pull away a little bit uh, as a result. Of that look at this for third over the line now. Three wide, and uh, who's going to come out with third? There's uh, a back marker in the middle there. That's the 57 car. 
Groom's come through in third. Emson's gone down to fourth, I think. Dan Neal's through in second. Emson may have taken a bit of a knock there because I think he's, one of his uh, rear mudguards has come loose. Well, they're all over each other. The back marker just got swallowed up there. That was the 57 car of Simon White. Yes, you can see the, uh, the rear wing there loose on James Emson's car, so he's taken uh, a little bit of contact in there, possibly. It's McEwing from Neal. Through into third, now he's Groom, then Emson. Barney is fifth, and he's under fire from Tom Gunter. Seventh place behind them is Kevin Turn. That's the group for the lead. Then a gap back to Giles Derry, who's eighth. Ninth is Paul Goldstein and Tom Power rounding out the top ten. All 31 cars at the moment are still running. Emson fights back. He won't have noticed that flapping bit of bodywork there. He won't bother him at all. Chase their way up towards Druids again. Emson dodges across. One car has pulled into the pits further back. Oh, it's Craig Storey. Problems for the 65. Started on the second row. Looks like he's out. First, the commentator there, unfortunately. I just said all 31 cars were still running. Sorry, Craig. 62, Kevin Turner. Chasing up onto the back of uh, Gunter again. Blue flag still being shown to the back markers by the marshals to warn them faster cars are closing in to lap them. So over six minutes of this race to go for the Caterham Graduates Racing Club Sigma 135, sponsored by Sim Motorsports. It's Tom McEwing who continues to lead six tenths of a second ahead of Dan Neal. And a gap of 1.8 seconds back to Richard Groom in third. James Emson having a go at Groom. Alaric Barney in behind them. He's always there or thereabouts, Alaric Barney. Surely overdue a win by now. Up the inside, Kevin Turner at Druids takes Tom Gunter. He's been trying that for a few laps. And he's up to sixth. It's Tom McEwing out front in the number 49. The green machine flying along. Dan Neal's got a bit of flapping bodywork as well. One of his front uh, wheel guards has come loose. There's the battle between uh, Goldstein and Giles Derry. I think Goldstein just about got the move done there through uh, Surtees. Kevin Turner trying to stay ahead of Tom Gunter. He's having a terrific fight for sixth place. Behind them, Paul Armitage rounding out the top ten at the moment. Bergbaum, Hatwood, Good and uh, Tom Power down to 13th. Inside there goes uh, Alaric Barney. Just under five minutes of the race to go then. Is Tom McEwing going to be able to stay clear at the line? He was three quarters of a second clear of uh, Dan Neal. There's a scrap further back in the order. Up the inside comes the number 10 car. That is James Hapgood on 26 of Andrew Bergbaum. These two just outside the top 10. One of the Bergbaum family is running in the Junior Saloon cars this weekend as well. So we'll see how they get on. That's uh, Alex Bergbaum, number 29. We'll see out tomorrow. Pretty slow there. I think that's Michael Stigal, the uh, white and red car being lapped. Still McEwing leads by just over half a second from Neil. Barney's up to third now, ahead of uh, Richard Groom, according to the timing screens. So there's been a change behind them. There's changes constantly on every... Well, I was going to say every lap. It's pretty much every corner in a battle like that in Caterham's. There you can see Dan Neal's uh, left front wheel cover is uh, flapping loose. As they lap one of the back... Oh, that's Craig Storey who's rejoined after his pit stop. So whether he got flagged in, I'm not sure, to uh, possibly fix a bit of damage. Here's the fight for third place. Richard Groom now has third, ahead of Emson, Barney, Gunter and Turner. It was a completely different order last time through. It was Barney who was third at the line. Leaders go through. So Richard Groom third, but only by a few hundredths of a second, a few thousandths of a second even, ahead of, Richard em of uh, James Emson. Alaric Barney back down to fifth. Two leaders separated by about uh, four or so Caterham lengths, and uh, Neil closing up just a little there through Graham Hill Bend. Maybe starting to put the pressure on. He wants a win on his Caterham Graduates Racing Club debut. 
Here comes the fight for third. It's the red car of Richard Groom just ahead there of Emson, then Barney, Gunter and Turner. Giles Derry, I think, uh, trying to catch them up, but he's quite a way behind this group has pulled away. There's a backmarker car in the background behind as they came into Surtees. Now here comes Emson, trying his favourite outside run through Paddock Bend again. Is it going to work on Richard Groom? It worked for him to take the lead of the race briefly earlier on. Doesn't work this time. Gunter up the inside on uh, Alaric Barney. He goes through. So the inside run through Paddock worked. What about Kevin Turner now in the 62? Attacking Alaric Barney. What a frantic fight. Turner a bit sideways coming out of uh, Druids, I think, there. Still only half a second in it between the two leaders. Is Dan Neal going to get within range to uh, maybe make an attack with less than two minutes of the race to go now? There's Goldstein, who's now up into eighth place ahead of Giles Derry there, still having a good scrap. Paul Armitage rounding out the top ten. The leader's much closer now. Dan Neal, he could have a look here going into Paddock Bend. No, you don't, says number 49, Tom McEwing. Only a couple of laps to go now. This 20-minute race. Here comes Neil again at Druids. Not close enough again. They're clear by nearly four and a half seconds of Richard Groom in third. Down to Graham Hill Bend. Both on their debuts with the uh, Caterham Graduates Racing Club this weekend, these two. Queuing the more experienced. Richard Groom still hanging on to third. Dan Neal closing right up. It's just between these two now. It'll be last lap this time. Up to start their final lap. They come then. What can Dan Neal do? He'll see the last lap signal. He'll know that's his signal to attack. Meantime, what's happening for third place? We'll quickly take a look back. Looks like Richard Groom is still just about hanging on. They come through towards Paddock Hill Bend. McEwing still leads. Neal had a look on the inside, but he didn't manage to get through. Druids were a little bit of a slide there from McEwing, but uh, Neil not close enough to take advantage. Just needs to keep a cool head here, the man from Yorkshire. He's heading for his first Sigma 135 victory. Took pole position fairly late in the session. Holding off a spirited challenge from uh, Dan Neil. Tom McEwing surely now has got this one in the bag. Round clearways and Clark Kerr for the final time. Past the backmarker traffic. The first win of the Caterham Graduates Racing Club. Sigma 135 season is going to be Tom McEwing in car number 49. There's the chequered flag. McEwing wins. It's Neil second. A gap of 0.65 of a second. And Richard Groom will complete the podium ahead of Gunter, Emson, Barney and Turner as quickly as that. Another breathless race there, very close between Goldstein and Derry across the line. Uh, Paul Goldstein just holding on to eighth place. Paul Armitage rounding out the top ten. Great story across the line after that pit visit. And uh, it was James Hapgood who held on for 11th ahead of uh, Andy Bergbell. The rest of the field crossed the line. Looks to me as though all 31 cars have made it to the chequered flag. Excellent news. Craig Story, of course, um, rejoined after a pit stop. But good, clean, fun racing there. We always say motorsport should be fun. Tom McEwing takes the first win of the season for the Caterham Graduates Racing Club by 0.657 of a second from Daniel Neal. Great debut with the club for those two. Richard Groom, last year's championship runner-up in third. A frantic fight with Tom Gunter, James Emson, Alaric Barney and Kevin Turner. They finished in that order. Then it got back to Paul Goldstein, who just beat Giles Derry home for eight. Giles Derry, though, got the fastest lap of the race. Paul Armitage rounding out the top ten. Then it was Hapgood, Bergbaum, Arnold and Tom Power. He'll be a bit disappointed, I think, with only 14th place considering he was a race winner last year. So that concludes our first of four Caterham races this weekend. Another three coming tomorrow. We'll have a look back at some highlights of that uh, Caterham Graduate Sigma 
135 race. It was Paul Goldstein, the man who ploughed through the gravel at Paddock on the first lap. He made a fine recovery, has to be said. Tom Power got uh, squeezed onto the grass on the inside at Druids. We saw some brave moves at Paddock. James Emson trying to get around the outside. On a couple of occasions, he was successful. So Alaric Barney decided to try it as well on Kevin Turner. Richard Groom was running as low as sixth in the early stages. Started tenth on the grid, but came through to take that podium. It's good battling further back as well. The 31 there, Paul Steed, with Michael Munns, the Australian, in 54. And then it was absolutely frantic for third place over the line. Richard Groom, with much the move of the race, charging up the outside as they went either side of one of the back markers. And he was able to come through into third place as a result. So that was the real stellar move of the race from Richard Groom. Well, we can hand down to Ian Waterhouse in just a moment, who is down in Park Ferme to hear from some of the drivers. Well, I don't know about you, but I absolutely love watching these caterings. And, and Tom, you had a cracking battle, first of all, with James, yeah. and then you had Dan to deal with, but you, you managed to deal with them. Yeah, they, they did not make it easy. Uh, that was a really tough race. Um, I was obviously in the lead for most of it, but the guys behind me just didn't let me, yeah, didn't let me off for a moment. Every lap was, yeah, constantly in my wing mirrors, constantly trying to keep them behind. And fortunately I did, but they, they drove great and yeah. But that's catering racing, isn't it? And in, in the end, actually, you and Dan ended up opening a bit of a gap from Richard, but you can't take your, you can't take your foot off the gas at any point, can you? No, and I, I don't know how much the uh, the bat markers got involved with, with maybe helping uh, create a bit of a gap, but uh, it was, yeah, a relief to, to only see one hounding uh, catering behind me. But yeah, <laughs> that was enough. That was enough. Tom P1, congratulations. Well done. Let's go have a chat with Dan, shall we? Uh, from sixth into second place, Dan. And, uh, you know, maybe a few more laps, you never know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we were certainly getting close towards the end I started to you know kind of pull back a bit of time but you know he's well done you know he kind of deserved that defending me really hard into into turn one uh, maybe a few things a few more things to try next time um, well, that's the good thing one. though isn't it there is a next time there's tomorrow right there, there's tomorrow so yeah I think I'll definitely sleep well tonight um, <laughs> after, after a decent result and um, yeah we'll give it another go tomorrow Dan congratulations well done let's go chat to Richard shall we fall all the way from 10th up into third place Richard uh, uh, at the end the front two ended up getting away a little bit did back Marcus play a part uh, yeah, we had a few few people to get past uh, that, that, that were an issue. These two were were a class above today. You know, uh, I, I had a, a, a lot of fighting. Uh, James Emson and Alaric Barney were were, were 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 right in it for third as well. So we had we had a good old ding dong, a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, from tenth, I'll take that. Starting fifth tomorrow, so maybe we can trouble these two boys tomorrow. Congratulations, Richard. And we've been told to wrap it up because you guys need to get back out to, to the paddock because don't forget we've got the trucks coming up next, so it's going to close in the infield. Thank you very much uh, Dave over to you the trucks are back <laughs> yes the uh, big rigs back out next for race two of their this weekend and uh, before we get this second race underway where the grid will be set by the second fastest times from qualifying this morning let's hear from a few of the drivers Right then, I might or might not have lied in the previous video, but here we are now anyway uh, with a little bit of post slash pre-race. Um, the season has well and truly begun. We're of course joined here with two Division 1 drivers, Neil Yates of NYR Neil Yates Recoveries. You'll see these beautiful livery trucks and of course returning uh, amazing driver Steve Powell. Now Steve, we'll start with you of course, uh, Age Before Beauty. Uh, you've been around this track a few times yourself now, haven't you? <laughs> Yeah, a few times, yeah, I could say that, yeah. Experience before beauty, shall we call it like that instead? I <laughs> don't want to make you, it's still brown hair, it's fine. Digging a hole now. I am, yeah, really, so I'd use my shovel to dig it. Yeah. Anyway, um, interesting start. Um, obviously, we're still shaking out some cobwebs, and uh, but finding our feet. I mean, you know, no major incident, so how, how do you feel about that start? No, it's a fair enough race. We are, we're a bit off the base, which we're quite disappointed about, to be fair. Qualified fifth. When I heard it on the radio, I was a bit gated to see how close we was to third, so... But yeah, just a bit off the base with a few of them in front. So got a few issues, I've totally repiped the brake system and it's a new build lorry. So just building the confidence up with the new brakes. Uh, I mean, it will 100% get better. It's just yeah. quite frustrating. Um, but yeah, it's early in the year. I'm very proud of Neil doing his fastest lap on the last lap, which is brilliant because we've been helping Neil a lot and he's testing a few weeks ago and he smashed it. And now he's getting, every time he goes out, it's quicker and quicker, which is your old idea. So 
I mean, pace-wise, we're literally half a second off uh, Bowler and Michael, a second off of Jenkins, and a second and a bit off of Ryan. So we probably close the gap a little bit on Ryan, but unfortunately, there's a few in the middle. So <laughs> it's so close, and it makes such a difference, you know. So we we'll see how the reverse grids play out, but I don't really want to look at that this season like reverse grids. We're talking about qualifying and finishing. So. Yeah, well, yeah, this is it. You've got to, you know, set your shop up earlier on in the weekend and, and make it stick. And, and Neil, I hear uh, rumblings uh, in, in the background. You've been out practicing and oh, no, uh, doing very well. Oh, go on. No, no, we didn't. Oh, you didn't? No. no you no, weren't, no. didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> it was all a lie. It was all a lie. It was like, yeah. Don't, don't know. This is him without official. practice. It was all official. It was all official. Yeah. So, uh, very nice new truck. Obviously, we'd say it's in one piece still. That's Brilliant good. Start. We aim to uh, keep it that way. And have you have you done much work over the winter season with it and, no, and, and worked on anything? Yeah, pretty much. It's been stripped down to the chassis as well, engine and box out. Check everything over. Repaint, re-sticker, re-livery. So, uh, all in all, it's pretty much quite cosmetic with a few little fundamental changes to update with the this year's requirements. And I heard uh, we, we owe uh, a bit of a nod to the uh, the decal people as the paint was still drying quite quite close to the weekend wasn't it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what and they just I mean let me just draw attention to the fact you know it they do look absolutely phenomenal don't they? I mean we've, we've done it together we switched the names we've got a few new sponsors coming on board this year so it's really exciting. Neil's brought them to the table so yeah, and we will go out and we do well. We we'll run as a team. The boys are brilliant. It's hard to run two trucks, but I've just I've just realised the three 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 motorsport is oh, that is that intended enough. because of the the thirty three and the three? Absolutely. No. No, as a, as a, you know what? You can just go away. You can troublemaker. No, there is a method to that, and, <laughs> and there's even more to it than yeah, that. I'll so, let Steve take it. So my daughter Lex is going to start racing the Junior Saxos this year, uh, being Pembury her first event with us. So she's obviously going to go number treble three. So it's treble three motorsport, which includes all sorts of motorsport, and we're going to build a portfolio as uh, racing and carry on. Yes, growing a brand. I like that. Absolutely, it just uh, stands out, doesn't it? It certainly does. The future is bright. The future. Is 333 Motorsport. Absolutely. Right, thank you very much, gentlemen. Fantastic start to the weekend. We hope it's to, uh, a of course, never a chore. We hope to be seeing you again soon on the podium. And speaking of which, that means I've got to go and do some other work now, which you might have already seen or not seen yet. But who knows? That's the magic of television, isn't it? Back to somebody somewhere, maybe in a studio. Yes, uh, thanks, Boynty. Back at trackside, then ready for our next race here at Brandsatch. Race number two of the weekend for the trucks. As we've said, the uh, grid for this one set by the second fastest time for each truck in qualifying. So it's virtually the same grid as race one with Ryan Smith in uh, pole position. Again, the only driver to lap under one minute in qualifying. David Jenkins will again start alongside John Bowler and Michael Oliver on road two. Uh, the two uh, drivers on road three have swapped around. Stuart Oliver starts fifth this time, and Stephen Powell alongside a bit of breaking news there for steve his daughter starting racing so good luck to lexi on her, her debut at pembrey in the uh, junior saloon cars row four tom o'rourke and uh, the first of the division two trucks paul rivet and john powell and neil yates on row five simon cole and david smith will complete the grid well things got a bit fraught in division two in uh, race one a bit of argy bargy leaving Paul Rivette to start his title defence with the win while Ryan Smith was never headed out in front. Three more races to come and uh, of course tomorrow we've got the reverse grids coming into play as well. The uh, grid for race three will be set by the results of race one that we had earlier on today but with the top eight on the grid reversed. The top eight from the result reversed on the grid I should say. So it will be Paul Rivette on pole because he finished eighth. So we'll have a Division 2 truck on pole for the first race tomorrow. Pace truck bringing them up to the grid then. Looks like it's the GT Tyres uh, MAN this time that will lead them round. We've got a couple of pace trucks here this weekend. As you say, we haven't got um, Mick Gould commercials Peterbills out there because I think that's a bit, a bit too big to fit round Brad's hatch on a pace lap. Superb looking thing there. So, Dame Lafrake line up and MAN on the front row. MAN, the numerically dominant make in the uh, championship. One Iveco, that of Simon Cole. It was the Reed brothers who raced their Ivicos over the last few years, but uh, 
they're racing on the continent this year. Got one Volvo, that of Stuart Oliver, the DAF of uh, John Powell, and that new international Navistar of Tom O'Rourke. Very similar looking to the truck of Ryan Smith. The Bugira freight liner, as they're known on the continent. I think it was Ollie Janes, number 22, the last driver to race one of those in the UK. I remember how, that having a big crash, unfortunately, at Pembrey a few years ago. David Smith's last meeting uh, all those years ago was in a Finnish built Sisu. I'm trying to remember who the last driver to race a Sisu in the British Championship was. It was um, James Aitkenhead, possibly. I saw that out at Thruxter a few years back. Truck racing, of course, started back in uh, November 1984 with an event at Donington Park, and it attracted, I think, Donington Park's biggest ever crowd at the time to see the new phenomenon. number of celebrity drivers took part. Uh, Martin Brundle was out there, the Grimer brothers of Hot Rod Racing fame. Barry Sheen went on to race trucks fairly regularly, along with his great friend and rival from the world of motorcycle racing, Steve Parrish, who went on to become a European truck racing champion once his bike career was over. It was the Italian Giulio Ghislotti who uh, won the first ever race in uh, a road-going truck that he'd driven over from Italy. How times change, these purpose-built racing machines. Sport has gone from strength to strength ever since this year, the 40th anniversary of truck racing in the UK. Twelve trucks get underway. I'm sure we'll see grid numbers increase as the season goes on. Thanks for all your comments on the stream. There's not been uh, much time to read them today. Fred Neal says, well done, Dan Neal. Second in our catering race. Time for our second big rig race of the weekend then. Can anyone stop flying Ryan Smith? He continues uh, the first day of his quest for a ninth consecutive championship. The Olivers were in good form earlier on. Watch for Stephen Powell as well with his new MANTGA number three. In the colours of Neil Yates' recovery. Neil, his protégé, a little bit further back on the grid. It's like we're missing John Powell, unfortunately, this time. The number six with some damage from earlier on. So just two Division Two trucks out there. Hopefully he'll be back out tomorrow in the DAF. So 11 trucks on the grid for this 15-minute race. Man pace truck is in pit lane. Ryan Smith and David Jenkins bring the field up towards the lights. When the red lights go out, the power will be unleashed. Race two for the British Truck Racing Championship at Brands Hatch will be underway. Revs start to rise. And off they go. Oh, and already, look at this pushing and shoving on the way down. They haven't even crossed the start line. And uh, David Jenkins trying to lean on Ryan Smith. We said these two are big rivals. Into that first corner they go at Paddock Ben. Ryan Smith's got the inside. Oh, spin for Tom O'Rourke. Is he going to go into the gravel? Just drops off the inside. Neil Yates takes on the gravel in avoidance. O'Rourke is stuck there. So Ryan Smith has the lead. John Bowler is up into third. Then it's the Olivers. Bowler's gone wide on the exit of uh, Druids. Trying to see if those trucks can recover at the uh, back of the field there. Because I think Tom O'Rourke may still be stuck there. We'll wait and see it when uh, they come round and complete the first lap. Paul Rivette leads Division 2 ahead of Simon Cole in the 41. Yes, in the background there you can see Tom O'Rourke stuck facing the wrong way. It's not been a happy day so far for the uh, Scotsman after his long journey down to Kent. Now, will the race continue? Will we see a full course yellow come out? Because they have the option to do that this year, use the uh, full course yellow conditions. But so uh, we're still under green by the look of it at the moment. Over the line goes Ryan Smith, completing his first lap ahead of Jenkins, Bowler, 
the Olivers, Stephen Powell, then it's Paul Rivets. The race is continuing with uh, Tom O'Rourke stuck there. Now is Neil Yates still going? I haven't seen him come through. Whether he's got going again at the back, I'm not sure. And yes, full course yellow is now out. We see VSC, virtual safety car. It should be virtual safety truck, shouldn't it? So we are under full course yellow. The uh, trucks will be slowed down into single file. Neil Yates, I can tell you, is still going after his trip through the gravel, further back behind David Smith. There he is at the back of the uh, line-up at the moment, so the trucks will slow down. Now, let's see what's going to happen here. Will they bring in a vehicle to try and recover Tom O'Rourke while the full-course yellow is out? This is, of course, to save the uh, situation we saw quite often last year where a race was red-flagged early on and everything had to be put back on the grid and restarted when everything was clear. It keeps the trucks moving, keeps the race going. A new feature for this year, Neil Yates being able to catch up as a result of that after his off. So under the virtual safety truck here at um, Rantach. Well, Jenkins and Ryan Smith were already leaning on each other going into the first corner. It was further back, but... Uh, Tom O'Rourke, he clipped the back of Stuart Oliver and round he went. Neil Yates took to the gravel in avoidance. He was able to keep going, but O'Rourke stuck there just on the edge of the circuit, exactly where Simon Kendrick's MG went off earlier on. And he's got going again, that's good. So this uh, should bring about the end of the full course yellow and we should be able to get back underway and racing. 12 minutes still on the clock. Now... Will we go back to green immediately, or will it be when they get back round to the start-finish line? We'll wait and see. They're coming up to Druids. We've never seen this before in UK truck racing. I know when um, clubs use Code 60 rules under the purple flags, the uh, Code 60 can be lifted at any point on the circuit and the race gets back underway again, but we've not seen this in truck racing before. I imagine it will be when they get back round to the start-finish line. They're still uh, under yellow at the moment. Ryan Smith effectively becomes the pace truck. Slows the field down. Ryan Smith's certainly not used to driving this slowly, it has to be said. He's keeping it steady at the moment. We see a green as they come off uh, Clark Curve onto the Sir Jack Brabham straight. Just under 11 minutes of racing to go. David Jenkins on the rear bumper of Ryan Smith's truck, hoping to surprise him and make a move into paddock if we go green this time. Keeping it steady at the moment. We go green once again. Here we go. And up towards Paddock they come then. And the race gets back underway into Paddock Hill Bend. Ryan Smith has held his lead from David Jenkins. John Bowler is in third place. Bowler with a decent restart. So is Michael Oliver having a look up the outside there. He won't get through at Druids. He might get the line away for Graham Hill Bend. Here they come. Down the hill, I think Michael Oliver's going to go through. Yes, on the inside for third. Side by side with Bowler. Absolutely together into the left-hander. Bowler's got... Uh, Oliver's got the inside line, though. John Bowler over the kerbs. Who's going to come out there? Still side by side in the rundown. Cooper straight into Surtees. Michael Oliver finally gets the move done up into third place. It's Ryan Smith from David Jenkins. Then the Olivers sandwiching John Bowler in that fourth place. Just one win for John last season at uh, Thruxton. Stephen Powell up there in sixth position so the first ever full course yellow working very well there allowing Tom O'Rourke to uh, rejoin he has a lap down on the rest of the field of course thunder their way into Paddock Hill Bend once again the battle starting to heat up for third Stuart Oliver after a few problems in qualifying down on the third row he wants to be up there with the two leaders Paul Rivette leads division two in seventh place Neil Yates uh, a lap down as well, I think. No, he's not. He is on the lead lap, sorry. 
Stephen Powell in P6, Rivette in P7, and David Smith up into 8th position. He's ahead of Simon Cole. Yates is 10th, O'Rourke up down in 11th. Third place battle comes through Surtees into McLaren and up to the right at Clearways. A bit of damage there on the left side of Paul Rivette, maybe a bit of rubbing off the start line in the Napa MAN. Flicks it sideways there into Clark Curves, brings them onto the Brabham Straits. Across the stripe they go once again. Ryan Smith leads by 0.8 of a second. Look at the representative lap times next time around. Still getting back up to speed after that uh, caution period. David Smith ahead of O'Rourke. As we mentioned, O'Rourke is a lap down. At least able to uh, learn the truck this weekend, his new machine. Might have had a big smash at Thruxton a few years ago at the chicane, along with John Newell, who's now contesting the European Championship. O'Rourke goes through. That won't be for position, though, because he is a lap down. Past David Smith. Very smart-looking MAN, the ex-Ryan Smith machine. Tom O'Rourke does look pretty quick here in that uh, international Navistar, the uh, bonneted truck. Simon Cole still going, second in Division 2. Hopefully we'll see, as we say, John Powell's daft back out tomorrow, the black machine. John Bowler is not finished yet. He's shadowing Michael Oliver for third. So look at the lap times as they cross the line. Yes, uh, John Bowler was slightly quicker that time through, only by about three tenths of a second. Ryan Smith leads, fastest lap of the race, 58.92 seconds. Just over one and a half seconds in it. John Bowler has a quick look there into the uh, hairpin at Druids. Stuart Oliver giving chase. Just under seven minutes left, so we're just past halfway in this second of our truck races this weekend. A bit of a slide there for John Bowler, the man from up in Stockport. Certainly a shame we don't have uh, some of our Division 2 runners out from last season. Adam Bint choosing to race on the continent in his Volvo White Aerodyne. And the uh, veteran campaigner Jim Bennett's Gentleman Jim, not out this weekend with his venerable Seddon Atkinson. Hopefully we'll see him reappear as the season goes on. Great character is Gentleman Jim. There's Tom O'Rourke in the MV Commercials International. David Smith running well. Easing his way back into truck racing after that long absence. And Simon Cole, always a fan favourite, used to run the Mercedes. The Mercedes Beast, as it used to be known. It was in partnership with Team Hard of Touring Car fame. This is Vico, known as the Pink Panther. Simon Cole comes from Dartford, just east of London. Seven laps completed, the lead up to over two seconds now. Ryan Smith's pulling away once again, but not pulling away is Michael Oliver. John Bowler on his tail. They took a win apiece last season. It was, of course, Ryan Smith and uh, Stuart Oliver who divided up the majority of the wins between them. David Jenkins had a couple of wins as well. Ryan Smith, inch perfect out front in the north side truck and van. Daimler Freightliner. Five minutes remain. Paul Rivette over the curbs there, coming out of Paddock Bend. Big saloon car start. Looking to dominate Division 2 this season. Ryan Smith began his career in uh, Division 2. I think he raced uh, a Sisu at one point in the early part of his career as well. The Finnish built truck, made famous in the European Championship by Jocke Kallio and Reimer Soderman in the early days of truck racing. Kallio, an ex-rallycross driver, which is probably good training for truck racing. John Bowler up onto the tail again. He's going to try again to attack Michael Oliver. But number 12, MAN, cannot shake off the 14. He's not going to go around the outside at Paddock, sure. We'll do that in a car, never mind a truck, and Oliver runs him wide. I don't think he realised John Bowler was there on the outside that time. It's the main focus at the moment, this three-way battle. Here comes the ten-time champion, Stuart Oliver up the outside. Very close as they come through Druids. Down to Graham Hillbent. 
Lean gap is up to uh, over three seconds now. Another fastest lap for Ryan Smith, 58.72 seconds. Sounds more like the winning time in a speedway here, not a truck race. Still in sixth place is Stephen Powell, a slightly lonely race for him. But Paul Rivette's only a couple of seconds behind him. And now John Bowler's having to begin to defend because Stuart Oliver's turning up the pressure. The lap times were virtually identical last time through. Let's see what they are this time over the line. Yes, Oliver was the quicker by three tenths of a second, so he's in attacking mode. Here's David Jenkins, the man from Stafford, from the Digraph Transport MAN. A little bit of a change in livery this year with new sponsors coming on board. And that steam coming off the front wheels there, that's from the water-cooled brakes on these trucks. See it on Michael Oliver as well. Average speed again, just under 75 miles an hour around Brands Hatch. All these trucks with their speed limited to 100 miles an hour. They used to be fitted with uh, a governor. Now uh, probably more done through uh, electronic software. Governors used to be fitted by the famous Lucas Company in Birmingham. Big sponsors of truck racing in its uh, early days. We used to have the Lucas Truck Super Prix that took place at uh, venues such as Donington, even at Silverstone. If you look on YouTube, there's uh, quite a bit of footage of trucks from the late 80s around the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit featuring the likes of uh, the legendary Kurt Goranson, the late Slim Borgard, Richard Walker, and many more great names besides. Steve Parrish, you already mentioned, the former motorcycle star. way through Graham Hill Bend once again. Michael Oliver's pulled away just a little bit. Stewart runs a bit wide behind these two in the Volvo. Ryan Smith still leads, but his last lap was a little slower. One minute, 0.364. David Jenkins stabilised the gap a little. These three are about seven seconds behind Jenkins now. Stephen Powell still six, then Rivette. David Smith, Simon Cole, Neil Yates. Tom O'Rourke still a lap behind. Ryan Smith with just over a minute to go now. He'll be coming round to start his final lap this time. It's going to be two out of two for the champion. He won 16 races last year. Can he beat that record this year? He is determined to break all records in British truck racing. David Jenkins keeping him in sight. You know, the gap came down again last time through. It's down to 2.6 seconds now. I don't think Jenkins is quite going to catch him. A little bit of smoke or steam coming off Ryan's truck there. That, that's not coming from the wheels. Is, is he dropping fluid? Let's see what the time the gap is this time through. Now, the gap's down to 2.2 seconds now, so whether Ryan Smith has got a minor problem, I'm not sure. But we're on the last lap now. He's just going to survive this final lap. There's definitely some steam or smoke coming from the, yeah, the right-hand side there, just behind the cab. So whether there is an issue for the number one, Jenkins is definitely reeling him in, but uh, I think he's going to run out of time to catch him. Yes, there you can see it, just behind the uh, front wheel. Whether it is just steam coming off the brakes or whether there is something further amiss. There's a bit of steam coming off Jenkins' truck as well. He's definitely getting the gap down, but I think Smith's going to hang on. Flying Ryan will take his second. When Jenkins over the kerb there at uh, Surtees. Flying Ryan has definitely taken it uh, fairly easy over these last few laps. He's going to hang on for win number two of the day, though. Two out of two for Flying Ryan Smith. Across the line. Well, the clock has counted down to zero, but uh, the timing screen still says green. So are we racing on? I thought that was going to be the last lap. But uh, no chequered flag show. We saw that in race one as well. Is there an issue with the timing, maybe? Yes. My timing screen still saying green. Ryan Smith races on, so are we doing one more lap here? 
Jenkins has got the gap down to just under two seconds as they cross the line. Is it going to be checkered flag at this time? Still ahead by a few lengths of David Jenkins. Still no chequered flag, 15 laps completed. The timing screen went to zero two laps ago. What's going on? Oh, we're still racing on. Meanwhile, Michael Oliver still ahead of John Bowler. Stuart Oliver still there in P5. But um, by my reckoning, the chequered flag should have come out two laps ago when the clock went uh, down to zero. Still Ryan Smith staying ahead of uh, David Jenkins. What's going to happen as they cross the line this time then? Now the chequered flag appears on the timing screen, so um, by my reckoning we did two extra laps there, but uh, we'll see what the timekeepers say. Ryan Smith takes the win ahead of David Jenkins by 1.66 seconds. Third goes to Michael Oliver, and John Bowler and Stuart Oliver fourth and fifth. Stephen Powell sixth, Paul Rivet will come over in seventh and will win Division 2 for the second time. And then it's going to be David Smith in P8. Second in Division 2 will be Simon Cole in ninth. Neil Yates, 10th after a trip through the gravel. And uh, Tom O'Rourke has already crossed the line a lap in arrears. So a slightly confusing in there. Apologies uh, for that uh, bit of confusion. Race running on a bit longer than it should have done. Or did they add time on at the end because of the full course yellow? I wonder if laps under yellow maybe don't count. I'll have to uh, double check that with the officials. Did they add time on because of the yellow? That's what we see in British touring cars, of course. They add laps on if there's a safety car. So maybe that's what caught us out there. That is the case, I apologise. But uh, surely if... Um, in a timed race, if there's time going to be added on at the end, the clock should stop during the yellow to avoid uh, any confusion. Well, here's the uh, provisional result then. Ryan Smith, the winner, ahead of David Jenkins. Michael Oliver completing the top three. Same podium as race one. John Bowler holding off Stuart Oliver this time for fourth place. Stephen Powell in P6. Paul Rivette in seventh wins Division 2. Ahead of David Smith in P8. Simon Cole, second of the Division 2 runners. Then Neil Yates and Tom O'Rourke after that incident on the first corner the finishers John Powell was a non-starter well let's hand down to Pointy then in the pit lane in Park Fermi testing I'm live I'm ready rock and roll come on now oh we're live we're live fantastic usually I get a countdown but here we are here you are and here is Mr. Ryan Smith, second race of the season, second win of the weekend. Where is it? Are they getting out of the time? We got Alan. Alan's already here. Are you sure we're all right, Alan? Alan's done one. Oh no! What are, you, what are you getting out? Okay, Ryan Smith's not getting out. Dave Jenkins is already out. He's here. Um, how, da Dave? Fantastic race again. Clean start at the front, obviously. You were probably nowhere near the back to be seen, were you, when we had a little bit of a spin? No, saw a bit of it in the mirror, um, and the virtual safety car worked, didn't it? It was good. Absolutely phenomenal. Good entertainment. Um, Ryan, well, I think he was running out of brakes at the end, um, and that was where he's, you know, he's, he got his water on, trying to get his brake temperature under control. But even up until that point, we've made a big step forward from this morning, so we're coming. 
Yeah, you are absolutely fantastic. And yeah, again, on the point of the virtual safety car, we obviously spoke about that in driver's briefing yesterday. A lot of drivers had their concerns. Laps were actually added on to the end of the race just then. I, for one, was sceptical of the virtual safety car because I still maintain, I think if there's a truck up to its axles in the gravel, yeah. they're going to struggle to get it out. In that circumstance there, it was brilliant. It made for entertainment for the crowd. It cleared it up. It kept the race going. It gave us all something new to think about. Indeed, absolutely fantastic. And of course, less stress for the guys on the circuit having to clean things up as well so Dave thank you very much he's gone Ryan is uh, contemplating by the looks of it so that's all we've got time for down here in the pit lane the marshals are shifting the trucks back on let's just go for a little b-roll and then rolling out shall we <laughs> their way back into the pits. We'll have a look at some highlights of that race. There was a bit of argy-bargy right off the line between David Jenkins and uh, Ryan Smith. But it was behind. The problem started as a mistake from the 86. Tom O'Rourke sent him spinning. Everybody avoided him. Neil Yates threw the gravel in avoidance. And the first ever virtual safety truck came out to uh, allow Tom O'Rourke to ex extricate his truck from the gravel trap main highlight of the race there after was uh, a good scrap between Michael Oliver and John Bowler for third place and Stuart Oliver giving chase there was a bit of contact between the two of them at one point into Druids but uh, they managed to survive it and with time added on at the end of the race it was Ryan Smith who was able to race to victory over David Jenkins. Well, my apologies there for that uh, little bit of uh, confusion over the uh, end of the race there. But, um, I've checked on the regulations and it does um, allow time to be added on up to three minutes if there is a uh, full course yellow. That slipped my attention when I looked at the regs ahead of this event so my apologies for the mix up there. Two races to go here today. We've got the uh, MG Owners Club Championship for their second race and the Mini Challenge Club Sport with Airtech Motorsport to round out the day. I must say hello to uh, a very big uh, supporter of truck racing watching at home today. That's a uh, young Freddie Stutchbury. He's watching at home along with his mum Nicole and little sister Evie. And uh, also the Crooks family. Hello to them as well. Well known uh, in the world of Rallycross, of course. That's uh, Todd Jordine and Helen all the best to all of you thank you very much indeed for uh, tuning in today and thanks to all of you for your comments as well so two races to go then and let's hope for a little bit less chaos from the MG Owners Club Championship this time Get you the grid in just a moment. The result was confirmed earlier on as a win for Andy Priest in his ZR ahead of Mark Baker. He won the MGF class ahead of Martin Wills. Two MGFs on the podium. We don't see that so all that often. Class A was won by Lewis Saunders at the wheel of Jim Bainham's car. We'll have a look at the grid then for race number two in a second. Getting a notification of an amendment to that result. Yes, Riley Price got a 30-second penalty in race one for overtaking under a yellow flag. That dropped him to the back of the field. So the grid for race two, it's a pole position for Andy Priest because this uh, grid set by the second fastest time for each driver in the qualifying session. Priest alongside Riley Price on the front of the grid. Priest and Price. Second row, Steve McDermott looking for his first win of the season alongside Mark Grant. Good effort from him. And the third row, Andy Heitman. And the first of the MGFs, which this time is Martin Wills. Fourth row is Mark Baker in his MGF. Second earlier on, alongside Phil Walker's ZR. And then 
Josh Addison and uh, Jimmy Work in their ZRs round out to the top ten. Row six of the grid will be uh, Jake McDermott and Luke Boniface, the newcomer, alongside uh, Simon Kendrick, ended up in the gravel in race one. And hopefully Scott Bugner will be there this time. Had a few problems in qualifying, failed to start the first race. Row eight will be Adrian Olsen and hopefully Stuart Plotnick will be there, but uh, hopefully he's repaired that damage from race one. Row nine, Darren Leonard in the ZS Saloon and Lewis Saunders, the first of the Class A cars. Row ten, uh, Will Sharp in the number one. Chris Millard should have been alongside him. He won't be starting with the uh, damage he had earlier on. Row 11, David Amflitz and uh, hopefully Gary Puxty. He picked up some damage in race one as well. Row 12, Nigel Walcott takes over at the wheel of the number six car, raced by John Diffie in race one. He starts alongside Malk Best in um, his MGB, the former Ford Capri racer of over 30 years. In the final row, Nick Webster and Rob Fisher. Now let's see if everyone has... Uh, made it back out then the cars are already on their green flag lap Andy Priest and Riley Price are there on the front row of the grid nice effort by Riley Price in the 17s first weekend in the championship there's Steve McDermott former double champion let's have a look further back are any of the cars involved in the incidents in race one back out there I don't think Stuart Plotnick is there we know uh, Chris Millard's car is too badly damaged to continue. There's Will Sharp, the reigning champion in the uh, Bingit number one. Oh, Gary Puxty's there, the number 50, he's repaired. 26 is uh, Mount Best. So hoping for an incident free run this time, the uh, Adrian Flux MG Owners Club Championship. we see the MGFs mixing it with the ZRs again. Well, there's Simon Kendrick. He's uh, swept the gravel out of the under tray of his car. Two cars at the back. The number four, which is uh, Nick Webster from Eanshaw in Oxfordshire, and the 172 of Rob Fisher from London. Minis start to form up in the pit lane. The 87, the black and yellow car of Andy Priest in pole position, comes from Cheltenham. Riley Price alongside the pink and blue car, very distinctive looking machine. He comes from Leicester. Steve McDermott and uh, Mark Grant on row two. Andy Heitman, a spinner at the start of race one in row three, alongside Martin Wills, the first of the MGFs. Mark Baker and Phil Walker. And some of our newcomers in the ZRs. Jimmy Work, number 82, the black car. Only his second season of racing. Last few cars into position at the back. A couple of gaps was of the damage suffered earlier on. Scott Bugner's not there. His car broke down in qualifying, sadly. A shame, because he'd have been up there challenging at the sharp end as well. Had a few wins last year. Waiting the all clear then, and we're underway. Great start through the middle by Martin Wills in the yellow number 44. Now he's going to be up there with the front row men, I think, as they head into the first corner. He's got the lead around the outside. That's a superb getaway by Martin Wills in the number 44 MGF. He leads the ZRs. It's a slow getaway by both of the front row men. Now are they all going to make it through Druids okay this time? Looks like they are. Priest is there on the inside ahead of Riley Price, then Steve McDermott. Lewis Saunders with another quick getaway in uh, the MGB around the outside. But look at the lead that Martin Wills has got. That was an absolute rocket of a start. Second place is Priest, then Riley Price, Steve McDermott. And is that uh, Luke Boniface who's gone up into fifth place, the newcomer this weekend? I think it is the grey number 13s up into P5. So another unlikely start there. Yes, it is. Boniface up to fifth. Mark Baker is in sixth position in the 53. Andy Heitman and uh, Phil Walker have dropped back there as well. But Martin Wills leads all the ZRs in his MGF. A superb getaway. Over the line they come. Then it's Wills who leads from Priest, Price, McDermott, Boniface, Baker, Mark Grant, 
and the rest of them come pouring through into Paddock Bend. Now the uh, ZRs moving up a gear and starting to catch Martin Wills in the front. You can see the gap coming down. Steve McDermott up the inside tries to take Riley Price for third place. There's Lewis Saunders, the ex-junior saloon car champion. He's dominated Class A for Abingdon this weekend in his MGB. 42, Simon Kendrick on the move as well. He's having a go at Phil Walker. Walker's taking a hit in there. You can see his wing mirrors hanging off. ZR hangs on. There's Adrian Olsen just ahead of Will Sharp. Riley Price losing out to Steve McDermott. And uh, the 13 of Boniface having a go as well. You wouldn't know it's his first weekend of car racing. The ex-motorcycle racer attacking to try and get into fourth place there. Behind him is Baker. Then it's Mark Grant, Jimmy Work. And it's uh, Josh Addison behind him, another of our newcomers. But Andy Priest now into top gear. And he's having a go at Martin Wills for the lead. But Wills, a lot of experience. He's raced MGZRs as well as the uh, MGF. He's raced uh, a Lotus Elise in the past as well. He's holding the inside there as they come up into Druids. A little bit of a slide under braking. Priest had to back out there. Steve McDermott, the former champion, is now with them as well. Riley Price in fourth position. And Boniface coming under fire from Mark Baker, the former MGF class champion. Big Boniface, you can see, he's got the novice cross on the back of his ZR. Still Martin Wills holding on for the lead. Can't remember the last time we saw an MGF beat all the ZRs for an overall victory. It would be quite a story if uh, Wills can hang on. Mark Grant's heading the second group in uh, seventh place. Still Martin Wills hanging on. Here comes Priest. He's going to try and go for the outside by the look of it into Paddock Bend. Again, Martin Wills holds him off. There's a long way to go yet. Only just over three minutes into this 20-minute race for the MG Owners Club Championship. Steve McDermott under fire. Riley Price up the inside. He goes through. Very late on the brakes there for Druids. Wills a little bit out of shape on the exit, but he's got the line for... Graham Hill Ben. Riley Price is absolutely flying in that number 17 car. He's having a go at Priest now for second place. But Steve McDermott is fighting back. Well, after all the chaos in uh, race number one, this is MG Racing at its very best here at Brands Hatch. We thought that uh, 12 months ago the duel between Scott Buckner and Steve McDermott was frantic. This is even better. They're queuing up behind Martin Wills. Here comes Priest. Now he's got a run on the inside as they come into the Brabham straight. He's surely going to take the lead here on the inside. Wills le leaves him room. And he's going to go through to take the lead unless Wills can do something special into Paddock Bend. McDermott's in there as well trying to get up the inside. Wills trying to fight back around the outside at Paddock. But Andy Priest is through. He's got the lead. Priest already a winner today. Looking to make it two out of two and take the championship lead. Martin Wills fighting back. Look at Mark Baker up on the tail of uh, Riley Price now. He's got a head of... Boniface in the number 13. Jimmy Work gets taken out wide onto the grass almost there with a battle with Mark Grant. And that's Josh Addison in behind them as well, number 99. And we've got nine cars coming for it in this lead group. And the next group's headed up by Lewis Saunders, who's keeping up with the modern cars in his uh, MGB. Martin Wills still second. Mark Grant holding off Jimmy Work in the black car. Here comes Riley Price fighting back around the outside. Riley Price having a go at the former champion, Steve McDermott. Round the outside. He's never going to get round the outside of it. Mark Baker could have got the inside of both of them here if he plays his cards right into Paddock. McDermott just about holds the inside. Baker's going for it. He's not holding back here, Mark Baker. Oh, goodness me, up on the kerb. This is fantastic racing. Of course, while they squabble, Andy Priest has been able to get away a little and get some breathing space out in front. Going to change for 10th place further back. Looks like Andy Heitman has got ahead of uh, Lewis Saunders. We can't look away from this lead battle. Priest from Wills, McDermott, Price, Baker. Then it's Boniface. I'll have a look back at some of the classic cars as well. That's David Amflet, number 14. Another veteran of this championship being chased by Gary Puxty. He's repaired MG Midget. You can see a dent in the rear corner where he went off in race one and you can see the ZRs are the more powerful the quicker cars than Martin Wills in the MGF but they just can't get the line away from him he's got a lot of experience Martin Wills but so has Steve McDermott and here comes the former champion up on the outside now trying to take second place into Paddock can he get alongside not this time 
Riley Price in behind that very gaudily painted number 17 car. Mark Baker covers the inside in the striped number 53. Here comes Jimmy Work attacking Luke Boniface as well. Then Mark Grant, Josh Addison. <laughs> this is brilliant stuff. Price up the inside into Graham Hill. Bendy's through up into third. Steve McDermott had to cut across the nose there of Mark Baker to recover the line. Meanwhile, Andy Priest is saying, well, if you're all going to squabble with each other like that, I'm going to clear off and win this race. And now Riley Price is going to have a go at Martin Wills for second. Have a go. Oh, he forces the issue at Clearways and round goes Wills. Look out, Wallop. He catches Mark Baker. And that's taken both the MGFs out. Oh, dear. All came to a head there at Clearways. Andy Heitman's slowing down as well. He's pulling into the pits. He's got a problem. Now, I suspect we'll see a safety car because Mark Baker's stuck in the gravel there at uh, the exit of Clearways. But, well, Martin Wills may have the right to feel aggrieved there. He definitely got a push there from Riley Price coming into the right-hander. So what's that done to the race order now? We'll try and work out. It's uh, Steve McDermott up into second place. Third is Riley Price. It's um, Luke Boniface up there in fourth place. He's doing brilliantly on his debut weekend. A friend of the uh, McDermott family. Let's have a look again what happened there. Riley Price up the inside. Yeah, clips the back of Martin Wills and round he goes and then just catches Mark Baker as he spins. And both of our leading MGFs in the race have gone. That is such a shame for Martin Wills. He was going so well. Just at the same time there, breaking down, sadly, Andy Heitman. And we are seeing the safety car coming out with Mark Baker's car stranded there in a dangerous position on the exit of Clearways. So that should mean that Simon Kendrick is leading the MGFs. Yes, he is. Safety car looking for our leader. He's got some of the classic cars behind him at the moment. Gary Puxty, David Amflitz. There's Nigel Walcott in the number six. Will Sharp. That Will Sharp, quite a way down the order in the classic class. He's only fifth in class. Oh, and uh, Josh Addison's uh, had a moment somewhere. There's damage to the front of his car, just pulling in behind the barriers there. So he's hit something. Looked like the bonnet was folded on that car, so he's hit something quite hard. Martin Will's car still stuck there. The marshals removed that. But we didn't see what happened to Josh Addison. I thought he may have collected Martin Wills at first, but no. He's getting going again. So what happened to Josh Addison? We didn't see the number 99. He's hit something. Leaders go over the line. We'll get them into line behind the safety car. Martin Wills at the back of this group, still going. Now, what will normally happen is the uh, safety car will uh, wave cars through until it's picked up the leader, but only when given the uh, all clear to do so. There's our leader, Andy Priest. Then a back marker when it's McDermott, Price. Jimmy Works up to fourth. Jake McDermott's fifth. He's got ahead of Luke Boniface. Then Grant, Walker, Saunders ninth, and Kendrick. Now the. Uh, I think the only MGF left running in 10th because Stuart Plotnick didn't take the start. Baker's in the gravel. And Martin Wills, no, he is still going, he's at the back. In fact, he's just in front of the leader. Well, the uh, flatbed being brought in by Trackside Recovery to retrieve Mark Baker's car out of the gravel. It'll be a disappointed journey back to Suffolk for him.
Safety car now waving the back markers through on the Brabham straight. It'll pick up our leader. As soon as the hazard is clear, still eight and a half minutes on the clock, so we will hopefully get some green flag racing in. Fastest lap of the race so far by Steve McDermott, 58.041 for the reigning ZR class champion, or the Z class champion. It's the number one car, the silver car there, Will Sharp, who won overall last year. We have seen him in a ZR as well, but he much prefers racing his classic cars. He's raced Porsches in the past as well, along with his brother Henry. There's a back marker in between first and second, that's the number four of... Nick Webster. Lewis Saunders running superbly as always. Here's that uh, now rare ZS saloon of Darren Leonard. It's about 20 years ago now we last saw them in the British Touring Car Championship. Jason Hughes was the uh, last driver to race one of those, the Kart World Racing driver. Still owns that uh, ZS incidentally along with his Vauxhall Vectra Super Touring Car. See him out with the classic Touring Car Racing Club occasionally. Now, to see if the lights are going to go out this time on top of the safety car. Now, are we going to get uh, back to racing with seven minutes to go? With Adrian Olsen with his ZR. Yes, the safety car is into pit lane. The lights went out quite late there, but the circuit is clear. Now, this is going to hand a big advantage to Andy Priest because they can't pass the back marker until they go over the timing line. You can't overtake until you're there. They now go either side of the MGB and look at the advantage that's handed Andy Priest. McDermott's gone wide. Riley Price there in third. Now, Jimmy Work has lost out there. Did Jake McDermott overtake Jimmy? Oh, no, Jimmy Work's got a problem. He's slowing down. So maybe I thought Jake McDermott had passed him before the timing line there, but he might win a reprieve because Jimmy Work was having problems. So Jake McDermott makes it two members of the family in the top four places. But that's handed a big advantage to Andy Priest because they couldn't pass Nick Webster's car until they were over the timing line, the slower MGB. And Jimmy Work is off in the gravel on the outside of Druids. He's not parked in a very sensible place. Walks away. I hope that doesn't lead to another safety car. Martin Wills into pit lane. He has got damage. He's out of the race. And it's Andy Priest who leads. Let's see what the gap is back to uh, Steve McDermott then. It's uh, 1.8 seconds as they cross the line. McDermott, I think, will make uh, fairly short work of closing that down. We could have a battle on our hands here unless the safety car comes out again. Riley Price is in third place. There'll be yellow flags at uh, Druids, I think. Jake Dermid in uh, P4. Boniface, Grant and Walker. So it's ZRs to the fore this time. Lewis Saunders staying ahead of the uh, ZS uh, saloon there of Leonard. Look how much bigger it looks next to that uh, little MGB. Of course, the big saloon in the MG range at the time was the ZT, based on the Rover 75. Don't see many of those now. Here comes Jake McDermott. He wants an overall podium. We've seen him take wins in Class B in the past in a less powerful ZR. He's chasing now Riley Price for third position. Now have a look at the inside into Paddock. Can he make this stick? Here he comes. On the inside, Jake McDermott. Good move. Up into third place. Oh, was that under yellow though? Because look, we've got a car off. That's uh, Malt Best, I think, in the gravel. Now, was there a yellow flag out there or not? We didn't see. Meanwhile, and uh, the fact the red's coming out, in fact, the reds are coming out. And that'll frustrate Steve McDermott because he was just catching up to the back of this. There's more cars going off. There must be oil down. Leonard's gone off. Um, somebody else was rejoining there as well. I think that was Adrian Olsen. There must be oil down at Paddock Bend. Well, four and a half minutes to go, and that's going to be another result declared. And Andy Priest, I think, has won a reprieve there because uh, Steve McDermott was catching him at a rate of knots there. And uh, that will be the end of what has, has to be said has been a rather ill-starred day for the Adrian Flux MG Owners Club Championship. We'll see again what happened there. The right of your picture is going out wide and into the gravel. 
all on his own, Malt Best, and uh, then look as the subsequent cars come through. The yellow flags came out. Then we'll see as the other cars come in whether anybody's going to spin. Yes, the ZS gets sideways first. Adrian Olsen sliding as well. There goes the ZS of Leonard off. It must have been fluid down on the outside from Malt Best's car. I the way he slid out wide there and spun on his own, I suspect his engine let go and he went off on his own oil. Oh, what a chaotic weekend that was. There is uh, Mount Best's MGB. Probably right now, uh, wishing he was still racing his Ford Capri. So that will be a double win provisionally for Andy Priest to kick off the championship in style. The MGF class will go to Simon Kendrick in 8th place as the only finisher in that class. Lewis Saunders wins Class A. No entries in Class B this weekend. So, yes, confirmation session will not be restarted. Result declared. So, by my reckoning, Andy Priest and Lewis Saunders will be joint championship leaders at the end of today with two wins each. So provisional results of the Adrian Flux MG Owners Club Championship Race 2. Second win for Andy Priest with the McDermid's second and fourth. Of course, the results uh, provisionally counted back to the previous lap. So Riley Price will take third ahead of Jake McDermid. Luke Boniface, an excellent fifth place on his debut ahead of Mark Grant and Phil Walker. Simon Kendrick, the uh, last man standing, really, in the MGF class, takes eighth. And Darren Leonard in the ZS. Lewis Saunders wins Class A again. Then Adrian Olsen, Gary Puxty, David Amflit. And Will Sharp down in fourth in class. Nigel Walcott was next. And uh, I think he was the only other finisher. Fair amount of repairs to do, sadly, for a number of our MG racers. Have a look back at some of the highlights of that uh, rather chaotic race. It was uh, a bit of a slow getaway for all the ZRs, really, and Martin Wills just weaved his way through all of them to take the lead. Superb from Wills in the third row of the grid. Everybody else was away cleanly this time, with Andy Priest eventually making a move to take the lead after a few laps down the inside, coming onto the Brabham Straits. Work getting to grips with Mark Grant a little further back, but Josh Addison getting involved as well. Andy Priest escaped in front with Martin Wills having a train of cars queue up behind him in the fight for second, but eventually things came to a head. Contact with Riley Price around went the MGF, taking out Mark Baker into the gravel as well. Great shame for Martin and for Mark Baker, who was the unlucky one. Safety car came out. Soon after that, we uh, lost Josh Addison as well. Some contact from his car. You can see him just there in the background. We didn't see what happened, but uh, some damage to the front end. Then on the restarts, a number of cars from second place backwards caught behind a back marker. They couldn't pass him till the timing line. That created a bit of a bottleneck. Steve McDermott into second, but the race would eventually end early as off, uh, presumably with a blown engine, went Mount Best spinning into the gravel on his own oil at Paddock Bend. A few more cars got caught up on the oil behind him, including Darren Leonard's MGZS. We see fishtailing off there. That almost took out Adrian Olsen as well. So, a rather chaotic day for the MG Owners Club Championship comes to an end. A few repairs to do before their next uh, meeting in a month's time at Cadwell Park. We can go down to Ian Waterhouse in Park Fermi. Well, for the second time today, uh, a red flag cut short the MG owner's uh, race. But actually, Addy, that's quite good for you because you're just saying your brakes are almost gone there. Yeah, so the brakes were pretty hot and uh, Steve was catching me over the last couple of laps. I'd absolutely cooked the front tyres on, uh, on the restart. I thought I'd 
decent gap behind me with the safety car. Uh, There's a classic in between us, so it held Steve up. So I thought, right, just ease myself in on the next two, just bring the tyres back in again. Absolutely cooked them and had nothing on the front end. So, uh, yeah, Steve was catching me down. That red flag couldn't have come any time sooner. And there was still about four minutes or so left on the clock yeah, in a round yeah. here, of course. We're talking about four laps. Exactly. So uh, it's helped you out. A better yeah. double win for you today. Uh, How do you feel? I know, it's the bus, isn't it? You get one and then uh, another, well, whatever the expression is anyway. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, I know what you exactly. mean. Look, celebrate this. Congratulations. Well done. Fantastic stuff. Uh, let's jump in with uh, Riley again as well. Riley, that's a bit better, isn't it? That's more like it. That was more like it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the result. Third place. There's still four minutes or so to go. Was there more in the car to come? Uh, I'd like to think so. There was a bit of traffic because we had the back markers got caught with the safety car at the start. Yeah. Everyone got everyone got a chance to unlap, but one car who didn't actually get lapped. So that caused a bit of a hassle on the safety car restart with everybody bunching up. But, well... Yeah. I'm happy how I performed. Better than the first. Better than the first race. Top man. Well done, Riley. Yeah. Brilliant Thank stuff. Uh, let's grab Steve as well. Whilst we've got him here, uh, Steve. Oh, you needed those extra four minutes, didn't you, really, to catch him? Oh, mate. He, I was eating him up as well. I think his tyres had gone, and he was just coming backwards. And it, it was just like one more lap, and he would have been gone. But um, I didn't get one more lap. <laughs> oh, no, you got a little pot to go home with, though. So uh, all in all, uh, not not a bad afternoon to work. No, 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 no. It's all good. Um, I say it's come out unscathed. So uh, happy days. It's just, yeah, it's the first it's one of the season. It's just mad. <laughs> Look, Steve, congratulations. Anyway, thanks for talking to us. Really do appreciate it. Uh, right, you can actually see next to us. We've got the Mini Challenge Club Sport about to go out on track now. A little bit earlier, I did record a couple of interviews over there. In the first interview that I did with Paul Sawyer. Uh, keep your eyes peeled because I had no idea what was happening but apparently one of these minis uh, sorry one of these MGs had a spin behind me I had no idea what was going on keep an eye out for that so I'm going to hand back to Dave and he'll introduce it okay a little bit of clearing up to do as you can see possibly not any oil down uh, on the track there I can't see any uh, powder being put down on the outside of Paddock. One race to go then uh, here on day one at Brands Hatch. It's the Mini Challenge Club Sport with Airtech Motorsports, a variety of BMW Minis. We spoke to some of the drivers earlier. Well, I'm a little bit upset because the final race of the day is about to get underway. It is, of course, the Mini Challenge Club Sport with Airtech Motorsport. Now, come down to the assembly area. Remember, it was new for 2023. Stephen Berry taking the title last season. He starts second alongside Ross Alexander. That's going to be a good fight right at the sharp end. Although, what I want to do is come chat to this man here, Paul Sawyer. He's uh, a plain racing driver today, but he's a DJ. He's a producer, racing driver, you name it. So let's jump in and have a quick chat. Paul, uh, slightly different surroundings from what you're used to here right now. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> How was qualifying your experience out there? It was really good, actually. Um, really pleased with my times. Uh, obviously, much loads of room for improvement, but yeah. you know, it's getting there. It's my first time out, so it, it can be a bit of a baptism of fire, can't it? But it's a good circuit to learn on here at Brands. Oh, it's amazing! It's, it's a really good circuit, real good fun. Fantastic! Yeah. Well, I'm going to let you crack on away. Best you. of luck out there. Cheers. We will be watching. Thanks, so <laughs> there we go. Let's keep moving around, shall we? Uh, I want to keep going. There's a, our good friend Rob Lewis. Let's just move up here. I did want to see if we could speak to. Oh, we've got the MG race there as well. Uh, I did want to see if I could speak to uh, Lauren Taylor up here. I'm not so sure if she's actually in the car so let's just jump to Maguire lining up alongside shall we and uh, jump in with David and see how he's feeling ahead of this one David how are we doing are we how are we feeling for this one you, you ready yeah I think so as ready as we can be so today to start of the day was a bit of a well first time out really so we're just learning as we go along are you pleased the weather's done what it's done because we we all woke up this morning and if we looked at the weather forecast we're all feeling a little bit nervous but it's, it's perfect isn't it it's absolutely spot on nice and cold dense air for the engine is perfect and it's the same for everybody so just send it Stop, send it <laughs> thanks for talking to us really appreciate it thank you very much right let's just uh, grab lauren very quickly as well have a quick chat look at that oh no oh no how, how are you doing lauren? i always managed to avoid it that's I, why well, that's, <laughs> i knew it that so i thought i'm going to come over and have a quick chat so qualifying happy with it uh, yeah, it's the first time out in the car ever, yeah. so um, it's been interesting today. Not as, you know, not as good as I wanted, but we'll, well, we'll, we'll work on it, we'll work on there's it. A race, there's a race to come, so there there's, there's plenty of opportunity there. 
races always go way better for me than qualifying does anyway. Right, so, right. fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Thanks for talking to us. Lauren. Best of luck out there. Right, uh, time to go. Final race of the day, but don't forget we are back tomorrow as well. Uh, John's almost about to bump into uh, one of the camera ladies there, but uh, here we go. Final race of the day. Let's hand over to Dave Goddard to take you to the action. I'll be in Park Fermi at the end of the race. in just to hear from a few of the drivers there ahead of this uh, race for a mixture of uh, different BMW minis there are three um, broad classes in this event and the grid is organized by class it's the most powerful cars the open class that starts at the front of the grid there's two of those then a gap and we've got the S classes S56 and S53 BMW Mini Coopers and then the club class starts at the back for the less powerful cars so the front row will be number 320, Ross Alexander, and treble six, Stephen Berry, last year's Open Class champion in his Mini Cooper S Coupe. Something a bit different, the only one of its kind racing in the UK. Then a gap, and we've got the S Class cars. 959, Jamie Ringer is the first of them. He's in S56 car, alongside number five, Freddie Hewitt. We saw him take a few successes last year. Next is 231 Steve Webb alongside 44 Charlie Heatley and Charlie Heatley the first of the S53 cars. Next we've got number 12 Charlie Newton Derby and number 14 of Lee Campbell. Many of these drivers familiar to our coverage from last season. Behind them is the uh, S-Class champion from last year Zach Blackwell number one alongside 41 Ian Trundley. Then 55 Gary Papworth and 190 Alan Lee there in S56 cars. A few more S53s. 27 Emma Dawson all the way from Ellen in Aberdeenshire in the north of Scotland. Starts alongside 86, just heard from David Maguire. Lauren Taylor in number 33 and uh, 29, DJ Paul Sawyer. And 58, Matthew Hibbard. He had his uh, practice times disallowed earlier on, so he uh, starts from the back of that group. And then a gap, and we've got the Clubman class cars. Class C, 42, Andy Langley and 19, Daniel Truman. Neil Clark from 53 and 28, David Taylor. 266, Geoffrey Surrey starts from the back of the grid. Yes, Matthew Hibbard had his times disallowed because the car was being worked on by his mechanics under Park Ferme conditions. You are not allowed to do that so once it's Park Ferme, that means the car can't be touched. And, uh, with that rule broken, practice times were disallowed and that car starts from the back of its group. Okay, so in position for our last race of the day then, they head off on the green flag lap. There's that mini coupe of Steve Berry. We saw him take uh, the majority of the wins overall in this uh, division last season. A couple of cars a little bit slow to get going there from the back. The Clubman or Cooper class cars from the back. Ah, I spy cement powder going down the straight there, so there may have been some oil dropped after all. Liam Mortimer asking in our comment thread, why is there no second row? That's because we've got some gaps between each of the uh, groups in this race. The open class cars, there's only two of them. The more powerful cars, they go from the front. Then we've got the S class cars, and then um, the uh, Cooper club class cars go from the back. It looks like we've got um, a mini Clubman estate, I noticed, in there as well. Scored a glimpse as it went through. There's the two open class cars on the front of the grid. Steve Berry and Ross Alexander. We saw them take the majority of the wins between them last season. They did use a slightly different grid last season at one point, where the open class cars started behind the S class. And now the uh, more powerful cars start off from the front. Yes, there's the estate, number 55, that is, of uh, Gary Papworth. Not seen that car out before. Sussex Road and Race had one of those, running in a uh, series like Turbo Tin Tops. So into position then for what will be a 15-minute race for our variety of BMW Minis. Ross Alexander from Birmingham in the blue and white car will take pole alongside Steve Berry from Nottingham. Not to be confused with the uh, former Top Gear presenter of the same name. Leading the uh, second group is Jamie Ringer from Surrey in number 959, the orange car. Alongside him, Freddie Hewitt. Seen his sister Chloe racing successfully in the past as well. 
behind them, it's Steve Webb in the uh, red and black number 231. Charlie Heatley alongside him with the yellow headlamp covers. Interested to see how that estate of Gary Papworth goes, the uh, black and white car. Last few of the Cooper class cars pulling into position at the back. And once we get the all clear from the marshal at the back, that uh, they are satisfied. Everybody's in position. The five second board will go up. Red lights will come on. And when they go out, we'll be underway with the first race of the season for the Mini Challenge Club Sports with Airtech Motorsports. And we're underway. Good start from the outside the front row by Stephen Berry. Decent start by Freddie Hewitt. He leads the second route. Bit of a slow getaway for Jamie Ringer. Down into that first corner they go at Paddock Hill Bend. Bit of dust being kicked up from that oil spill. They're all the way well. Stephen Berry with a bit of a twitch there coming through the exit of Paddock, but he's got the lead ahead of Alexander, who's going to be leading the S group. Up the inside there goes the number 12. That's Charlie Newton Derby in the black car. It's Freddie Hewitt who leads the S group. They start to sort themselves out around this opening lap. Always very close, very competitive racing indeed from BMW Minis. Ross Alexander side by side with Stephen Berry. He's going to try and take the lead through Surtees. He does so. Alexander in the number 320 car. The SRR run machine takes it up. Faced by the Mini Mafia Coupe. Certainly is an intriguing looking machine, isn't it? The only one of its kind currently in motorsport. In second place, Freddie Hewitt is in third. Jamie Ringer has recovered from a slightly poor start. He's in fourth position. Over the line they go. Side by side there is Zach Blackwell, the reigning S class champion. Side by side with 2 3 1. That is Steve Webb towards Druids for the second time. Alexander from Berry. Hewitt and Ringer keeping up with them. Freddie Hewitt in uh, his self-run car. Who's leading at Class C further back? It's Andy Langley, car number 42. Whilst the C-Class cars occasionally ran with the uh, Kumho BMW Championship in uh, years gone by when BMW Minis were allowed in there. That's now moved on to Pastures New for this year with a new sponsor as well file at the moment. Zach Blackwell coming under fire from uh, the 2 3 1 of Webb. As they come through to complete the second lap, it's Alexander from Berry. 1.2 seconds in it as they come over the line. Running out a little bit wide there is the 44 of Charlie Heatley. And now 2 3 1 of Steve Webb tries to go around the outside of Zach Blackwell. Back Blackwell later on the brakes as they go into Paddock. Number 14 just behind them is Lee Campbell in the Blueprint Racing Car. Freddie Hewitt from uh, Ringer. Charlie Newton Derby is the first of the S53 class cars, the subclass from the S group. Andy Langley leads Class C further back ahead of the number 19, which is uh, Daniel Truman. 41 there is Ian Trundley in the Norfolk Cars BMW Mini. Class S53. Nice steady start to this first race of the season for the BMW Minis. They have two more races to come tomorrow. Steve Webb pulling away now from Zach Blackwell. That's for seventh overall. Just behind them is Lee Campbell, the number 14. Of course, these cars at the end of last season had uh, a mini endurance race, quite literally, at uh, Donington Park the pit stops and driver changes. Swing their way through Druids. Ross Alexander now two seconds ahead of Stephen Berry's coupe at the front of the field. Freddie Hewitt putting Berry under pressure. There's Ringer in fourth place. Charlie Newton Derby's fifth leads his subclass. And Heatley, Webb, Blackwell, Campbell, Alan Lee in the white car is next. It's Trundle. Trundley rather and uh, Gary Papworth in the estate, number 55. Class C runners further back, 42 Andy Langley at the front of that group. Four laps completed, fastest lap of the race by Alexander, 55.095 for Ross Alexander. Over three seconds clear now of Stephen Berry, so he's very much pulling away. Berry's last lap was a 56.2, so over a second slower. E. Campbell trying to close in on Zach Blackwell, normally number 411. He won that uh, group championship, the S-Class, last year. 
takes the number one. In the JN Interiors S56. The car slowing there. Who is that? It's the number 266, Geoffrey Surrey, in problems. Starting at the back of the grid. There's that uh, Norfolk Mini sponsored estate, Gary Papworth, the man from Kings Lynn. I suspect Geoffrey Surrey's heading into the pits. Ten minutes of the race to go. One third distance then in this Airtech Motorsports Mini Challenge Club Sport race. Stephen Berry still under pressure from Freddie Hewitt for P2. Zach Blackwell still under pressure for P8 from Lee Campbell. He's running well in that number 14 car. Steve Webb trying to re reel in Charlie Heatley. And Alan Lee next in the order, then it's uh, Ian Trundley. Gary Papworth's estate is next. And the number 58 of Matthew Hibbard, Lauren Taylor and Emma Dawson, the two lady pilots behind them. David Maguire at the back of the S group at the moment. Paul Sawyer is back in among the uh, Class C cars. This is Langley, Truman and Taylor. They're top three at the moment. Number 28 is driven by David Taylor. Another of our Scottish contingent comes from Dundee. Steve Webb. It's a quick look there. The back of the 44 car. Off Charlie Heatley. That's for sixth position and fourth in subgroup. There's our... Now Geoffrey Surrey still struggling on. He hadn't gone into the pits. He is a newcomer this year. There's our, uh, I was going to say, Class C leader, number 42, the red car. That's Andy Langley. He's uh, giving a hard time here to the number 86 of David Maguire. Daniel Truman in uh, number 19. He's closing up in second. There's the 27 car as well of Emma Dawson, who's dropped back a little. And has there been a change there for the lead in uh, Class C as a result of that? Yes, there has. Looks like the number 19. Yes, Truman has got through, ahead of Andy Langley. Now attacking Emma Dawson's 27 car, so Truman now the leader of Class C. Emma Dawson with arguably the longest journey to be here today from Aberdeenshire. Andy Langley fighting back. These two have pulled away from their opposition in uh, Class C. David Taylor still third in that class. Then David Clark. Geoffrey Surrey, as we've uh, seen, has been lapped. Our novice and a bit of contact there coming out of Paddock as Langley goes around the outside. Daniel Truman's got the inside line, but uh, Langley gets the overlap, retakes the lead of the class. In fact, pulls away down the hill there from uh, Daniel Truman. Meanwhile, there's been a change for second overall. Freddie Hewitt has come through, ahead of Stephen Berry in the Mini Mafia Coupe. Extraordinary looking car, isn't it? Some of the big news over the uh, winter was um, this uh, championship entering a partnership with Ravenol, the uh, oil company. Big sponsorship coming in all the time. Great to see in British club racing at any level. Now they're coming up to lap number 53, Neil Clark. Or as we called him last year, with that paint job, Austin Powers. He lets them through. Next car to be lapped is going to be Paul Sawyer's number 29. The novice cross on the back, he lets the uh, second place battle us through, but these two are now... Uh, a long way behind race leader Ross Alexander. They're over nine seconds down. There's still six minutes of the race to go just over. Freddie Hewitt, the clear leader of the S group. Leading class S53 is still Charlie Newton Derby. Andy Langley back in front of class C now. Stephen Berry get himself back into second place overall. I 
Don't think he'll catch Ross Alexander now. He's well up the road. He's lapping over a second quicker than uh, these two. There's Jamie Ringer further back in fourth overall. Fifth, that is Charlie Newton Derby leading his group, S53 class. It's a little bit wide there through had a kill bend. Racing BMW Minis for a number of years now. Neil Clark and uh, Paul Sawyer. That's a battle for position, I think. Just check the timing screen. Yes, that's uh, towards that's for P20, but they're being lapped by Heatley and Webb. T Webb, not sure what side to go there. And he's got Zach Blackwell closing him back up again. Heatley in his sights, but he's got to be mindful of the traffic. That Blackwell runs a little wide. He's dropped back a bit there. And uh, Lee Campbell has got him in his sights as well. Be no catching. Ross Alexander, he's over 10 seconds up now. Steve Berry, meanwhile, has got himself back into second in this fight with Freddie Hewitt. They've been trading places all race long. to Graham Hillbend. Proves it really does take all types of uh, BMW Mini. We've got the hatchbacks out over on the estates. We've got uh, the coupe. Won't be long before we see a countryman, I'm sure. Oh, and uh, problems there for Emma Dawson. She's had a moment at Clearways, just rejoining. There's our leader. We've hardly seen him all race long in the Sitna Mini sponsored car. Ross Alexander. There he is coming out of Druids. Of course, uh, Sitna, a famous name in motorsport. Frank Sitna, the former British touring car champion. Went on to uh, found his chain of BMW dealerships and subsequently BMW Mini. Alexander over 10 seconds up. Jeffrey Surrey still going. You know, and I believe it's his first ever race, just uh, learning as he goes, the man from Stoke. There's number 42, Andy Langley. He's been lapped. Still leading Class C. He's, uh, let's have a look at the gap. Only just ahead of uh, Daniel Truman. There's Truman, the white car. Alexander coming up on Lauren Taylor in the Halford sponsored car. Lauren uh, had a big off here at Brands Hatch a few year, seasons ago. It was in the Mini Challenge trophy category, the one make series, the one model series. Looks as though Emma Dawson, after that off, is dragging uh, some of the front splitter underneath the car. Blackwell on the back of Charlie Heatley. Steve Webb's got ahead of Heatley now. Up in two sixth position. It's only two minutes of the race to go, though. Ross Alexander has made this race his own. Taking the fight to Stephen Berry in the uh, open class. Berry's been uh, busy battling with the S class leader, Freddie Hewitt. Webb under fire from Charlie Heatley and Zach Blackwell as well, the three of them together now. This race certainly not over yet, they're trying to get past Emma Dawson. She now moves to the inside to let them through and Steve Webb gets his boot down and fires past the two back markers there, chased by Heatley and Blackwell. Through the roller coaster up towards Druids. Great fight this is for P6, P7 and P8. Alexander now leads by 13 seconds over Steve Berry. Great battling all the way down the order. And two more races to come from the uh, BMW Minis tomorrow. Lee Campbell not far away from that uh, scrap as well. I think we're on the last lap now. Ross Alexander from Birmingham in the SRR car. 
is heading for victory. Started from pole position, led all the way, apart from that very brief moment on lap one when Stephen Berry got ahead. 20 seconds on the clock. We'll wait to see if the chequered flag does go out this time. It might, if we're lucky, get one more lap out of this. Be close as they come to the line. Here comes Ross Alexander. Is it going to be chequered flag this time? Might be a few seconds too early. No, he continues on. Three seconds left as he crossed the line, so we'll get one more lap. His margin was 14.2 seconds. Let's see what it is as Berry and Hewitt cross the line. There's 1.6 seconds between those two now. 15 seconds in it now between the two leaders. The gap is up to two seconds between Berry and Hewitt. Freddie Hewitt is going to win the S group. The S56, S53 class is going to be won by Charlie Newton Derby. So the class is fairly clear cut in this one. First winner of the season in the Airtech Motorsports Mini Challenge Club Sport Division is going to be Ross Alexander. Out of the final corner, up to lap Paul Sawyer. Over the line, takes the chequered flag. A clear win for Ross Alexander. I think that's uh, possibly our biggest winning margin today. Dominance from Alexander. Second place is going to go to uh, Stephen Berry. And third will be Freddie Hewitt. He wins the S class. He wins class S56. It's going to be Jamie Ringer who will take fourth place. Charlie Newton Derby just behind him wins class S53. It's Charlie Heatley over the line. Zach Blackwell and Lee Campbell. Blackwell was just behind Heatley at the flag. Good fight between those three. Alan Lee is ninth. Ian Trundley will take tenth. Have we lost Steve Webb on that last lap? I don't think he's come through. We may have lost 2-3-1 Steve Webb on the final lap there. He's come through in 12th place. So, yeah, his last lap was a 1 minute 15. So he's uh, had a problem on the last lap there, Steve Webb. Dropping down to 12th and 5th in class. So whether he had an off or whether a problem with the car at the end of the race, well, we're not sure. Confirm our uh, result provisionally in a moment. Well done to the Mini Challenge Club Sport Division, sponsored by Airtech Motorsports, in partnership with Ravenol. Also Garmin BMTR Motorsport Tyres, based in Birmingham, and Norfolk Cars Mini Specialist. 17 laps then for Ross Alexander. He takes the win and fastest lap ahead of Stephen Berry by 16 seconds. Freddie Hewitt twins Class S56. By a fairly clear margin of nearly seven seconds over Jamie Ringer. Class S53 goes to Charlie Newton Derby ahead of Charlie Heatley by nearly seven seconds as well. It's Zach Blackwell just ahead of Lee Campbell. Alan Lee was next, and Ian Trundley, Gary Papworth, and Steve Webb down at 12th after a slow last lap. And Matthew Hibbard and Lauren Taylor a lap down. Uh, Class C incidentally went to Andy Langley ahead of Daniel Truman and David Taylor. All 22 cars go the distance, including our novice at the back, Geoffrey Surrey. Well done to him. Let's hand down to Ian Waterhouse in Park Fermi. Well, welcome down, everybody. Here I am with your race winner, Ross Alexander. And Ross, it was a bit of race of two halves, really. First half, you had to deal with a bit of pressure from Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Then you got away from it, and it was just a case of taking it home, really. Yeah, I knew that. I knew that he'd be quick off the line, um, so I expected to do what we was going to do. Um, yeah, it was just a case of getting in front and then just getting some clear air, putting some good laps together. Um, but we managed to do it, and the car felt good. Shout out to uh, Sussex Road and Race. You put the car together. Oh, All good. Yeah, I'm happy. How does it feel to get a perfect start to the season? Feels good. Just needs to keep up for the rest of the season. But now for today, I'm happy. I was really nervous. Um, I've not used this car uh, on the setup that we're on today, or even in this class. Yeah. So it was weird to come in and challenge Stephen Berry, who obviously won the championship last yeah. year, um, and we came out on top. So no, I'm happy. 
keep your eyes peeled on this man for the rest of the season. Well done, Ross. Yes, uh, let's see how you grab Freddie. Freddie, it's good to see you again, my man. Uh, now, that was some race, wasn't it? Uh, I think Stephen Berry's actually gone, hasn't he? But yeah. uh, third uh, in the race. But you did get past Stephen at one point, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Um, just seemed like he was struggling on the sides a little bit. The, the new compound this year has been a bit tricky. Everyone struggled. Um, so, yeah, just, just sort of took my opportunity and down, down here and, and, yeah, went for it, sent it. Now, we say third on track, but it's actually the class win as well. So how does that feel? Feels good. Um, we've actually had a really tricky winter getting everything ready. So to be here, just to be here it's, itself is, is great. But to, yeah, to get the class wins, mega, like proper good. Bit, bit, bit quicker than a full KA, eh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. But, but no, it's, we're loving it. So we're loving the championships all going great. So can't complain. It's great to see you again. Right, Congratulations. You, you. Uh, right, the cars are actually moving on already. I think uh, Stephen has already gone through. They uh, didn't call him in in time, I'm afraid. So we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, that is it, actually, for today's racing, which does make me very sad. But I've got some fantastic news because we are back tomorrow. And the first race gets underway at 9.25. So it's an early start. So make sure you tune in to Bark TV. If you are watching this on the YouTube channel as well, please do hit that little subscribe button as well. It really helps everybody at the BARC enable us to bring you live coverage that we do. Uh, well, I just want to say a big thank you for watching big thank you to the spectators big thank you as ever to the orange army we would not be able to go racing if it wasn't for you we will be back live tomorrow and i'm going to hand over to dave goddard for the final words yeah thanks very much to ian waterhouse and to pointy down on the ground today for bringing us all the latest and uh, the interviews that wraps up day one here on this easter weekend here at uh, brands hatch we're back underway Right and early at 9.25am, uh, our first race tomorrow, which is the uh, Sigma 150 class of the Caterham Graduates Championship. Then we have the first race of the season for the Junior Saloon Cars. They had their qualifying session earlier. British Truck Racing Championship Race 3 with the reverse grid introduced. Then more from the minis that we've just seen, our second pickup truck race. And then the Sigma 135 Caterhams with uh, Tom McEwen going for his double. And then a new class that uh, we've not seen for some time, the Track Action Saloon Series. Promoted by uh, the same promoters as the Junior Saloon Cars, a variety of different uh, saloons. Just looking at the entry list for that, we've got uh, everything from Mazda MX-5s to Peugeot 206 GTIs, MR2s, Clios, VW Scirocco's, even a Renault 5 GT Turbo and an old Vauxhall Vectra Challenge car. I haven't seen one of them for a few years. So a variety of saloon cars out. Now, that's a series, not a championship. So you can use just about anything you like in there. Uh, the truck race, truck race four follows that, and then the junior saloons for their second race. Then it goes on through the afternoon. More from the Sigma 150 Caterhams. The Minis will have a third race. The final truck race, a second race for track action, and then the pickups with their longer third race round out the program. Thank you very much indeed, everyone, for watching today. Thanks for all your comments coming in, and to everyone else here at Brands Hatch today. Special thanks as always, as Ian has already said, to the Orange family, our marshals. We couldn't go racing without our volunteers and all our other officials as well. Thank you as well to Trackside Recovery. They've had a very busy day, so thanks to all their operatives as well for keeping things running smoothly. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow, Bank Holiday Monday at 9.25am for our first of a very, very busy programme of racing. We've got 14 races to get through tomorrow. Hope you've enjoyed the action today from here at Brands Hatch. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.